Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 105 Where do you think you are going? Yen Su felt a bit annoyed. He finally had decided to become this puny girl's master, but this kid still didn't want to learn. Does she know that in this era, many people would selfishly conceal their skills? With this lifetime opportunity of learning something rare, she still dared to be uninterested and run away. Yi Mu used both her hands and feet to randomly flop at the air. She had never thought that one day she would be carried into the air by a sword. Like a stick through meat. What the FCK? You bastard, you really don't have good motives everywhere you want to speak. Aren't you afraid of getting involved with me? Is there anyone who uses their sword this way? Yen Su found it both infuriating and funny to see her waving her claws in the air, but he merely asked, Why did you run? Yi Mu glared at him from midair. I'm young, and I easily get hungry. And don't bother coming with me, you won't be allowed to eat. My student ran away when I wasn't even halfway through my lesson. This is disrespecting a professor. Yi Mu's face only displayed an indignant look and she glared at him with resentment, Big brother, can't you be more reasonable? You only wanted to teach yourself, I didn't say that I want to learn from you. Yen Su frowned as he stared at her discontentedly. He didn't know why, but his originally irritable mood dissipated after some while because of her. Does she have a kind of magic that relaxes people? Refusing to show his inner thought, he merely narrowed his eyes. Since you don't want to learn, then. Then let me go. Yi Mu looked at him expectantly. Then come with me. FCK. After Yen Su finished speaking, he pulled out his sword and carried Yi Mu in one arm towards a specific direction. What was even stranger was that the person protecting Yi Mu did not come out to stop him. Could it be that they were all on vacation today? Yi Mu's body floated helplessly in the air. She was in utter despair as Yen Zus carried her like his little dog. Uncle, I say, can you change this position? Have you never held a child in your arms your entire life? Seeing that he was ignoring her, she switched her honorific, Hey Prince. Do you want to hug me for a bit to get a better understanding of this simple thing? But no matter what Yi Mu said, Yen Su still insisted on carrying her shamelessly like a puppy, which enraged Yi Mu greatly. When they finally reached their destination and he placed Yi Mu down on the ground, she had already went from a white bun to a red tomato. It's so cold. Did you bring me to a freezer? Yi Mu grudgingly complained under her breath. After she was put down, she immediately rubbed her arms for warmth. Yen Su to the side immediately took off his shirt and threw it at her trembling frame, as if he was unaffected by the biting cold. Put it on. She resisted the urge to grumble any longer and just resigned herself to her fate. However, after putting on his shirt, she looked like a small girl part of a church choir about to sing a song. A large part of the sleeves were too long for her arm and the hem of his shirt dragged out from underneath her as she walked. It was just like a child was secretly wearing an adult's shirt. It was quite a comical scene. When Yen Su saw this, his eyes revealed traces of mirth. Yi Mu snorted in reply and dragged his clothes on the ground deliberately as she walked in front. It was really a cellar in ancient times, where rich families stored ice cubes equivalent to a freezer in the modern world. What the f get so cold, why did you even bring me here? Don't tell me you stored a corpse here for me before she could finish, she saw a coffin. I see one. There really was one. Yen Su walked towards the coffin without another word. Red medicinal liquid could be visibly seen in the coffin, and a woman was lying submerged in it. It was obvious that she had been dead for a long time, but her corpse was still well preserved. The people in ancient times conscientiously believed in the soul and reincarnation, and that if a corpse is left behind, its soul could only stay in the mortal world, able to hear the words of its loved ones. However, this kind of setting was quite strange. Remembering the scar on Yen Zhu's body, Yi Mu asked, She your mother? She's, um, pretty good looking. Yen Su pursed his lips. When his cold eyes landed on the corpse, they were filled with deep yearning. Yes, she's my mother. 
Chapter, 106 Yi Mu was silent for some time. Every time I see her I can't help but think back to the time when she blocked the sword for me. Yen Su looked at the woman inside the coffin, eyes as deep as the ocean, with a sad smile plastered on his pale face. As she hugged me, the sword cruelly stabbed into her back and through my body. When the blade's tip pierced into my flesh, it even carried my mother's warmth together. He tilted his head a fraction towards her, do you know what? I have never experienced a moment where blood is thicker than water, other than that particular time. Just thinking about that scene, Yi Mu's heart felt a little heavy. Before dying, she had truly wanted to hug her own son for the last time. That kind of maternal love was truly indescribable. Later on, every time I would have a nightmare, it would be a frightening dream of that moment the place where the sword had pierced my chest would rode a hideous flesh becoming one with me. And the pain would continue all the way down to my heart. After he finished speaking, he fully looked at Yi Mu. What was strange was that after Yi Mu had engraved that unsightly drawing of a turtle on the scar of his chest, he suddenly stopped having those kinds of nightmare. But he did not tell Yi Mu of this. Yi Mu stood in front of the coffin with a solemn expression on her young face. Just when Yen Su thought that Yi Mu would comfort him, Yi Mu raised her head to look at him and spoke seriously. If, and I mean if. Yes. If one day someone wants to kill you you should strip off your clothes and let them see the turtle on your chest. It might save your life. Ka Cha. It was like her statement broke the grave mood in the cellar. In such a passionate moment, she had the guts to joke around. Honestly speaking, Yen Su thought that what she said deserves a beating. The veins on his forehead bulged. What kind of crazy fool was he, to bring Yi Mu in and tell her about his past, showing her his vulnerability in the process. He really wanted to beat her up, but when he saw Yi Mu's small arms and legs, he held back and lifted her by her back collar as he walked out of the cellar. Yi Mu did not understand the reason for his anger, hey. Hey. Be reasonable I'm saving you. Shut up. I am serious. Can he cut this baby into pieces? As soon as they came out, Yi Mu felt the warm current flow against her skin much warmer than the underground chill. Being carried so casually like a ragdoll by Yen Su, she was slowly accustomed to the feeling of weightlessness as her feet hanged in the air. It was truly awkward. You are not allowed to tell anyone else about this place. Yen Su coldly commanded. Oh. Who would be interested in a corpse? Yi Mu thought to herself. After she was put down, she touched her neck. Hey, since you're so mad at me, can I leave now? She took a few steps back, ready to depart. No way. The more Yen Su looked at Yi Mu, the crosser he felt, but he still couldn't find it in him to let her go. Time's up, let's go eat. You can't. Yi Mu was shocked. And she immediately said, I will have indigestion if I eat with you. It was truly better to just squish this little thing to death. Yet, an hour later, they were finally seated at a dining table. Yi Mu had a bitter expression on her face. The delicious meal in front of her had instantly lost all its appeal due to the human ice mountain sitting next to her. Big brother, why are you following me? Yen Su did not answer and picked up his chopsticks to eat. With a huff, Yi Mu poked the rice with her chopsticks. Uncle, if you keep making a grumpy face, you'll get old. Yen Su heavily dropped his chopstick on the table with a solemn look. If you want to eat then you shouldn't talk. Yi Mu. As taciturn M.O. Lin Yuan, even he would chat with her during meals. Uncle she started. Yen Su immediately shot her a sharp look. Don't. Yi Mu raised her hands in surrender. I saw that you were in a bad mood when you came to Dista visit me today. Besides, you also brought me to see your mother out of the blue so I want to ask you what's worrying you. Why don't just tell instead of throwing a tantrum, ah. The solution was so easy. Chapter, 107 Yen Su frowned, you don't look hungry. Looks like you don't need to eat. Only then did Yi Mu obediently eat. I can only eat if I'm hungry. What logic is that she grumbled under her breath. 
Just as Yi Mu gave up on communicating with this blockhead, Yen Su put down his chopsticks a second time and asked in a low voice, Do you know the Yu country's tradition of ascending the throne? Yi Mu was completely confused and simply answered, I don't know. Yen Zhu's expression was somewhat serious. In the Yu country, only by receiving the recognition of the founder of the country will the new emperor have the qualifications to succeed the throne. Yi Mu raised her eyebrows in confusion, the royal ancestor. How many years has it been since the country was established? How could they get recognized by him? Are they going to summon this old man's soul? Yen Su glared at her. When the Yu country was established, the founding emperor left behind a sacred bone before his death. In order to ensure the purity of the bloodline, the ancestral ceremony must first be held once the new emperor ascends the throne. He continued, the most important part of the ceremony is to bind the ancestors to this new emperor, so as to not allow the imperial clan to be tainted by those of improper blood. But before he could finish, Yi Mu had waved her hands in dismissal. It's fine. This time, there's no need for that. Your Qi family's era has already ended. Although Yi Li did not use Yan Su, he was already able to obtain the forbidden map of the imperial army. Furthermore, he has a mountain of treasures at his fingertips. Um what I said was only the cold truth you want to take a step ab from ascending the throne isn't a drop of blood for this bone ritual just a little scary? And then her eyes suddenly shone in understanding. Unless don't have the royal bloodline. After she finished speaking, she smiled satisfied with her logic. But upon seeing Yen Zhu's already grave expression turn even darker than before, Yi Mu's expression changed. She laughed dryly, it can't be what I said was right right. Did your mom really cheat on your father emperor? Yen Su did not say anything. Back then, his father emperor suspected that his mother had a secret son with another man, which was why he had tried to kill him in rage. Later on, his mother's family helped his mother turn the tables on him, but the truth was, he really did not possess a drop of the royal drop. Before his mother died, she knew that the matter would be exposed sooner or later, so she had secretly told him the truth. Her mother said, that before she got married to the emperor, she was already in love with another man her gigolo. And it wasn't an unrequited love they had truly fallen in love with each other. Even when they died together, they were not afraid. The only worry was their son. If she died, how lonely would her son be in this world, left all alone? When he knew this truth, Yen Su suddenly didn't feel ashamed for his bloodline. Only, he pitied his mother's unfortunate life. He also didn't expect that to this fateful day, his bloodline would actually serve as his greatest natural danger. If his blood is rejected in the bone ritual, even if he washed the imperial court in his blood, it would still be hard for him to become the emperor. The corners of Yi Mu's mouth twitched. They were only supposed to have a meal, why of the sudden did a plot twist develop? You're just afraid to shed some blood. That's all, uh huh. Yi Mu patted her chest comfortingly and said, such a tradition doesn't really exist. Don't overthink things, it doesn't matter whose blood it is. Really? Yen Su merely sneered, are you joking? As recorded in the history of the southern dynasties, the former emperor, Liang Wu had a son named Xiao Zong. His mother, Wu Shuyuan, was actually an imperial concubine of the Qi palace. Because she was pretty and talented, the emperor Liang Wu had taken a fancy to her and took her as his own. She gave birth to Xiao Zong in the seventh month after entering the palace. Everyone in the palace suspected that Xiao Zong was not a child born from the emperor. Therefore, when he grew up, he had gone to dig up the tombs of the former emperor. He dug up the corpse and dripped his own blood to drip onto the skeleton. In the end, his blood really seeped into the bones now, tell me, is this not true? Chapter, 108 Yi Mu burst out laughing, the person you're talking about is too stupid. If he had dripped a chicken's blood on that person's bones he had dug on the tomb, then he would have accidentally discovered that person was a long-lost brother of a chicken. Ha 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 ha. You. Yen Su glared and pointed at Yi Mu. How unreasonable could this pipsqueak go? When Yi Mu saw this, she took this opportunity to viciously bite his finger. Yen Su made a hiss sound and tried to retract his hand, are you crazy? 
why would you bite me? Yi Mu laughed mischievously. Don't be so stingy. Just lend me a few drops of your blood. Now, watch carefully. She picked up an extremely rotten pig bone from the bowl of soup and squeezed a drop of blood into it from Yen Zhu's bite wound. You're just messing around. Yen Su angrily retracted his hand, but in the next second, he widened his eyes in shock. His blood had fused with the bone. Yi Mu laughed hysterically, finding the situation too humorous to describe in words. I didn't expect that you would be relatives with a pig. At this time Yen Su did not notice her teasing and only asked her seriously, what is going on? How could this? After the death of a human or animal, the soft tissues attached to the bones would rot, revealing the porous structure of the bones. Let alone blood, even water would seep in if in contact with it. I really didn't expect you to be depressed for a whole day just because of a piece of broken bone. Yen Zhu's expression was bewildered and uncertain. But as Yi Mu's relaxed words fell into his ears, a thunderclap struck down from the heavens, to him. It was actually like this. Really this matter was just a simple thing he had been overthinking. Previously, his second brother came to him where Yen Su told him he had an undisciplined nature and that he preferred the border of the kingdom rather than the imperial court. He said that if he were able to seize the throne, he would hand it over to him as well. Only, he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to get through the bone rites. So, he thought about an unorthodox solution these past few days, being troubled by it for a long time. He did not expect that this dilemma of the bone ritual was just a small matter in Yi Mu's eyes. This is really. Yen Su was beyond ecstatic for the very first time in days and he suddenly lifted up Yi Mu who was busy eating. Yu Yu. What are you doing? Being carried away so casually by Yen Su these past few days, she had been wary every time he did this again. Again? What is he planning to do now? Yen Zhu's eyes lit up, but he was used to suppressing his emotions. No matter how excited he was, he would only express it in a few words. Thank you. You've solved my biggest problem, he merely said. The corners of Yi Mu's mouth twitched fiercely, raising me up in the air without a word. Your way of thanking others is quite unique. Her words, matched the stifled expression on her face, made her look indescribably adorable at this moment. Yen Zhu's heart was stirred a second time with this pipsqueak's bulging white and tender face. He didn't know what overcame him, but he pulled her closer and kissed her on her cheek. Really, thank you very much. Not only did it solve his dilemma, it also resolved the grievances that had been plaguing him for many days. Originally, he had resented his mother because of this matter, but now, it was completely gone. Her body was soft and fragrant, and her cheeks were like jelly as he kissed her. Yen Su felt like this experience opened a new door to an exciting world. This kind of feeling really made him want to kiss her again. What the hill? Yi Mu covered her face immediately with her hands and looked at the handsome man who was just inches away from her with shock. She was only six years old. You beast, let me go. She glared at him furiously. Her round eyes and bright, pink lips made her porcelain face look even more adorable. Just as Yen Su was about to do dive in for another kiss on the cheek, a cold voice suddenly cut in, What are you doing? Yi Mu's heart skipped a beat. She turned around and saw Mo Linyuan standing in front of the door. It's over. Oh, it's over. I've been captured. Strange, why did she feel a sense of shame as if she was a wife just caught cheating red-handed by her husband? Chapter, 109 When Yen Su saw Mo Linyuan arrive, he stared blankly for a moment before his expression became emotionless once more. After a long while, he calmed his giddy mood and gently placed Yi Mu down. He then said to Mo Linyuan in an ambiguous manner, Have you settled your matters? Seeing that you're already here, then that should be the case. He'll be taking my leave now, he rambled in one breath, not caring for the other party's reply at all. Mo Linyuan's expression was extremely unsightly. Although he was like Yen Su, where the habit of concealing his emotions was born to him, for some reason when he saw Yen Su carrying Yi Mu, he felt an intense feeling the urge to kill this miscreant. It was as if someone was trying to take her away, 
and someone actually dared to take her away. The more his feelings threatened to burst to the surface, the more obvious it became. And this deep hostility made Yan Su frown in confusion. He saw that Emo Linyuan did not say anything in reply, so he left directly without giving his goodbyes. The instant he passed by Emo Linyuan, he heard the youth say, I don't need you to protect me anymore. As well as her. There's no need to be by her side any longer. Yen Su paused for a moment. There was an indescribable feeling of loss that welled up in his heart, but his mouth only opened to lightly say, that would be for the best. Then he left. Yi Mu, the spectator, could only think, are you telling me, Mo Linyuan brought his men out and asked Yen Su to protect her in his stead? Since when did his relationship with Yen Su become this good? Just when Yi Mu was at a loss, Mo Linyuan walked over to her side. In the next second, he reached out his hand to wipe her face. Eh? What's wrong with her face? Mo Linyuan, locked in a perpetual frown, wiped her forehead a few times. Her delicate, white face was clearly devoid of anything, but he still felt very uncomfortable. But because her face was very tender, after a few brushes it had already became red. He pursed his lips and asked Yi Mu in a serious tone, Should we wash your face? Ha! Huh. Yi Mu somewhat embarrassedly wiped her face. Why was he so affected? She was still a child. Mo Linyuan, it's normal for adults to kiss a child from cuteness. I've also done this before. She wanted to say. It's nothing, I've wiped it clean Yimu spoke with an indifferent tone, only to see Mo Linyuan continue staring at her face with a stern expression. She suddenly felt awkwardness wash over her. I'll go wash my face now. After hearing that she was going to comply, Mo Linyuan's slightly pale face, finally had a hint of a small smile. Good girl. Yimu walked away in a daze. It was strange she was obviously the one who was raising him, but why did it feel like the situation has reversed this time, and he was being the adult? After that day, the situation in the Yu country had only became even more tense. Yi Mu had never seen Yan Su after that visit with his mother, and even Mo Linyuan could not be seen. One night there was a sudden fire on the horizon. It was strong and huge, lighting up a good part of the sky. Dong the sound of running, screaming and killing rang out within the palace. What was going on? Had the people from outside finally rushed in? Yi Mu, woken up by this sudden clamor, immediately got up from the bed. The imperial palace of the Yu country had more than 10,000 soldiers of the imperial army guarding inside. Their arrangement and station would change every so often. However, there were specific conditions for this change. It was, if one could obtain the forbidden map of the Imperial Army, they would be able to move the Imperial Army by their will. Other than that, the Imperial Army only listened to the reigning Emperor's orders. They were the last line of defense of the Imperial City during times of danger, and she didn't hear any large-scale movements from outside her bedroom. What's happening? The moment Yi Mu opened the door, a man appeared in front of her. She knew this person, what happened? Yi Mu asked bizarrely. Zhang Yuan, who was covered in blood, had a serious expression on his face. The General's Mutinity. Chapter, 110. Yi Mu was taken by surprise, but then she heard Zhang Yuan continue, the general initiated a military charge at the city gates and is now facing off against Prince Zhao. Furthermore, with the help of the second prince, the general's surprise attack was able to quickly and successfully defeat Prince Zhao's military troops. However, Prince Zhao has escaped under the protection of his most trusted aides and is most likely hiding inside the imperial palace. Therefore, the general told his subordinate to bring the young miss back to the general's estate immediately. As this place will soon no longer be safe. When Yi Mu heard that Yi Li had launched an attack, she was slightly worried. What about Aji? Where is he? Zhang Yuan respectfully replied, the young master Aji's matter this subordinate did not closely follow. I apologize miss. Yi Mu nodded understandingly but the strange feeling in her heart became stronger by the minute. Why would the second prince suddenly help Yi Li? Even if they weren't enemies, they shouldn't be acquaintances in the first place more and more doubts caused her to understand the situation vaguely, 
but she did not dare overthink matters more and went with Zhang Yuan. After they were able to leave the imperial palace, Yi Mu finally saw Yi Li. But this wasn't at the general's manor. Instead, they were at the city's heaven sacrifice plaza. At this moment, the street was in complete disorder with not a single civilian in sight. The blood stains on the ground proved that the place had been thoroughly affected by the intense battle between the two armies just this morning. In the square, tens of thousands of people wearing black armors stood crowded around the heaven's altar at the center of the square. Everyone had firm looks on their face, but when they looked at the person on the altar, their eyes were filled with loyalty. Yi Mu found it even more strange. Just when she raised her head to look towards the heaven's altar, she finally understood the reason for their gazes. Yi Li was standing on top of it, tall and majestic. Muir, you're here. With this single sentence of recognition from Yi Li, the crowd immediately opened up a path for Yi Mu to pass through. Yi Mu suppressed her fear as she walked nearer towards the altar. As she reached him, Yi Li's large hand covered her head. They hadn't seen each other for a long time, but she could tell that he was much more spirited than last time she had seen him. His entire person was brimming with vigor, like a ferocious beast that had just been thrown out of its cage. Father, Yi Mu asked hesitantly, why are so many people gathered here? Didn't they say that despite Prince Zhao suffering a resounding defeat, he had escaped? During this opportunity, Yi Li ought to be mobilizing his inner force expert to search for him, so why did he have this absurd idea of launching a misplaced attack on the imperial palace, of all places? Yi Li smiled slightly and said, as for Prince Zhao, I have already sent some of my talented subordinates to capture him. Now with his army scattered, it is a good time to move forward and seize immediate victory. He looked towards the imperial palace and mumbled, right now, the imperial guards are the only last line of defense left. Therefore, Yi Li wants to use this opportunity to instantly attack the imperial palace just because he had beaten Prince Zhao. How did this idea even come to life? Yi Mu was dazed at this unexpected, sloppy plan. Although the current situation in the Imperial Palace was unclear, to launch an attack was too hasty of a decision. As for the matter with the second prince, despite Yi Li telling her that they had both reached an agreement, why was he nowhere to be seen? The more Yi Mu thought about it, the more muddled her thoughts on the matter became. However, before she could even raise any questions, Yi Li pointed at the people beside him and grinned, you came at the perfect time. It just so happens to be an opportune moment for you to meet someone before we proceed to battle. When I striving to seize the position from the emperor, I had many brothers by my side. But now, they are the only ones left. Yi Mu looked at the twenty to thirty people beside Yi Li. In spite of their calm auras, they looked extraordinary Yi Mu guessed they were experts like Yi Li. Most importantly, she could see their extreme loyalty to him. The uneasy feeling in her heart grew stronger. Just because victory was within his grasp, Yi Li had summoned all of his hidden cards. Chapter, 111 At this critical juncture, Yi Li had abandoned his previous comrades and replaced them with these people. It could already be seen how much Yi Li trusted and valued them. General, is this your prodigal daughter? So very young. Her calmness amidst the chaos is indeed extraordinary. An old general with a scar on his face, who was standing beside Yi Li, interjected. He faced Yi Li, doing as he pleased, but Yi Li did not have the slightest intention of lambasting him. Instead, he laughed loudly and said, That's right, she's my favorite daughter. She's definitely an extraordinary one. Everyone laughed in tandem to this father praising his child. With their loyalty towards Yi Li, they naturally became intricately concerned for Yi Mu. Such a quick change in affection made Yi Mu feel at a trance, stirrings of an old memory coming back to her she seemed to be able to see her old comrades before she had crossed into this world. Nevertheless, when Yi Li was inside the treasure trove, killing his own trusted aides without blinking, how could these people still trust Yi Li so much? Did they not know the true nature of Yi Li, or did Yi Li do something for them? Yi Mu couldn't help but raise her head to ask Yi Li, Father, are they your old subordinates? Why haven't I seen them before? Yi Li touched her head as a profound light flashed in his eyes. You haven't seen them before because they were suppressed by the imperial government. 
They lived a life worse than pigs and dogs and I had no choice but to hide them for the meantime. Yi Li's words caused the scene to quiet down. Many people's expressions were moved as they were filled with gratitude towards him. When they were together with father, they all went out with me to take back the land occupied by the Chu country, and they even expanded this country's territory in the process. Who would have known that after the war ended, the emperor, who had originally promised them wealth and glory, would actually go back on his word. Other than father, there were also two generals back then. They were too honest seeing that they were unable to reclaim the benefits a soldier deserved, they said something they shouldn't have in anger and were killed by the emperor for harboring ulterior motives. I was the only one who survived, being careful and submissive. When he said this revelation, his eyes were so deep and tone tragic, as if he was speaking of a past he rather would not recall his words caused Yi Mu's heart to be thrown into turmoil. Had she never truly known him after all this time? Wasn't Yi Li a cautious and ruthless person? Or was everything just a facade and his carefulness and ruthlessness were for the people he secretly wanted to protect? This this was the truth. Yi Li raised his head and swept his gaze across the entire arena with a serious expression. Muir, there are a lot of people here. They are all the people who fought on the battlefield and bathed in blood. Because of this, many of them did not have homes, and they had lost their healthy bodies. As they aged, they did not receive the rewards they deserved. Instead, they were endlessly enslaved and oppressed. In a more grieved voice, he continued, the cowardly emperor was afraid that the influence of these warriors would be too great and endanger his own position, so he placed great importance on the scholars of the country and oppressed the warriors. Thus, many soldiers were rejected by society and they eventually died, living an unfortunate life. They did not even have enough to eat, let alone the glory they deserve for their sacrifices. When those at the top benefited of the conquered lands without lifting their fingers as they spent all their time drinking and wasting the people's riches. Is it fair that those who had fought for it, with their blood, tears and sweat, live their days without proper clothes even covering their bodies and with nothing to eat? Unfair. Since it's not fair, there should naturally be someone who will rise from this oppression to uphold justice. Yi Li used his internal energy to transmit his voice. As his voice became louder and faster as he spoke, the last few words caused everyone's spirits to rise. From today onwards, we, the warriors, are no longer the inferior people. After I capture the Yu country, martial artists will replace those sleazy court officials. Since when did scholars only have the iron first to rule this country and a martial artist can't? If they do not give us what we deserve, then we will snatch it away from their corrupt hands. His words filled with righteousness exalted everyone's spirits in the audience. Chapter, 112 All of a sudden, the people in the square heatedly shouted, Reclaim it back. With the shouts a never-ending cry as they raised their hands towards Yi Li. Afterward, the ominous sound of gongs and drums beating suddenly came from the horizon, and this signal made the corners of Yi Li's mouth turn to a satisfied smirk. He shielded Yi Mu behind him and loudly declared, The heavens are above and the earth is below. I, Yi Li, and my brothers will make this oath, for the success of this dynasty, for the riches of this country be given to the common people, we will seize a quick victory. We will go to the underworld together brothers in this life and brothers for the next lives to come. After Yi Li finished speaking, he picked up the blood wine placed on to the side and sprinkled it all over the stage. This prompted the veteran soldiers on the stage raised their goblets as well. For the prosperity of the common people and the country will go to the underworld together. I swear to die for the sake of the general. After saying that, they all solemnly finished the blood wine in one gulp. The sound of gongs and drums in the horizon became more rigorous as the soldiers below the stage raised their swords and shouted. Die for the general. Even if death claims us, it would still be glorious. In this moment, even though Yi Li's mind was firm, he still couldn't help but feel touched. Soon after, a veteran beside him handed over a long pole with a striking flag in both of his hands. General, the auspicious hour has arrived. The sacrificial flag. When Yi Li heard this, he laughed heartily and received it. He used his inner strength to fiercely insert the tip of the flag into the white jade tile beneath him. 
He then raised his head and bellowed, the military soul has been born. After he finished speaking, he waved his hand and the black and red flag was raised high up. Above the flag were two large black words eternal ye. And as it fluttered with the wind, everyone knelt down. Long live the general. Long live the eternal ye dynasty. The mass of people dressed in black knelt down like a tide. Everyone cut their palms open with their own daggers. Blood dripped into the earth, into the place where they once risked their lives and sprayed their blood. A surging will was gathered together within these people. The words, Long live the eternal ye dynasty were even more earth-shaking. While Yi Mu was a bystander watching, she felt her soldiers' blood boil from the stimulation of the people's combined will. These individuals below would truly die for Yi Li's will. That was why with just one cry, their killing intent soared to the heavens. But in her eyes, this current upright Yi did not erase his nefarious personality from before it was still very suspicious. Facing a living warrior that was about to enter the battlefield, she couldn't help but pull at Yi Li. Father, are you going to attack the palace today? But the situation is still unclear, isn't this decision too hasty? Yi Mu was a child so her voice was low and only Yi Li, the nearest to her, had heard it. When he had caught wind of this, he glared at Yi Mu, not sparing her words some contemplation and immediately gave the order. The sacrifice of the flag is a success. Open the gates and besiege the city. At his command, the old generals around him retreated first, following the route they had already agreed on, heading towards the palace from four different directions. The black squad was like an unending stream of blood, pouring into the heart of the enemy. Yi Mu became even more uneasy. Seeing that Yi Li was about to leave, she stepped forward and grabbed him a second time, this time more forcefully. Father, Prince Zhao has not yet been captured the second prince's motives are also fishy. These are all problems. If father really wants to usurp the throne, then he shouldn't be so hasty to achieve his victory. Chapter, 113 Yi Li stared at her with a slightly hostile gaze, do I need a kid like you to teach me? I have been waiting for this day for so many years. Besides, the most important thing to do in a war is to not hesitate. Today, our army has easily defeated Prince Zhao's army our momentum is at its peak. So if we don't act now, how long are we going to wait? Being a soldier in her old life, she was truly unwilling to have her corpse spread all over the ground because of Yi Li's wrong judgment. Since Prince Zhao had already lost, they actually only needed to wait a few more days to confirm that there was nothing brewing behind the scenes, such as unexpected traps, before he could obtain victory. Since he has been waiting for so many years already, why couldn't he wait today? Father, even if you don't think for yourself, you should think for those who believe in you. In a battle between two armies, even the tiniest mistake could lead to heavy casualties. Could it? Enough. Yi Li frowned. Zhang Yuan. Your subordinate is here. Send the young miss to the general's estate. Yes, lord. Father, would you listen to what I have to say? Since she had wanted Yi Li to win from the start, she was naturally not expecting him to lose from this rush decision. However, his sudden order to attack the city was really a strange one. Why was that? Yi Mu. Yi Li coldly interrupted her. On the rooftop, the last team was still waiting for him to give out his command, so he didn't have much time left. His large hand grabbed the small hand that Yi Mu was holding onto his arm as he lowered his head and said in a low voice, Actually, before I brought you back today, I was very hesitant. Yi Mu looked at him in confusion. When the second prince made the deal with me, he told me that he needed some reassurance. Therefore, he wanted you to stay in the palace as a hostage. He was worried I would crush him in this partnership, so he needed some guarantee. Yi Mu's face paled, but she still held on to his arm tightly. But if I want to succeed this time, the second prince should not continue living. If someone with another surname wishes to rule, the entire imperial court will have to be purged. Therefore, in my plan, you were already destined to be a victim. The moment I attacked the second prince, the second prince would have definitely used you as a hostage, but he would think I won't save you. Yi Mu glared at Yi Li with her round eyes, her hands still tightly holding on to Yi Li's arm. 
why are you telling me all these? He had already rescued her, so why did he still felt the need to tell her that he had almost given her up? Because I've never been a good father. When Yi Li said this, he actually softened his tone. This time, not only am I fighting for just one cause I am fighting for a change in the generations to come. Prince Zhao, the second prince and their allies all have a different ideal clashing against mine. That only makes them all my enemies. Although today's battle has a chance of winning, there's still a chance of failure. But last night and I thought about it for an entire night I don't know how long has it been since I've hesitated in making an order. But last night, the cause of my hesitancy was because I thought of you. If I hadn't always been driven by an extreme idea, how would I have lived till today? Did I have a chance to be like other fathers, with their children around their knees, looking at them with affection in their eyes? I didn't. That's why I wasted my resources and sent people to the palace for you to snatch you out. If I win this battle, you will be my princess. And if I lose then treat it as a father who hasn't done anything for you and wants to do something for you in the end. After he finished speaking, he opened Yi Mu's fingers bit by bit and pushed her into Zhang Yuan's embrace. He looked at her as if she still wanted to say something. In Yi Mu's eyes, she had never seen such a raw expression on his eyes before. Yet in the end, he didn't say a word. He turned around and gave the order, let's go. Yes, general. They chorused. Only when the last batch of soldiers of the black squad departed did Yi Mu realize that her eyes had already become red without her knowing. So this morning when she had heard the sound of hurried footsteps in the palace, it wasn't the imperial guards preparing for war, but Yi Li's people that he had sent into the palace to take her back. Chapter 114 According to the agreement, once Yi Li snatched her away from the palace, it would be equivalent as going back on his word with the second prince. Would Yi Li, whose interests were always his main priority, do something like this that isn't beneficial to him in any way? But Yi Mu's train of thoughts was broken when Zhang Yuan said, Young miss, let's head back to the residence. The general has the map of the imperial army and has learned the map by heart now. Rest assured that there won't be a problem. Even if the second prince wants to join forces with the imperial army, with the emperor still alive and the map with the general, the imperial army will not listen to his commands even if he is of royal blood. The chances of winning are that high. Even if reinforcements from the surrounding countries wanted to come over, it would still take a few days to reach the Yu country. Therefore, Yi Li did indeed have the largest number of people yet there were also quite a lot of soldiers if the imperial army and the second prince's forces would unite. If they were to join hands, the outcome of the battle would be difficult to determine but bloodshed would most likely be a lot. This meant that blood would flow like rivers the moment the fight commences, fate notwithstanding. And in the end, the outcome of this gruesome war would all depend on the will of the heavens. Under the gloomy sky, Yi Mu looked at the troops that were getting further and further away and asked, Zhang Yuan, when you went to save me today, what happened? Zhang Yuan remembered the miserable state he went through this morning when he rescued Yi Mu and his eyes dimmed a little. If not for the general's intelligence, we would not have been able to find the young miss inside the complex interiors of the palace with the imperial army guarding vigilantly. But even with this, we have lost more than a hundred of our deadly warrior she cares so much for the young miss person to be rescued. Zhang Yuan's words caused Yi Mu's heart to be slightly shaken. A great battle was coming, Yet Yi Li had actually used the lives of over a hundred people in exchange for her. Was it truly because he was afraid that she would be in danger inside the palace? But what was really startling was that there were more than twenty internal martial artists who had guarded her in the palace. This meant that the second prince didn't really consider her as a hostage at all. For her, who had the lowly position of a daughter born from a concubine, she couldn't find herself to believe the second prince would raise such a ruckus and send so many experts to guard her. This could only mean one thing the person who really wanted to keep her there was Mo Linyuan. And as for why the second prince would listen to Mo Linyuan, it could only mean that they had long since allied with each other. History was repeating itself according to the plot in the book. The more Yi Mu thought about it, the more she felt that she was seeing things clearer this time, but ultimately, the more she realized things, the more ironic she found the situation. She was truly foolish. 
It was only because Mo Linyuan had taken the risk to steal the map of the Imperial Army for Yili did she thought that the winner of this battle would be Yili. But Mo Linyuan did not fully lie to her. His connection with Yen Su hadn't been hidden from her just opted to tell her bits of the truth. She should have discovered it a long time ago, but her eyes were open too late. If everything went according to the plot of the book, Yi Li would lose this battle there is a high possibility that the map of imperial army given by Mo Linyuan is a counterfeit one. Another fact was Yi Li hadn't forgotten to rescue her before the great battle. No matter how she thought of it, despite the kind of ruthless person he was, she wanted to save Yi Li's life. Is it too late now? Snowflakes slowly fell from the sky once again. The winter wind seemed extremely cold so cold that it caused one's thoughts to freeze. Chapter, 115 Four hours later Reporting General The number of troops in the western part of the city has greatly exceeded the estimated number. Reporting General The defensive formation of the Imperial Army in the east of the city is not a crossbow formation. Report General The Emperor is already dead, and before he died, the Emperor handed the control of the Imperial Army to the fifth prince, Qi Yen, and Qi Yen had already joined hands with the second prince. Only after attacking did Yili realize that the reality before him was vastly different from the information he had obtained. How could he not understand it clearly at this time? The map of the Imperial Army was fake the arrangement of the Imperial Army was completely different as stated on it. Moreover, the equipment, armor and weapons used as stated in the map was also a complete sham. He ruthlessly tore the paper in his hand, damn it. That slave dares to lie to me. The situation was obviously already extremely disadvantageous, but Yili thought of something on the spot and raised his hand angrily, continue to attack the city. Don't be afraid. Even if the Imperial Army and the Second Prince were to join hands, they would only have 20,000 troops in the city. We have the larger number of people than them. Yi Li angrily ordered, and then used the fastest speed to change the previous arrangement. Although they were caught unprepared by the Imperial Army earlier, after changing their tactics on attacking, the two sides soon became evenly matched. However, Yi Li's people were evidently even more fearless as they pushed forward with all their might towards the Imperial Palace. At this moment, a small figure suddenly broke through the chaotic battlefield. Father. Yi Li's ears twitched at this familiar voice. Indeed, when he turned his head around, he saw Yi Mu in the flesh. Damn it! Where is Zhang Yuan? Yi Mu had spent a lot of effort before she had managed to successfully shake off Zhang Yuan, so he was quite delayed on chasing her. Seeing Yi Li reining his horse in, she hurriedly ran towards Yi Li. Along the way, many soldiers saw her and shifted the blades in their hands away from her. Yi Mu was wearing a red dress. Amidst the black army and the white snowflakes, she seemed to be the only color in this brutal scene. What are you doing here? Yi Li glared ferociously at Yi Mu. The unexpected loss in military strength just moments ago made his heart feel as if it was being stabbed by knives. At this moment, his gaze towards anyone who would look at him carried a heavy killing intent. Yi Mu panted and said loudly, Don't attack anymore. Now that the Imperial Army and the Second Prince are colluding, how can you be evenly matched with them anymore? Who said I'm not evenly matched? Yi Li said in a cold voice, even if I have to use corpses to pave my way towards the palace, then I will slaughter everyone along my way. Evenly matched? No, we are far stronger than them. Go back and be a good girl. Father. Yi Mu didn't expect Yi Li's mind to be so fixed. The situation was clearly unfavorable, so why did he still recklessly bargain his life away? Father, now that Prince Zhao has disappeared, if the second prince were to capture him and force him to gather troops to fight you, then you. But before she could finish, Yi Li suddenly reined the horse towards her. Sitting on top of the horse, he turned over his bloodstained spear and pointed it straight at Yi Mu's nose. Don't come back. Yi Mu was stunned and stopped in her tracks. After charging inside the palace walls, Yi Li, like everyone else, had already killed to the point where his eyes were bloodshot. He pointed his spear at Yi Mu, his eyes filled with intense coldness. 
who knows if you and that slave are on the same side. His origins are unknown, and I still can't find out his identity. He pretended to submit to me, but in reality, he used the map of the Imperial Army to deceive me. You have a close relationship with him. Did you already know of his scheme? Did you plot it to harm me together with him? Whose spies are you all? Yi Mu's expression was tense at Yi Li's growing fury. I didn't. No. Yi Li sneered, Are you truly my daughter? Or do you wish for my death, like many others? Now that my army has attacked the Imperial Palace, you want me to retreat? Ha 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 ha. Do I have a way out? Ah, uh, I got it, you're a traitor too. I'm not. I just wanted to keep you alive, would you calm down? You are not. Then would you dare tell me what is that slave doing, or you do not know at all? When Yi Mu heard this, her face instantly paled. Although she didn't truly know, she knew how the plot would progress in the book. Yi Li deeply looked at complicated her and a look of disappointment flashed in his eyes. Just when Yi Mu thought he would be furious and stab her to death with his spear, he actually took away his weapon. Scram! On the battlefield, there is no need for old people, women and children like you. Chapter 116 After Yi Li said this, he adamantly rushed inside the palace once again. It was as if the imperial palace was a gigantic black hole, sucking in countless lives into it forcefully. The smell of blood was thick in the air and the nauseating scent of burnt flesh accompanied it. Huge, Black smoke curled up ominously into the sky the scene in front of her was like a picture from hell. This is war. The surrounding people had all left, leaving only Yi Mu standing behind with a blank stare at the city gate, powerless and insignificant. What went wrong? Why did Yi Li choose to enter the palace even if means his death? Is his unfortunate ending as stated in the plot destined to be unchangeable? Trash. Within the confines of the imperial palace and inside the emperor's chambers, Mo Linyuan's face was deathly pale. The brush in his hand had long since been shattered into pieces. His chest was heaving up and down violently, and his expression too terrifying for his age no one would have thought that he was actually capable of being incensed. Mo Linyuan tried his best to calm himself down, but when the thought of Yi Li capturing Yi Mu rushed into his mind, the ill-fated situations that could arise plagued him. Yi Li could perhaps use her as a bargaining chip to threaten him, or in a worst-case scenario, he would hurt her out of fury. His anger was excruciating. It made his murderous aura surge around him, causing everyone to tremble with fear, not daring to speak a single word. When the second prince entered, he was dumbfounded for a moment at this unexpected scene. Although he had only known Mo Linyuan for only a few months, the young man in front of him was too cunning and calm to the point where it was chilling. He did not seem like a ten-year-old young boy at all could even go as far as to describe he had the bearing of an adult the same age as him. But now, his rage and murderous presence were all accumulated between his frowning eyebrows. And in front of him, many internal force masters knelt down reverently. Usually, these people were very prideful, but at the face of an imminent debacle, they immediately prostrated themselves at the feet of this young man. Your Highness doesn't need to be so mad. The second prince forced a placating smile and said, Yi Mu is Yi Li's daughter. A tiger doesn't poison his cubs, let alone a human kill his own child. Mo Linyuan swept his gaze over him and suddenly sneered. If it was an ordinary person, perhaps it would be as he said. But, is Yi Li an ordinary person? When he was playing as Yi Li's subordinate and stuck to his side, by chance he had grasped information that Yi Li had hidden a lot of loyal soldiers underneath the privy eyes of the imperial family. Initially, he came to the conclusion that Yi Li felt humiliated by the emperor and thus wanted to start a rebellion. But later on, he realized that two of the three generals who had led the army of Yu country who had lambasted the emperor had been framed for conspiracy. Once the two generals are executed by the emperor, the loyal militias under their respective banner would also be suppressed. Yi Li harmed others and became a predator, but in this way, he was able to save the old generals making them see him as their savior, and in turn gain their gratitude and loyalty. He was such a profound, intelligent and vicious person. Mo Linyuan didn't believe he would hold himself back when blocked by anyone, not even his daughter. 
So, how could he not be anxious? Mo Linyuan closed his eyes and said to the people kneeling in front of him, I don't care where you will go or who you will fight. I'm only concerned of one person and she must be left unscathed. Otherwise, you will all need to answer to me. His overly strict words caused everyone to feel dread, and those kneeling quickly cowed out, Your Highness, please rest your heart. We will go to the general's manor right now. Wait. Some men must be left and venture to the middle palace. Yi Li's men might have already reached there. And there is a high probability that he will bring her. Yes, your highness. The experts hurriedly left, leaving only M.O. Linyuan who was still uneasy. Chapter, 117 At this point, Yi Li would have definitely discovered that the forbidden map of the imperial army in his hands was completely fake. Would he vent out his fury on Yi Mu? After all, Yi Mu could be considered his closest aide. Back then, Mo Linyuan had chosen to form an alliance with Yen Su precisely because of Yi Li's cruel nature. When he thought about how Yen Su had come to him, informing him that Yi Li had personally given his daughter to the emperor to enjoy, and how he used his former comrades to his benefit naturally did not have a good impression on this person. If he really wanted to help a person ascend the throne, why should he choose someone with a troublesome personality? Therefore, from the very beginning, he never really wanted Yi Li to succeed with his plans. The only thing unexpected was that after he numerous people, of whom were martial experts, to protect Yi Mu, Yi Li would actually dare use his men to take her away callous to their lives, whether they died or get injured in the process. He couldn't fathom what the reason was for this brash decision on Yi Li's part. With Yi Li's cold-blooded personality, he shouldn't be able to remember an insignificant pawn like his daughter in the upcoming rebellion. On the most crucial moment, why would did he go forth and take Yimu back? For the first time, M.O. Linyuan couldn't come up with a plausible explanation. Nevertheless, when he thought about how Yimu could be hurt by Yi Li, he immediately blamed himself for not giving her enough protection. Noticing that M.O. Linyuan was caught in his own worries and would not to respond to him, the second prince rubbed his nose thoughtfully and slowly walked towards the bed. Although the emperor had just died, there was no one around him. Originally, he should have died sooner, but M.O. Linyuan wanted them to hang on to the emperor's life, saying that it wasn't his time to die just yet. If the emperor had died earlier, there would be no one left to command the imperial army. Moreover, it was still uncertain whose hands they would fall into. But now, with Yi Li's victory against Prince Zhao, that left him scrambling for an escape, and the emperor dead, the imperial army would fall into the second prince's hands. Therefore, the moment Yi Li would clash with Prince Zhao, it would be the time for the emperor to die. The second prince glanced at the emperor, but there was no change in his tranquil expression. He only used a blanket to cover the emperor. It didn't matter if the emperor died. If he died, then there wouldn't be any more sufferings. Meanwhile, Yi Mu was currently walking around the palace with one agenda in mind, she wanted to find Mo Linyuan. But with the thick battle happening around her right now, it was an impossible feat for her to break through the lines of battle to enter the inner palace. How could I contact him? She was helpless when she suddenly saw the prince's residence to the side. Her eyes suddenly lit up. The last time he had taken her to the cellar, he had forbidden her to come back a second time. Yen Su had also already lived in the prince's estate back when he was still a child. Yi Mu hurriedly ran towards the prince's mansion. Through twists and turns, she finally arrived at a familiar location. And sure enough, just as she was about to enter the ice cellar, she was stopped. Who is it? The shadow guard that Yen Su had sent to protect his mother's body suddenly appeared and blocked Yi Mu on her path. Yi Mu was breathing heavily from her non-stop running. When she saw the person, she only shouted, My name is Yi Mu. I'm here to see Qi Yen. Qi Yen was Yen Zhu's real given name. The shadow guard was stunned. Just as he felt that something was amiss, another male voice drifted out from inside. Yi Mu. Yen Su, donned in armor, was standing in front of her with a helmet in his arms. What are you doing here? He asked curiously. When Yi Mu saw him, she also felt surprised, with a hint of relief mixed in it. 
However, from his current appearance, she knew that he was clearly planning to go to the battlefield, to fight till death. Probably, before he would leave, he wanted to come her and bid his mother farewell. Yen Yi Mu looked at him with a complex expression. Mo Lin Yuan and you have teamed up a long time ago, isn't that right? Yen Su frowned. After he waved for his shadow guards to retreat, only then did he say, right from the day I went to look for him and told him that you were sent to the imperial palace and given willingly to the emperor by Yi Li, had taken the initiative to form an alliance with me. Yen Su could still vividly remember how livid Mo Lin Yuan was back then. To him, it was an unforgivable sin that Yi Mu would even be hurt in the slightest. Yi Mu closed her eyes. So, Mo Lin Yuan had been doing it for her all this time. Yi Mu focused her sights and spoke again, May I know why Yi Li, who has always been a cautious person, suddenly attacked the imperial palace without regard for the consequences? Could it be that you did something? Yen Su looked at her and only shook his head, we didn't do anything. Chapter 118 Yen Su paused and continued, only two major events recently happened today. First was, Prince Zhao suffered defeat in the battle against Yi Li, and the emperor died. His words caused Yi Mu to frown in incomprehension she was truly flabbergasted on what matter had provoked Yi Li. However, since things had already come to this point, she had a premonition of Yi Li's imminent defeat, as things were closely progressing in tandem to the plot. Now, besides Mo Lin Yuan, the only other person she could place her hopes on was the person before her. She hesitated for a moment before she finally asked in a low voice, If Yi Li loses in this battle, can you spare his life? Yen Su could only look at her in utter surprise. I never thought you actually held feelings for someone like Yi Li. Yet, Yi Mu only smiled wryly at this comment. I really don't know if he's good or bad inside but from the very beginning, I never thought of having him killed. So can I ask for this? When Yen Su heard this, he narrowed his eyes, the confines of the cellar suddenly becoming one with silence. I can promise you anything else, he paused for a moment before abruptly saying in his most chilling voice, but Yi Li must die. Yi Mu suddenly raised her head and looked at him her black eyes shining like orbs in the night. Yi Mu, he must die. And, of course there's a reason for this. When Yi Li said he wanted to liberate the martial artists and kick away all scholars, he was dead serious. When was spying inside the generous residence, I also discovered that Yi Li was an extremely paranoid person who distrusts people too much. Especially those who are erudite in their words and are cunning. That's why such a crazy idea was born from him, that is to suppress all scholars and uplift all martial artists after he ascends the throne. As for the consequences of such an act Yi Mu, I think you know about it, he fixed her with an imploring gaze. Yen Su continued, the rebellion failed three years ago because they were cautious and anxious if more emphasis was placed on the martial path, people would inevitably succumb to their carnal impulses. Yi Li is smart and he definitely understands this, but his conceitedness is the very shackle that prevents him from thinking clear-headedly he believes that he can control the situation in the event a revolt breaks out moreover. He is a very inflexible person, who extremely believes in his ideals no one would be able to shake his decision. Paired with this dangerous idea is his extraordinary ability, both brains and brawn. As long as he is alive, he will always be plagued with this huge contradiction in him and he will not stop until he attains it. In order to protect the country and myself, I will not stop either. Yi Mu's tightly clenched fists gradually loosened at the sides. Indeed, she had already sensed that Yi Li's unbendable will, he would refuse to give up, don't talk about retreating. And if Yen Su retreated, Yi Li would also pursue him like a lion hungry for his prey and massacre him. Both options only lead to a dead end for this unfavorable situation. Yen Su closed his eyes momentarily, since the words have already been spoken, there's no point in speaking about this matter any further. I am going to depart for the Middle Palace to fight Yi Li. As for you, I will have someone to send you back to Mo Lin Yuan. With this parting sentence, he waved his hand and summoned his shadow guards to escort Yi Mu. He did not bid farewell to his mother again, and instead, went straight to the battlefield. Yi Mu watched Yen Zhu's disappearing back her gaze becoming more profound by the minute. Then, everything is unstoppable. 
Is it truly destiny for Yi Li to be stubborn on retreating? That he would only advance despite the odds, and only after exhausting all his manpower would he then kill himself in front of a mountain of corpses? Are these truly unchangeable things? He clearly wasn't a person with a clean heart, yet why did he show her a shred of kindness she had never seen in him before? And now she had to calmly watch him die. Yi Mu took a deep breath to steady herself, and when she opened her eyes again, she was filled with an unyielding determination. No matter what happens, she wants to work hard one last time. Thus, when the shadow guards weren't paying attention, she stealthily escaped from their sight and headed towards the battlefield a second time. In the current state of affairs, it seems that taking over the imperial palace is the key that would determine victory or defeat. This time, the second prince had command over the imperial army in the battle with Yi Li. Chapter, 119 Over two hundred years ago, the founding emperor of the Yu country had expended all of his country's resources to construct the most magnificent palace in the world. Now, at the face of a brutish war, it had been completely destroyed, all former beauty and splendor gone. One could even hear the faint weeping of the palace eunuchs as they ran away from the battle. Yimu dodged incoming attacks while hastily advancing with all her might. Whenever someone would see her, no matter which side they were on, they would subconsciously brandish their swords at her without a care in the world that she was only a child. But Yi Mu knew, in war, this was a conditional reaction. In the frenzied battle to death, no one would care whether the other person on the tip of their blade was the old, weak, a babe or an innocent. Yi Mu dodged all the way without hurting anyone. As she progressed further, her movements became faster, and her originally small amount of inner qi was continuously stimulated, as if tiring herself is not an option at this point. As for Yi Li where is he? Dressed in red, she stood on the bloody stone steps, looking around the vicinity and at everyone fighting. Yet, not a single soul was Yi Li. But then, a tall figure suddenly appeared amidst the chaos. Yi Mu's eyes lit up as she forced her petite body to penetrate through the countless masses to run towards his side. Father. At this moment, Yi Li no longer rode a horse, and his armor was broken in many places gone was his former magnificent glory before the battle. Nevertheless, he alone was actually able to resist more than twenty inner force experts crowding him. From this alone, it could already be seen how tremendously powerful his martial arts is. Yi Li thought he was imagining things when he heard Yi Mu's voice. But upon seeing her in the flesh, he subconsciously used all his strength to separate from his enemies and fetch Yi Mu, grabbing her back from the heat of the battle. The twenty enemies on the other side clearly knew Yi Mu's identity. Seeing that Yi Mu was in Yi Li's hands, they didn't dare act rashly for a moment. Why are you here? Yi Li was flustered for the first time and exasperated. He didn't expect that Yi Mu still hadn't left the battlefield. Do you want to die? Yi Mu's little hands tightly held onto his battle robe while the people around them continued in their carnage, with the twenty inner force experts surrounding them. In the raging battle, Yi Li and Yi Mu almost looked insignificant and inconspicuous to the world. Father, go back. Yi Mu's face was currently streaked in black and white dust, and a large portion of her red skirt was burnt. However, her eyes were still clear and bright as she continued to say, I do not care for your reasons why you decided to rush into the imperial palace, but if you will continue this you will definitely die here. But Yi Li only narrowed his eyes dangerously at her when he heard this. You want me to retreat? Impossible. Don't fret about the matters of this general that does not concern you. Scram back now. He pushed her little body, causing Yi Mu to retreat a few steps and fall to the ground. However, she quickly got up and glared at him. Father. Can you listen to me once? Just once. She stepped forward to pull at his battle robe again, and angrily said, I didn't want to care about you either. But because you also wanted to save me, I also won't give up on you so easily. Retreat now. There's no other way. What do you know? Yi Li's tall body slightly trembled, no matter how many people die, there is one thing that I must have today. Even if it means my death, we will get it. His words caused Yi Mu to become stunned, as if she had finally grasped the crux of the matter. However, the enemy's troops suddenly retreated. 
Only then did Yili discover that his army was trapped in the square of the middle palace near the inner palace's entrance. Rows of soldiers appeared on the four walls, their bows raised at the ready and aimed at them. Damn it! They were surrounded. He finally wanted to retreat, but he didn't expect that the path behind him would be blocked. The person leading this unexpected troop was Yen Su, and in this moment, he was exposing his true face for the first time. After removing part of his disguise, his originally rigid face became even more of a cold, handsome beauty. Chapter 120 Yi Li A thief always loses, the rightful victor will prevail you have already lost this battle. With Yen Su soundly sealing Yi Li's escape route, he unsheathed the sword from his waist, pointing the blade at the opponent before him. Yet, from time to time his eyes would faintly fall on Yi Mu's little bodiso out of place of the brutality around. Fifth Prince, Qi Yan Yi Li was only caught in extreme shock. Hadn't his army dispersed all his enemy's men? But then why was it that this fifth prince still had extra troops to stop him at this perilous time? Soon, the answers to his anxious doubts were revealed. Behind Yan Su, a man in black roughly pushed a man forward, who was gagged and tightly tied Yupit was none other than the Prince Xiao. This only meant that Yi Mu's guess was correct, they had already captured Prince Xiao and used his life to threaten his subordinates to fight alongside them through this cunning way, the originally fifty to fifty would surely become an evident loss. Yi Li stared unblinking at Prince Xiao, in a state of disbelief. He was not expecting this drastic change of events. Then it could only be said that they were in a clear disadvantage in this current situation they were outnumbered and surrounded. Then truly has lost. Impossible. He had the upper hand with all his hidden cards, the treasure and his old subordinates. How could he have lost? But no matter how much he felt the situation was incredulous, the truth had already become this no matter how strong he was, he could not withstand the combined efforts of these two men. This unexpected collaboration could only leave him scrambling for his life. Therefore, he could only lose. Yi Mu thought, how similar could this scene possibly be as that in the plot? To think that in the bitter end, she was still unable to change Yi Li's ill fated ending. But then, ha 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 ha. Yi Li released a maniacal laughter after being silent for a moment. Interesting, interesting. Just you. Just all of you. You want this general's life? Yen Su coldly snorted in reply, with a brisk wave of his hand, all the guards on top of the city wall aimed their bows downwards, ready to release the pointy arrows to kill. You think I won't dare take your life? If you commit a gruesome crime in this country, then you rightly deserve to die ten thousand times for it. You want me to be executed? We will have to see first if you have the ability to do so. Yi Li derisively smirked. Yi Li continued to sneer at the youth and said in a seemingly laid-back manner, even if all of you were to scheme against me, did you know that I had already reached an agreement with the Prime Minister of the MO country? Due to our agreement, he can convince the MO Emperor to send their troops to this city at any time. The chess pieces I've also placed at the borders will aid him in infiltrating the country successfully. With this, the MO country will declare the Yu country to be under theirs. Therefore, even if you kill me now, you won't be able to sit on the throne for long. Yi Li's heavy words made Yan Su widen his eyes. He couldn't help but be filled with rage and hate, as he menacingly pointed his sword at the other party. What do you mean? It's fine if you are trying to instigate a pointless rebellion, but you actually dared to lure a wolf into my country. Why not? Seeing him riled up, Yi Li's entire body relaxed. If you want to live, then secure my life. But if you want to die then we will die together. I, Yi Li, will never accept defeat. Yen Su looked at him with a deep, imploring gaze. You have already gone mad. Do you think I would let a madman become emperor? He then narrowed his eyes and bit back, furthermore, your wishful thinking will all be for nothing. So what if you have the prime minister's support? The crown prince of the MO country the rightful, future emperor, is on my side. The crown prince? This time, Yi Li was the one caught in surprise. He had known for a long time that the crown prince of the MO country was missing and had gone hiding in the U country. He was actually saved by the other party. 
After this surprising revelation, the second prince walked out from another direction to join Yen Su. He said with a smile, with your bewildered look, I can only guess that you are still in the dark of the identity of this elusive crown prince of the M.O. country. Let me give you a refresher, he became your slave some time ago. Have you already forgotten him? A slave? That slave? Aji. Could it be that he he is M.O. Linyuan? Yi Li had never been so shocked before. No wonder he couldn't figure out the gist of everything happening around. It was also no wonder that despite being a child, his instincts, like a wild beast, kept driving him to kill the boy. It turns out that the person he had been looking for all this time was right under his nose and had become a slave in his residence. Chapter 121 This constant onslaught of attacks made Yi Li freeze on the spot. Meanwhile, Yen Su was silent in the whole debacle. But then, his gaze shifted to Yi Mu to the side, as he spoke in a stern tone, come here. Don't meddle in the matters of men. You're still a child. Yi Mu's expression could only be described as intensely dispirited. She glanced at the Yi family soldiers around her, with the same gloomy expression as hers, and softly sighed. Now that the outcome of the battle has been decided, can you can you not kill us all? She thought, if Yi Li were truly to die, then at the very least, these people he had instigated to fight for him would not die in vain. Yen Su frowned. I've never thought of slaughtering everyone of the Yi household. For Yen Su, from the very beginning to the end, the only person he desired to kill was Yi Li. At this moment, Yi Li, who had his head lowered the entire time, suddenly spoke with a coarse voice. Muir, you already knew about Mo Linyuan's identity, didn't you? Although his tone was very low, when it entered Yi Mu's ears, it felt as if the words weighed her little body down by a thousand pounds. After everything, she still could not change the plot. Yi Mu turned around to look at Yi Li's weathered face covered in blood and nodded calmly of course, she already knew. In an instant, Yi Li's gaze became extremely terrifying. And because you were aware of his identity, you held back from cutting his tongue. Yi Mu pursed her lips. Yes, that's right. Yi Li gripped the handle of his blade in deathly grip. So you knew from the beginning that that his help was all a sham. That in truth, you were scheming against me with him. You knew the map of the Imperial Army was a fake, and that I would lose in the inevitable end you knew the fate of these people were to die. Yi Mu frowned at this barrage of accusations, but without waiting for her to reply, Yi Li quickly interrupted. I was wondering why you were so protective of him it turns out that you're one of his men. The reason you hid by my side and humbled yourself to me was all for him, right? Placing my trust on you had been all for nothing to think that you dared to betray me. As he roared, his inner chi gushed out in a frenzy. Yi Mu's expression immediately became tense. In the face of a raging Yi Li, she could only refute, I didn't do it. But Yi Li was done listening to anything she had to say. Without a word, he thrusted the blade in his hand towards Yi Mu's face. Quick, save her. Yen Su was stunned and hurriedly ordered his men to help. Not only the people around Yen Su rushed forward, but the twenty experts from before also used their full strength to block Yi Li's attacks. But the furious Yi Li's martial prowess was even more astonishing than before. No matter how many people tried to stop him, his bell-like eyes only focused on Yi Mu's lithe body, and he was getting closer and closer. I've been helping you all this time. Even if you want to kill me, you'll only say the truth. Yi Mu replied while trying to escape. How dare you lie to my face? Yi Li's eyes were bloodshot as he fought one-on-one -on -one against thirty in a chaotic battle, furtively pressing closer towards where Yi Mu was. Since you already knew that he is the crown prince and that I was searching for him for a long time, how can you say you are helping me? After he finished speaking, the blade in his hand brought with it the smell of blood as it hacked down on her mercilessly Yi Mu barely dodged the sharp curve of the blade. But as it brushed past her face by a margin, the hair on her back were instantly cut. You deserve to die. The more Yi Li spoke, the faster the blade in his hand rushed towards Yi Mu. Even if there were many people trying to block his attacks, Yi Li was simply too fast. Yi Mu didn't even know how she was able to dodge attacks at such a speed. Stop! 
A youth's voice suddenly sounded amidst the imminent carnage, and in the next second, the strongest expert beside Emo Linyuan suddenly appeared and struck Yi Li with his palm. With this, Yi Li and Yi Mu were finally separated from each other by a safe distance. Seeing that Yi Mu was fine, Emo Linyuan finally calmed down. It was all my doing. If you want to settle a score, then do it with me. With Emo Linyuan's appearance, he shielded Yi Mu behind him defensively, looking at Yi Li with a challenging gaze. Ah, uh, yes. It's you very good. It's you I've been looking for. Chapter 122 Seeing the culprit finally appear before him, Yi Li's heart ached with hatred. All his years of planning had been ruined at the most vital point, and the youth in front of him had truly contributed to its catastrophe greatly. He sneered before suddenly rushing forward to attack Mo Linyuan in rage. When Yen Su naturally saw this, he was taken aback. If something were to happen to Mo Linyuan in the Yu country, it naturally won't be a good thing if they were to ally the two countries. Yen Su hurriedly shouted when he saw Yi Li rush blindly, Yi Li. If you resist any further, he'll have to give the order to kill you. Slaughter them all. It was a frightening command, yet Yen Zhu's words did not phase the irrational Yi Li one bit. Nevertheless, his hasty attack was futile as he was blocked by the expert guarding Imo Linyuan. So, he took two steps back and suddenly sniggered. Afterwards, without preamble for all the arrows pointed at them, he amplified his voice with his inner strength, giving the chilling command, Yi Army, listen up. Kill him. Even if we die, we will not be cowards. He completely disregarded Yen Zhu's threat, even if he clearly knew he was no match for him that his defeat was looming just around the corner. In his unacceptance of everything, did Yi Li want everyone to die here together with him? Seeing that the other party was stubbornly adamant to resist, Yen Su could not give the order to shoot. Despite, he had shouted earlier that if Yi Li left him with no choice, he would be forced to rain the arrows on them all. At the growing complicated situation, the second prince finally intervened, raising his voice to exclaim, Every one of you, listen. You have already lost this battle. Surrender and refrain from killing. What I want is Yi Li's head. I, Qi Yen, swear upon the will of the gods and spirits that I will let you surrender without bloodshed. The second Orance's words were like a clap of thunder that fell on the people's ears, causing the hearts of the Yi family army, who were originally determined to die for a cause, to waver. At this moment, the expansive battlefield suddenly quieted down, and other than Yi Li's loyal old subordinates, no one else became willing to follow Yi Li's command to a fight to death rather, it was suicide at this point. As expected, after those people stopped their attacks, Yi Li's taut nerves finally broke these people were once attached to him, his cause, and now, they actually dared to disobey his orders. With a single slash of Yi Li's sword, a few of his retreating soldiers were killed on the spot. As his fellow comrade's blood splashed across the ground, the surrounding people could only see Yi Li finally succumbing to insanity. Everyone instantly avoided him like plagued, more convinced to leave. But although they had finally refrained from attacking, they also didn't dare to retreat completely. Stop! General, please stop! An old general with a scarred face instantly cried out and rushed towards Yi Li. For us to have reached this point, we no longer have any regrets left general, so what if we lose? These old comrades of yours will forever serve you the rest just let them live. The outcome of the current battle was clear as day they had soundly lost. Rather than commit an act of genocide, it would be better if they committed suicide willingly so that the remaining people could have a chance of survival. Yi Li clenched his fists and looked at him maliciously, you mean you want me to die so that these cowards can live? The veteran shook his head multiple times, wiping away the tears that fell from his eyes, and seriously said, these former comrades will cross the river Styx with you. We will all go with you. After he finished speaking, over a hundred people behind Yi Li kneeled down, and they all proclaimed one promise, we are willing to die for the general. Yi Li's cursory glance brushed among them and then towards the thousands of black army soldiers beside him. They didn't kneel, and it was obvious that they refused to die for his cause anymore. All right, all right. Yi Li's tall body staggered, as his face had a strange expression. Good. 
You are willing to die for Mu and me to commit suicide. Just when everyone thought that Yi Li was swayed and will finally follow the moral path, letting his other soldiers go, he suddenly stretched forth a muscly hand and grabbed the neck of the soldier closest to him. Since you are not willing to die for me, then to the underworld you go. This unexpected twist in the battlefield stunned everyone present. Yi Li's entire face abnormally grew red, as if he was sucking the life out of the soldier he had caught. The soldier's entire body shook like a leaf, his eyes wide open in horror and disbelief. Chapter, 123 A strong invisible gust blew from Yi Li's body menacingly as the eyes of the soldier at the end of his arm became dimmer by the minute. Yet, the fear in his own soldier's eyes couldn't help but intensify. Why why would the general do this? He could only think in his last moments. Even if he had his mouth opened wide, he could not utter a single soon. Shortly, he felt his consciousness leaving him death had claimed him at the most unexpected person. This is this Isitz the divine terminator technique. The inner martial arts cultivation method that Yi Li had practiced is actually the destructive arts. It was unknown who said it, but at this outburst, everyone suddenly understood the fiasco and quickly distanced themselves from Yi Li. It was no wonder Yi Li was able to fight against a hundred. Being able to absorb other people's inner force is tantamount to one's cultivation to go berserk. If they might escape madness, then they would still possess a violent temperament be bloodthirsty and the liso it was like this. In just a short moment, Yi Li had already drained the life out of all of his trusted aides. None of his men expected Yi Li to be so insane to be able to do such a vile act, so in the face of death they could only continuously escape. But this was not the end to their woes. As Yi Li easily discarded the corpse to the side, his sinister and terrifying gaze landed on another person. That person immediately wanted to run, but he was effortlessly seized by Yi Li. General! General! What are you doing? I am Ah Zhou. He shouted in fear, but no matter how much he struggled, he could not break free from Yi Li's iron grip. When Yi Li saw that he was afraid, he released a cold laugh, and his long hair behind him fluttered even with the absence of wind. Weren't you willing to die for me? Now it's your turn. Keep your promise. After he finished speaking, he crazily devoured the other party's inner force. Yi Li completely forgot how majestic and awe-inspiring he had been when he said uttered his just speech before. There was this itchy feeling in his heart that wanted him to die. They wanted him to commit suicide. Dream on. Even if everyone dies, he, Yi Li, must live. At the face of this madness, everyone could finally see his true colors. And no one dared to go forward, knowing how powerful the Divine Terminator technique was. Just when everyone was hesitating and looking between themselves, Yi Mu made her move. Her body was small and lithe if her inner chi happens to burst out to maximize her movement, no one would be able to stop her. At this moment, Yi Li had completely become bedeviled. As he laughed and his hair fluttered in the wind, his eyes were full of ferociousness, as if there he was driven by madness at this point. I, Yi Li, will never surrender. If you want to kill me, then go ahead and die. He kept repeating. But just as his words fell, he hated. Because a sharp hairpin was ruthlessly stabbed into his leg, striking an artery within. In reflex, he threw away the food in his hand and retreated a few steps while clutching his leg and roaring in pain. After he she was able to take him by surprise, Yi Mu dragged Ah Zhou's weak body away with great effort. Her eyes were gloomy and chilly as she said, You should wake up now. You. Have already. Lost. She uttered every single syllable forcefully. When Yi Mu had gone forward to the devil herself, Mo Linyuan was shaken from his stupor and hurriedly sent Wen Feng to protect her. Consequently, when Yi Li heard Yi Mu's words, his expression became even more crazed. How could I lose? How could I lose? He wailed, almost miserably. With that, his eyes finally turned completely blood-red, as he continued questioning, how could I lose? Heavens! Yi Li has been consumed by his rampant inner qi. Hurry up and work together to subdue him. For an inner qi expert at Yi Li's level, ordinary arrows were already useless. 
there had to be a joint effort of fierce attacks from martial artists with inner chi as well. After Yi Li let out a loud roar, he also began to fight without distinction between friend and foe. Anyone caught by him, whether they were his own people or his enemies, would be sucked dry of their internal energy and brutally killed. And as he drained them of their life force one by one, the pressure on his body increased at a frightening rate. Ultimately, no one dared to get close to him. Chapter 124 Wen Fong Mo Linyuan suddenly shouted, Send Yi Mu away immediately. The further the better. The current situation was proving to be far from dangerous. Yes sir. Wen Fong hurriedly stepped forward towards Yi Mu. But who knew that before he could move, Yi Li's blood-red eyes suddenly locked onto Mo Linyuan and reached out to grab him. When Wen Fong saw that Yi Li was about to grab the Mo Crown Prince, he instantly retraced his steps. However, it turns out Yi Li was only trying to mislead him. In the next second, he had already captured Yi Mu in his arms. Yi Mu. The instant Yi Mu was captured, Mo Linyuan's body subconsciously moved forward to save her. But he was heavily knocked to the ground by Yi Li. Roughly grabbing Yi Mu, he leaped onto the nearest wall and laughed maniacally. Muir, since you are my daughter. If I have to die, then we'll die together. After he finished speaking, he turned around and ran off to the opposite direction. Yen Su and his men hurriedly gave chase after Yi Li. And after traveling some distance, he noticed that Yi Li was heading towards the inner palace, where the deceased emperor lived. Wen Fong tried to protect Mo Linyuan, but after Mo Linyuan spat out a mouthful of blood, he forced himself to say, Don't worry about me, I will definitely have to rescue her and bring her back. Wen Fong listened to this brash order and could only hand the injured Mo Linyuan over to his other subordinates so he could go stop Yi Li. But at this moment, Yi Li had absorbed too much inner strength and his body was being pushed to its limit, so he wasn't far from being destroyed. He was chased until he reached the inner palace, which happened to be the palace where the emperor resided, the hidden dragon palace. He then brought Yi Mu inside the emperor's sleeping quarters. During this time, there was not a single soul in the chamber. Since after the wounded Yi Li had rushed into the palace, he directly smashed open the outer hall and trance with a single palm strike, and as the debris fell down, it sealed the entire inner hall. After the others caught up, they didn't dare act rashly because Yi Mu was still in Yi Li's hands. Most importantly, he had absorbed too much of Yi Mu's inner force. After the door was sealed, Yi Li released Yi Mu, who fell to the ground, coughing continuously. Yi Li also seemed to have lost all his strength, and knelt down on one knee, but he thought of something and stood up while gritting his teeth. Step by step, he walked towards the dragon bed situated in the room. Yi Li, who already knew that the emperor was dead, didn't have a single expression on his face as he looked down at his corpse. Suddenly, in the next second, he tore the emperor's head off with his bare hands. Icy, cold blood dripped down. And if it were anyone else who had witnessed this crazy scene, they would definitely have cried out in alarm. However, Yi Mu only briefly closed her eyes before opening them wide. Why not? Yi Li grabbed the head as he staggered step by step towards the stairs beside her and sat down. In the next second, the emperor's head knocked against the ground in front of Yi Mu. Watch! This is what happens when a person tries to deceive me. Yi Mu stared at the bloody, decapitated head on the ground and her burning gaze slowly landed on Yi Li. At this moment, Yi Li's body was covered in gruesome wounds, dripping blood. He looked none of the human is nor a ghost. So only you can lie, but no one else can lie to you. Yi Mu's voice was a bit hoarse, and her neck was already swollen from Yi Li's hold. Her entire body was bathed with blood, and the stench was enough to drive a grown man to nausea. Yi Li merely laughed in reply, that's right. They would rather I will betray the world. I won't let anyone look down on me nor play tricks on me. How could Yi Mu not clearly understand now? Yi Li's brutal methods had been out of her wildest imaginations, but there was minuscule part of her that expected this from him. So so those old sects of yours are actually tools for you to ascend to the throne. And if necessary, you won't think twice about having them killed. Then all your generosity and righteousness from before was for them to blindly place their trust in you. 
a sham? So what? Yi Li fiercely stared at her, if an uprising is in the plans, who wouldn't give themselves for an honorable reason? Furthermore, once I ascend to the throne, I will truly promote everyone to become a martial disciple. This is because a martial disciple is much easier to cheat than a scholar. These words were truly cruel to those who had finally decided to speak of him. Yi Mu clenched her fist. You took advantage of their trust and faith. Theorant they your comrades. When Yi Li heard this, he stared fixedly at Yi Mu and suddenly smiled. Then he'll teach you another lesson. As he said this, his chilling gaze was exactly the same as when he had killed the advisor by his side inside the treasure trove. There were many ways people could be used as well. They could be used to intimidate others, be used as a bargaining chip, or the best part can become my fuel. His hoarse voice was filled with pride, despite his severe injuries, only when you are willing to use these tactics will you be able to burst forth with the strongest power. Hope. Faith. Bah. If you want to achieve your goals, you have to use whatever you can. That's why Muir, you still have a lot to learn. Don't you feel ashamed? Chapter. 125. Shame. Yi Li fixed her with a withering gaze, since you feel that I'm a shameless man, why then did you allow me to capture you? Earlier, Yi Li wanted to escape because he had absorbed too much inner strength that caused his body to almost reach its breaking point. That was why he wanted to grab Mo Linyuan to use as scapegoat, but when Feng's reaction was too fast and therefore, he did not have the chance. Suddenly, he saw Yi Mu take a few steps towards him. And after he captured Yi Mu, the people around him really did not dare to act rashly. Only then did he have the chance to run over here. Thinking of this, Yi Li's manic mood gradually calmed down as he stared at Yi Mu with his bell like eyes. You clearly know that I'm danger, but you still dare to do such a thing. Are you not afraid of death? Yi Mu looked at him, as if she wanted to say something, and her next word stunned Yi Li Only with me here can you leave this place alive. You can't kill me now. Her answer caused the inner palace to be submerged in a deathly silence. Yi Li really did not expect that at this time, she would actually there was someone else who wanted to help him. Some scholars wanted to help him because he had riches and brawn. The soldiers of the Yi army were loyal to him because he had used their faith to deceive them. What about Yi Mu? For what reason was she helping him? With everything that has happened, he clearly had already lost and had nothing left. What could she possibly gain from saving him? After tormenting herself for so long, Yi Mu was also weary. She sat on the ground and used a piece of silk to wipe her blood-stained face, but she suddenly heard Yi Li speak with a forlorn voice. Just wait until I successfully escape. I will definitely kill you. Yi Mu's actions paused for a moment. Oh, she merely muttered. Yi Li wasn't willing to accept it and said, I'm speaking the truth. Even if I kill you a hundred times, I still wouldn't regret it one bit. Yi Mu continued to wipe her face. That's up to you. You. Yi Li glared and was just about to say something when a small hand covered in blood and sand extended over. Her fingertips held bread she had hidden in her robe before, and her expression was indifferent as she held them towards him. It's almost dark. Aren't you hungry? Due to Yi Mu's instinctual survival habits from being a soldier, she always had three things on her body, weapons, medicine, and food. However, the bottle of medicine she had secured had fallen earlier. Now, she only had two breads left on her body. Yi Li stared at her, as if he was hoping to find a trace of fear on her face. But he didn't. The hand that she extended towards him didn't move at all, her expression still unfazed. The bread was like a joke thrown at his face. Seeing that Yi Li wasn't willing to receive it, Yi Mu directly stuffed it into his hand, and then took another piece from her own to gnaw on. Yi Li, who was nearly two meters tall, had an inexplicable feeling when he opened his palm to look at that small piece of bread inside. This kind of feeling was truly unprecedented. Why? Yi Li asked in a stern voice, but even he didn't notice that his voice had an uncertain slight tremble. How can there be so many reasons Yi Mu was really beyond tired? Her current body was only six years old, and the physical activities today had far exceeded the norm, 
leaving a toll on her body. Then why did you save me? Yi Li grabbed Yi Mu's shoulder to force her to look at him. Yi Mu tiredly raised her head, and then he saw her eyes, which were devoid of confusion as they have always been, silently look at him. Her eyes were always solemn, even for a child her age. Whenever she looked at someone, she scrutinized them wholly, not giving them a mere fleeting glance. When Yi Mu saw his miserable state, a trace of pity flashed in the depths of her eyes. Chapter 126 In a deep voice, Yi Li bellowed, What do you still keep getting involved with me? You should have seen it today if you place your trust in me, I will only repay you by using you to the point where not even your bones remain. Yi Mu's forehead creased to a frown and she said without hesitation, even if you were able to betray the world, you didn't. Why can't I save you? Her childish voice was calm and very natural to the ears, if it had been anyone else. But to Yi Li, it was no less than a thunderbolt. He suddenly clutched his chest and groaned. Seeing this, Yi Mu hurriedly stood up to inspect her surroundings. Yet, even if she stood up, she would only be able to sit on Yi Li's shoulder. With her short stature, there was nothing she could do. The wounds on his chest were badly mutilated. Although Yi Li's martial arts was high, if he absorbed too much inner energy and was not able to properly digest it, it would break his meridians from inside out. Plus, those who surrounded him before were all experts. Yi Mu sighed. She wanted to use a cloth strip to give him a clean, simple bandage, but Yi Li refused. She suddenly said in a hoarse voice, why did you anxiously decide to storm the palace? Yi Mu shook her head. This was a decision of his that she didn't understand because she felt that if Yi Li had waited a few more days for the situation to become clear before forcing his way through, everything that had happened today would have ceased to exist. It should be heaven's will. Yi Li sneered. The only reason I advanced so rashly is because the emperor died in the early hours of this morning. Although it was kept a secret, I still knew about it. Yi Mu frowned, if he's dead, then so be it. Why did you have to go put so much risk? When Yi Li heard this, his gaze fell on the decapitated head of the person at the side. When the emperor of Yu died, his face looked ghostly, as if it were a corpse dried of blood. He scoffed, it seems like you don't know. He paused, clutching his heart as said uncomfortably. Two hundred years ago, the empire was divided into seven countries. At that time, the empire had left behind a treasure trove, hoping that the later generations would be able to use it to return to their respective countries. In the end, that descendant died, and the treasure map, more known as the city boundary map was taken away by people who want to use it for their selfish gains. The three words, city boundary map, caused Yi Mu to be immensely shocked. Her eyes widened, and her fingers subconsciously clenched into a fist. However, Yi Li, who currently had his head weakly lowered, did not notice this abnormality. When the emperor and I were trying to take back our territory, we were able to seize the city boundary map. Unfortunately, before we could search for the treasure, there was an attack from men in black, and more than half of the map was taken away. The emperor was afraid that the remaining parts of the map would be taken away as well, so he invited the best embroidery master at that time to place the remaining parts of the city boundary map to be engraved on on his back and finally set the map on fire. Normally, he wouldn't be able to see the map of the world tattooed on his back. Only by smearing his own blood on it, would the map appear, and once he died after 24 hours, the map will also completely disappear. At this moment, Yi Mu didn't know what expression to make when faced with this dilemma. The now headless body of the emperor was still lying on the bed in the ruined inner hall for 24 hours no wonder Yi Li would take the risk. Yi Li laughed bitterly, if the imperial guards didn't join hands with the prince if they didn't capture Prince Zhao and force him to help the one who should have won today is me. Unfortunately, how could there be so many strokes of luck that could happen in one's life? Even if Yi Li were to maximize all his cunning calculations, he would never have thought that there was another thing plot that dictated the fate of people. Even M. O. Linyuan didn't even know that the emperor had the map of an elusive treasure on his back. He had only killed him to force the imperial army to cooperate with them, but this action had forced Yi Li to take the risk and lose the initiative that he had in his hands. 
If Yi Li did not want the treasure that was said to be able to revive the empire if he were already satisfied with simply conquering the Yu country, today's ending might have been different. Chapter 127 When Yi Li thought of this, he suddenly spat out a mouthful of blood. Yi Mu wasn't able to think of anything else, but the bloody Yi Li before her, what wrong with you? You actually suffered such heavy injuries. It's not an injury Yi Li shook his head, a fierce expression plastered on his weary face, it's because I absorbed too much inner qi. Add to that, I was also heavily injured, which caused my own qi to flow in reverse. My meridians ruptured from this abnormal flow. At this, Yi Mu couldn't explicably be bothered to think about the disappearing map, so she hurriedly said, then let's go now. Capture Mebeth Mo Linyuan and Yen Su think favorably of me. Therefore, they won't harm you. It's useless Yi Li said, very soon, when all my meridians become broken, I will become a cripple. I won't be even able to break us out from this place. Then what should we do? Yi Mu felt pure panic for the first time, but with her small arms and short legs, her strength was futile much less breaking open a half-collapsed palace. Even the usually strong Yi Li would be unable to move her small frame in just a matter of time. Perhaps this is heaven's will Yi Li, who had never believed in a supernatural or fate, said this today for the second time. But after the words fell from his mouth, a cunning light flashed through his eyes. While Yi Mu wasn't paying attention, he suddenly sealed her acupoints. It was easy to pinpoint a person's meridians, but it required one's inner qi to be much higher than the victim. As her acupoints were abruptly sealed, Yi Mu suddenly felt as if her body was filled with immense lead and that it was difficult to even lift a single finger. His tall figure looked like an oppressing giant in the dim lit inner hall. He lifted his head from the ground and staggered towards the emperor's dragon bed. Meanwhile, Yi Mu couldn't help but close her eyes in weakness. When he tore open to reveal the dead emperor's backside, as expected, the treasure map was truly engraved on his flesh. Yi Li looked at the map with an indescribably complicated expression. For years, he had spent half of his life yearning for this treasure map, to seize the Yu country, and finally to rule over the entire world. And now that the map was right in front of his very hands, there was nothing he could already do at this point. Now that he had fallen to such a lowly state, he discovered that no one was responsible for his demise not even the second prince or crown prince, M. O. Linyuan. If he had to blame someone, that person could only be himself. He was far too greedy, too reluctant to part with the treasure map that was to disappear any moment. Even if the skin was cut away from the body, the engraved map would never fade away. He cut very slowly, carefully, not daring to miss the slightest bit of it. After cutting, he folded the skin into two, walked past the old emperor, and actually stuffed the skin map into Yi Mu's arms. Yu Yi Mu stared at him with wide eyes. With her acupoint sealed, it was difficult for her to speak, lest even move. So she could only use her eyes to express her incredulity. Yi Li squatted in front of her and fixed her with a deep look. He had never scrutinized a person so carefully before. The little fellow in front of him was less than a meter tall, but for some reason, he couldn't bear to look at it. For several times, he always had the urge to kill it, but he still couldn't bear to do so. I am a bad person. Back in my youth, in order to become a general, I assassinated my master. Later on, to become the only general in this country with military power, I framed the other two generals for rebellion and killed them with the help of the emperor. Yi Mu stared at him incredulously. Before then, she had wanted to tell him that he really was a despicable person, but she never thought that his atrocious acts would be far worse than she thought. Yi Li's smile became even more serene, the more he poured out his revelation, I want to be the emperor. In order to cultivate my own dead men, I let the emperor suppress the militia left behind by the two generals while I secretly assisted them. As expected, they became loyal to me and aren't even afraid to go to the underworld for me. The evil deeds that he had done, even if he were to narrate inside this broken palace for three days and three nights, he would not be able to finish list them all. At this point, there was nothing more to say. Chapter 128 Yi Li patted Yi Mu's head, almost affectionately, I have never done anything good in my life. The only good thing I probably have ever done is to let you go. 
Yi Mu still couldn't comprehend Yi Li's words, even till he stood up. Even if I live today, I will lose my skill for martial arts, becoming a cripple for my remaining days. You want me to become disabled? Ha! Then I might as well die. With those stubborn words, Yi Mu suddenly felt a warm current from above her head. It was the hand that Yi Li used to cover her head, continuously exerting inner qi into her body. His own internal energy, as well as the internal energy that he had absorbed from numerous people today, were all first tempered through his meridians before they were now completely being poured into Yi Mu's small body. He felt at this moment, it would be better to use it fully. It was just that, the pain of forcefully refining internal energy caused the heavily wounded Yi Li to tremble Yi Mu wasn't doing well either. As a child, she definitely couldn't absorb any external inner qi, and as soon as the foreign energy entered her body, her small frame was racked with pain, as if she was on the verge of exploding. Yi Li laughed lightly and said in a hoarse voice, Ordinary cultivation techniques cannot withstand inner qi from external sources, is it very uncomfortable? Now he coughed. Now, I will teach you the mantra of the Divine Terminator technique. If you do not wish to die early, then train according to this art. To the very end, he was still a domineering man. Regardless of whether Yi Mu wanted to practice this type of martial art or not, she had no choice. Even if it was against her principles, she had to do it. Yi Mu's entire body was covered in fine beads of blood, as if her body was flourishing in a grotesque way. It was just as Yi Li said, if she didn't follow his instructions, then she would definitely explode to smithereens. Therefore, although she was extremely disgusted with the Divine Terminator technique, Yi Mu immediately focused on cultivating it as she listened to Yi Li recite the mental cultivation method, word by word, in the face of life and death. She could not die she did not want to die. Why can't you go in? Mo Lin Yuan insisted on coming over the broken palace to rescue Yi Mu. Yi Li's vicious palm attack was tantamount to his revenge, so Mo Lin Yuan's injuries weren't light at all. But his worry for Yi Mu won him over in the end. He couldn't let his wounds heal in peace, and hurried towards where Yi Li had taken Yi Mu hostage, only to see people surrounding the remaining ruins of the palace entrance. Seeing this, Wen Feng walked over and hesitantly said, Your Highness, Yi Li has absorbed too much inner qi and suffered a heavy injury. If we rashly approach him there's the probable chance that he could explode at any time. Now that the outer palace has collapsed and we don't know the situation inside, we won't dare act rashly. Mo Lin Yuan merely frowned in reply was he then just supposed to wait like this? Dig this place open. Your Highness. Everyone looked at him in bewilderment, only to see him speak insipidly. If Yi Li wants to hate me, then he should hate me alone. Dig it out. If he asks for it I am willing to exchange my life for Yi Mu. Your Highness. Wen Feng absolutely could not agree. But after listening to it once, he still called for people to dig the rubble. For some reason, he had an intuition telling him that if it was Yi Mu, Yi Li wouldn't hurt her. A strong, raging current swirled up on the floor to the ceilings of the inner hall. The current grew larger and larger, surrounding the only people in the room, and frantically tore apart everything in its surroundings. Despite following Yi Li's instructions to cultivate this type of destructive technique, Yi Mu found out that she was having difficulty maintaining it. Her body didn't need Yi Li's effort to refine it at all she was already subconsciously absorbing Yi Li's inner Chu on her own. She wanted to control it, but she couldn't. It's useless amidst the raging wind, Yi Li's broken voice could be heard, only when the other party consumes the giver's inner Chi otherwise, it will not stop. When Yi Mu heard this, a great wail arose from within her heart. Yi Li will die by my hands. Chapter, 129 Outside the inner palace, the soldiers restlessly moved broken wood and gravel non-stop. The buildings of the palace were all compromised of one same system and if they are not careful, the inner hall would collapse as well. Especially since the person they were trying to save was just a little girl, if it collapsed, she would be done for. Mo Lin Yuan's face was deathly pale, but apart from taking some numbing medicine, he refused to leave. Other than fear more than fear, the youth felt a crushing regret that he had never felt before. He knew that Yi Mu wasn't Yi Li's daughter and he knew that Yi Mu didn't treat Yi Li as her father. 
He also knew that Yi Li's actions were beyond despicable. But he never thought the unexpected that Yi Mu didn't want Yi Li to die. Then, would his former actions push Yi Mu from him far, far away? At the beginning, the sound of rushing wind was indistinguishable. But then, as if a violent wind was pouring through the cracks, the sound became louder and louder, as if there was something that was about to split open from inside. This is bad. Perhaps Yi Li is going to self-destruct. When Feng's words made Mo Linyuan's already pale face turn more pallor. He hastily gave the order, quick. Force your way through the ruins and save them. There was no time left to be careful and slow. They had to open a pathway quick. When everyone heard the order they rushed into position, but just as they hit the pile of rocks, they heard a loud bang after another. The remaining support barely holding the inner hall suddenly collapsed the erected palace in front of them had suddenly turned into a complete ruin. This time if a child was buried underneath the rocks, she would definitely die. Yi Mu. He wanted to go forward, but the internal injuries he suffered made him unable to even stand up. Especially after seeing everything collapse in front of his eyes, he could no longer hold it in and spat out a mouthful of blood. Yen Su also stared blankly at the ruins in front of him. The girl who was not even heavier than a little wolf dog she's dead. Everyone present quietened down no one dared to speak at this time. Now that the inner palace had collapsed, that terrifying Yi Li should also be dead, right? But at that moment, when Feng's sharp eyes caught sight of something. Your Highness. The wooden board is moving someone is still alive. His words were like a drop of boiling oil in icy water and it was enough to wake Mo Linyuan from his stupor. He immediately pulled himself together and looked towards the direction when Foam was pointing. It really seemed that the broken piece of wood was really moving. Mo Linyuan's eyes widened. Hurry! Save him! The martial experts heard his order and immediately went forward to help. With a breaking sound, a hand reached out from under the broken wood it was a small hand. After she stretched it out, she grabbed onto the debris and used all her strength to climb out. Yi Yi Mu. She was actually still alive. The rest of them speedily went over to help her out. Yi Mu quickly crawled out, her body was already covered in blood however, it seemed like it came from someone else. Behind her, there was a deathly silence. Yi Li is probably dead. They all thought. Yen Zhu's eyes dimmed a little. Although Yi Li was a man who was thoroughly evil, able to grab slaves and offer them to people who liked to abuse children without blinking. Played with the lives of numerous people without suffering any psychological trauma Yi Li had the brains and bronze that was truly formidable and admirable. A cunning general. Now that he was dead, it was quite a pity. Yi Mu Yi Mu. Mo Linyuan carefully carried Yi Mu into his arms. She seemed to be in a daze, her fingers unconsciously grabbing onto Mo Linyuan's sleeve. It was as if she was still caught in the storm and unable to extricate herself. She had sucked up all of Yi Li's strength and life like a vampire. A memory was inside her mind Yi Mu was resisting with all her might, and the last thing she remembered was Yi Li's overly tall body in the storm and the hand he used to cover her head. Chapter 130. The Mo country was an expansive country. Two hundred years ago, the empire was divided into seven parts, with the Mo country occupying the most territory. Coupled with a pleasant climate and fertile land, the local population lived in abundancy of resources. This may seem like utopia, but the current reality was the exact opposite. Ever since the emperor became seriously ill and the empress dowager had taken the head seat of the government, the tax revenues in the M.O. country had increased. This was, in order to build a beautiful, temporary imperial palace for her, forced labor had to become heavy, causing the citizens to complain. Some people, dissatisfied with Her Majesty's tyranny, wrote thousands of words to mock her a woman who usurps authority. In order to eliminate the discontent in her regime, the Empress Dowager made a prison for these people, and added dozen, different kinds of torture to deal specifically with those who were against her. In her power, she would occasionally make an example of others. Now, under fear, no one dared to say anything anymore. Just some time ago, the Empress Dowager, 
who has been a dictator for five years, expressed her dissatisfaction with her current status as regent. The emperor's only remaining son, the crown prince, was nowhere to be seen his whereabouts continued to be unknown. All of the emperor's other brothers has also been killed off by her. At this time, who wouldn't understand what the empress dowager was trying to convey? She wanted to be a female emperor. There has never been such a precedent before. Therefore, the empress dowager wanted everyone to acknowledge her, but she still found it a bit difficult. Even if she spent a great amount of effort to do it and just when she was about to succeed, a sudden news caught her by surprise. The crown prince has returned. The crown prince had returned although the empress dowager had ordered the crown prince to be detained at the relay station due to the fact that his identity had yet to be confirmed. The old officials who had been waiting for him all came to visit him, regardless of her orders, at the first possible moment. He was the legitimate emperor, the tattoo of a coiling dragon on Imo Linyuan's back spoke volumes of the truth of the matter. No matter how much the Empress Dowager wanted to be the emperor, when Imo Linyuan returned, she would immediately lose her credibility for the throne. And once Imo Linyuan officially acknowledged his ancestors, she would have to return a portion of the rights back to him. To the ambitious Empress Dowager, this was more painful than flesh being cut. Inside the imperial palace of the M.O. country, the Phoenix Dynasty's Yuan Palace, the Empress Dowager angrily smashed the cup in her hands. The court ladies kneeled on the ground, not a single one of them didn't tremble in fear. Are you sure it is the crown prince? And not someone who is just passing off to be someone else? Her gloomy voice made the people outside shudder. Absolutely. The High Tutor and the Prime Minister have personally gone over to verify and confirm that it is undoubtedly the Crown Prince himself. The Empress Dowager's expression turned even more unsightly. Her eyebrows were raised, making people feel that the corners of her eyes were extremely sharp like daggers, her stare cutting through their souls. After a long while, she finally let out a snort and sneered. This Empress Dowager already sent so many assassins, but they still couldn't kill one measly, brat. Counting the year she should be ten years old now, but what can a child his age do? She paused for a moment and then laughed, if the crown prince died before he could acknowledge his ancestors, then I would be there grieving for him. It took him so much effort to return home, but this empress didn't even manage to catch a glimpse of him. Her tone and words made it seem as if Emo Linyuan was already dead to her. No one dared to say anything when they heard her words, and they could only mourn the child in their hearts. Chapter, 131 After Emo Linyuan returned, the first thing he did was to find the silent Buddhist master, but this master was elusive often going into seclusion or closed the door to meditate privately. It means, it was a tricky matter to get to him was not an easy person to see. So, he had sent him many letters, explaining the situation and the urgency of the matter. As time quickly passed without a reply, there was no other way left but to use other methods. On the third day after returning home and after dealing with the ministers who had come to visit him, Mo Linyuan had asked someone to lead him to the master. The first time he visited, and the other party didn't see him, Mo Linyuan left thinking of asking help for another day. Yet, on the second time, the other party still rejected him for the same reason. Alms giver, the host is currently meditating and will not see guests for the time being. Mo Linyuan looked at the tall, thin young monk standing in front of him and suddenly smiled. And if I do? The monk revealed an awkward expression, the host said that we are not meeting any guests. It has been a long time since Mo Linyuan last saw such a stubborn person, and his smile became even more dazzling. Even if someone's life is in danger, he's still not going to see us. How come I heard that he saved an old woman, who was selling vegetables on the streets a few days ago, when she begged him to help? Or am I the only person he doesn't want to see? The monk didn't know how to reply under M. O. Linyuan's barrage of questions. Forget it. If he doesn't want to see me, then he'll go see him. If you block my way, then he'll fight my way in. The monk did not expect M. O. Linyuan to actually resort to using force. After living for so long, who would not be respectful to his master? Even the Empress Dowager placed her utmost respect for his master every time she wanted to hear Buddhist scriptures, she still had wait for the master's consent. In contrast, this person was truly rude. 
However, Mo Liyuan had truly exhausted his patience. Seeing that the other party was adamant on not giving him an answer, he directly said to Wen Feng. Let's go. You can't. Many monks ran over when they saw the situation becoming ugly. However, they were no match for Wen Feng's martial arts, and in just a short span of time, the fight continued all the way until the end of the ninth hall. At this chaos, a person finally walked out. Amitba Buddha. Why did you demolish my Buddhist temple? Even as a monk, the person in front of him was really too handsome for words. His long, white monastic robe dragged on the ground. He had slightly raised eyebrows and the corners of his eyes were curved looked more devilish rather than pure. Bu the monastic Buddhist beads wrapped around his gave him instead a strange aura akin to an ethereal deity. Mo Linyuan bowed upon seeing him and said, May I ask if you are the silent master? I am. Then, I would like to request your help to save someone. The other party's eyebrows twitched, and then he revealed a compassionate and gentle smile, Mr., you came kicking the door, harming many people innocent people. In the process, you destroyed the temple and acted impolitely and sinfully under this holy place forgive me, but I don't want to save this person. At this refusal, Mo Linyuan's phoenix eyes turned icy, and his piercing gaze became even more dangerous. It'll give you two choices. The silent Buddhist master looked at him in askance. One, it'll burn this place down. Or two, you save a person. When the rest of the monks heard this, they looked at them in fury, as if they were unreasonable bastards. Still, Mo Linyuan was not afraid at all, and only stared at the monk in front of him unflinchingly. I heard a monk shows mercy. I have pleaded for help several times, yet your only response in kind is the opposite. I believe that even if I burn this place down, the Lord Buddha would not blame me. What do you think? He said the last sentence seriously. As if, if the silent Buddhist master dared to refuse him again, he would burn the place down without second thought and ask someone else more qualified to take his place. Time slowly passed, and just when everyone thought that this monk would be stubborn to the end, he finally gave in. If you want me to save someone, that's fine with me. But first, you have to repair the damage you've inflicted on this Buddhist temple, and then I will make my move. Wen Feng frowned, thinking that this person was truly a pretentious one. However, Mo Linyuan had already agreed. It's a deal. Chapter, 132 True to his word, the anxious Mo Linyuan quickly found someone to repair the temple. However, he had a gut feeling telling him that something was suspicious with the monk so he also sent Wen Feng to investigate in secret. If this monk is although Mo Linyuan did not say much, the deep look in his eyes said it all. At this point, Wen Feng already knows in his heart how the crown prince holds high regard for the Miss Yi, so he nodded reverently and seriously said, your subordinate will definitely not leave a single stone unturned. Satisfied with this reply, Mo Linyuan nodded, his gaze falling next to the unconscious Yi Mu on the bed. In his extremely icy orbs, a trace of his complicated feelings emerged. I'd rather you woke up and scolded me like before. He reached out his hand to softly stroke Yi Mu's head. It's your birthday the day after tomorrow. It seems like you're going to spend the night in your dreams once again. The little child continued to ignore him. Her eyes were closed, she looked as if she was just in a deep, serene slumber. Mo Linyuan silently sighed and looked at her face a few more times. Only then did he brace himself and leave the temple with a determined expression to return to the relay station, continuing to handle various matters. Silently witnessing this scene, the expression on the silent Buddhist master continued to remain unfathomable. He could really see that this cold crown prince who had suddenly appeared back in the Mo country valued this girl greatly, and even he was not aware of her identity. After a long while, he gathered his wayward thoughts and began to examine his sleeping patient. He was originally very calm, but as soon as he checked her pulse, his expression changed to that of immense surprise. Although the little girl in front of him looked no more than six or seven years old, she had accumulated more than a hundred years of internal chi. Apart from the likelihood that she is an ancient monster inside, there was only one other possibility she had learned the divine terminator technique and forcefully absorbed numerous people's energy. 
Yet, even in this dreadful event, she did not die even after absorbing so much. In that case, this child lying on the bed is not some deity, but rather an evil incarnate in human skin. When he thought of this, his eyebrows creased tightly. When Fong, who was at the side, quickly asked, Master, can you treat our young Miss Illness? Locked in his thoughts, he did not say anything. But he thought, as long as this little girl absorbed the inner strength within her body for her own use, she would naturally wake up. But if she woke up earlier, perhaps a more negative effect would happen instead. Cultivating the Terminator Divine Technique is said to make a person short-tempered. In the event she woke up early, with the absorption of the raging internal chi in her body still incomplete, then her temperament would possibly become even more brutal. At the same time, she would also be placed in high risk of going berserk. After thinking carefully, he quietly turned the Buddhist beads in his hand solemnly. Only after a long time did he say, it can be treated but it will take some time. The Divine Terminator technique was a type of martial arts that allowed the user to steal the inner chi of other people. It sounded like a good shortcut to forcefully break levels in cultivation, but if it was really something good, everyone should have been taking its route. This was because, it had terrible, terrible side effects so appalling that most people would not accept it. Other than making the cultivator ill-tempered, there were also some days in the month where the cultivator would become particularly bloodthirsty for no reason. If he didn't shed blood of a few people, regardless of whom they are, his whole body would definitely feel uncomfortable, as if countless needles were scratching him. Moreover, people who cultivated this method had to absorb inner chi every so often. As they would have too much inner chi in their body, they had to take a steady stream of external energy to balance it out. However, this was proving more to be the short end of a stick, as the more the user ingests chi, the more broken his temperament becomes. And the more irritable he feels, the more he need to ingest other people's chi to stabilize his self. In this way, it only becomes a vicious circle. In general, only those who did not put other people's lives in their eyes would learn such type of martial arts. After all, how could people with principles and are morally upright allow themselves to become a demon in flesh that killed their own kind for abominable reasons? Especially since these types of cultivators would fight tooth and nail to the very end for their survival, their humanity would gradually disappear. Until even those whom they trust and are beside them would not be left off. Chapter, 133 As the silent Buddhist master thought of this, he retracted his hand holding a needle that he had intended to insert into Yi Mu. The inner chi he learned was the heart-cleansing formula the type of technique that was very stimulating for the divine terminator technique. So, if Yi Mu were to be given to someone else for healing, it would be very difficult for her to wake up in the other person's hands. However, to the silent Buddhist master, it was only a very simple matter. But if he woke her up too early, it would be the same as speeding up the evolution of a devil. Was he truly going to do something catastrophic as that? Praying to the benevolent Bodhisattva, the space between his eyebrows silently wrinkled. In the end, he placed down the needle, giving Yi Mu only a little bit of medicinal soup. On the other side, not long after Mo Linyuan returned to the relay station, he was ambushed. The other party clearly harbored a never-ending desire to kill him, that even if her dreadful acts were to be caught, she would opt to bite a poison sack and commit suicide. Thus, she didn't hesitate to send his people over to make ruckus for M.O. Linyuan. After all the assassins had been cleaned up, it was obvious that the tutor who had come to visit M.O. Linyuan had become very depressed with the unfavorable situation. This isn't the way to go on your highness should enter the palace as soon as possible. Because as long as your identity can be recognized, the imperial army can then be mobilized by you. This way, the Empress Dowager won't be able to do as she pleases. As he said this, Mo Linyuan on the other hand had already received a reply from a letter he had sent out earlier. Grand Tutor, rest at ease. After a fierce battle, Mo Linyuan actually displayed a smile after reading the contents of the letter. It won't be long before esteemed Empress Dowager personally goes out of her way to invite me to the Imperial Palace. He said this very confidently but how could that possible? Everyone felt that Emo Linyuan was just boasting. As a ten-year-old child, apart from some of the Imperial clansmen he had and some ministers supporting his bloodline, he had nothing else. 
It was a difficult feat for the Empress Dowager to personally send him a message inviting him when his identity is currently unknown especially right now when the Empress Dowager wanted nothing more than to have him assassinated. And even if the tattoo on Mo Linyuan's back could prove his identity, he couldn't just impudently take off his clothes and show it to other people. When the ministers heard the Grand Tutor's words, they all felt worry in their hearts. It looked like the old officials like them had to think of a plausible way the crown prince was truly still too young. And as with everyone's expectations, M.O. Linyuan stayed at the relay for half a month with the Empress Dowager still continuing to ignore his presence. It was clear that she didn't want to acknowledge him as the M.O. crown prince. Therefore, the old ministers applied pressure every time through written letters, but the Empress Dowager would only use various methods to add fuel to the fire and send more dead soldiers to kill people at the station. But one day, a report from the border suddenly disturbed the hearts of many people. But the Empress Dowager's cloudy face only cleared up after reading this war report. Didn't those old ministers always nag her to bring the crown prince back? Good. If you want him back badly, then he'll do it. This report was nothing more than the U country sending their troops to the MO country. And with lightning speed, they had already conquered two of the MO country's border cities. The opposing party was the new emperor of the U country himself. In order to show off his might, he had burned the flag of the MO country in front of countless people, and he had even laughed at the fact that there was no one in the MO country willing to step forth and defend them. However, everyone knew that the emperor had been sick for several years and secluded himself. So how could he accept this challenge in his physical state? But right now, there was only one other suitable candidate. The empress dowager had planned things out very well. With so many ministers forcing her to bring the crown prince back, it was actually impossible for her to hold him back for a long time. However, the newly ascended emperor of the U country had come knocking on their country's door, blatantly asking the emperor of M.O. country to set off for a war. Then she might as well go with the flow and bring M.O. Linyuan back. Chapter, 134 Cities situated on the border were a different circumstance. Even if she slightly tampered with the troops in these cities rather than the capital, and M.O. Linyuan died, she would not be suspected for it. Afterwards, she would lead the army to defeat the U country and seize back their lost territory. With such a great victory, who would dare to say anything against her when she wishes to become the emperor? This was truly a massive opportunity, for a woman like her, who wholeheartedly wants to ascend the dragon throne. Besides, what's so difficult about a little marching and one-sided fighting? Her MO country was richer than the U country so, to begin with, how could she lose this battle? Thinking this way, she threw the battle report in front of everyone the next morning and finally agreed to the minister's request for the crown prince to return to the palace. She even personally had him attest as the new emperor. This sudden turn of events left everyone at a loss as to whether they should rejoice or worry. M.O. Linyuan was about to be brought back, but very soon, the empress dowager was going to push him out to die in a battle. During that time, the crown prince would inevitably die at the border. Others then would only say that his skills were truly inferior to hers and he justly deserved to die for the proper emperor to come out. No matter what, his death would never point back to the Empress Dowager. The Prime Minister was suspicious. After all, he knew that the U country had just gone through a civil war. How would it have the luxury of time to provoke them, who was a far bigger nation? But the battle report entailed that Yi Li's army was completely taken over with this new emperor. Afterward, the new emperor led a massive army of a hundred thousand, capturing the two cities at the border within three days. What they didn't know was that the two cities' gates were opened by someone from the M.O. country. With this unexpected news, the prime minister's men wanted to rush back to the empress dowager to report, but by the time they returned, it would be too late. On the same day, the empress dowager personally brought M.O. Linyuan to the imperial palace and had him hastily ascend the throne as fast as he could. M.O. Linyuan acted like an ignorant and foolish person even when the empress dowager was forcing him to go to a battlefield to fight against a hundred thousand soldiers, he still looked as if he didn't understand a single thing. No matter what the empress dowager said, he nodded, acting like a puppet under her absolute will. The empress dowager felt immensely proud for her cunning mind. True enough, 
how smart could a child who had never received any form of education be? And at the face of this sinister deception, all the old ministers could only wring their hands. How was this sending the emperor to the battlefield? This was clearly sending him to an early death. The Empress Dowager making Mo Linyuan lead only a troop of soldiers against 100,000 troops if they left the capital, the consequences would be dire. Yet, insidious it may be, she didn't do anything to remedy it. The Empress Dowager used the Mo country's old tradition of cutting off all avenues of retreat for the Emperor's ascension of the throne by making Mo Linyuan swear his meritorious deeds. It was on this very same day that the Empress Dowager also sent Mo Linyuan out of the capital. Above the city gate and under the watch of numerous officials and the common people, Zhao Yunqin pulled Mo Linyuan along with her as she played her part as the Empress Dowager. He just come back and is now leaving my royal grandson, this royal grandmother is really reluctant to part with you. Mo Linyuan, who was wearing an emperor's battle robe of a gold-embroidered dragon on a white cloth, smiled upon hearing this. And because he was still young, despite his handsome appearance, he gave of a harmless aura when he smiled. Are you really reluctant to part with me? The young and elegant voice startled Zhao Yunqin. In spite of her age, she retained her sharp features a trace of killing intent flashed across her face as she heard this. However, her raised eyebrows quickly softened as she spoke in sincere tone. I truly can't bear to part with you. After all, you only just came back, and this Empress Dowager hasn't even looked at her lost grandson properly. The battlefield is already too treacherous, and if something were to happen to you this Empress Dowager couldn't imagine how miserable that must be. After she finished speaking, she covered her face with her sleeve as if she was crying. The child in front of her was about to die soon, moreover he was going to die as her stepping stone. When Mo Linyuan heard this, he laughed lightly, his almond-shaped eyes narrowing at her, as if he was extremely happy. Then you don't have to be sad. Chapter, 135 What? In confusion, Zhao Yunqin raised her head and looked at him with a dangerous stare through her sleeves, but she only heard him laugh as he spoke. Because I will not leave, so there is no need for grandmother to be sad. After a moment of muddle-headedness, Zhao Yunqin soon returned to normal. Foolish child, what nonsense are you saying? Now that someone has violated our country's might, as the son of heaven, he should go forward and suppress them take back our lost territory. How can you retreat before the battle has even begun? With these last words, the Empress Dowager's voice rose a little, causing the dejected officials nearby to look over. Mo Linyuan merely smiled in reply, refusing to speak. During this tense atmosphere, a horse suddenly galloped from over the border. From afar, everyone could hear the deep and happy voice of the person riding atop the horse. Reporting the Yu country's emperor was overjoyed when he heard that his majesty had ascended the throne. He decided to retreat back to the city and was even willing to present a generous gift to congratulate his majesty. He announced again and again, letting all the commoners, officials and soldiers hear his words clearly. They were more than overjoyed. From the looks of either was no need to fight. The empress dowager's fake mournful facade froze as she listened to the war report being repeatedly shouted. Then, she felt a bone-piercing cold wind, as if someone had just slapped her silly. She immediately felt the onslaught of dizziness as she stood rooted to her spot in shock. Without waiting for her to say anything, the originally sorrowful faces of the ministers brightened, and they excitedly came over towards M.O. Linyuan. His Majesty is indeed the genuine Son of Heaven. As soon as he ascended the throne, he resolved a war without the need for even a single soldier. That's right, that's right. Since we can already reclaim back the lost territories, there's no need to expend our resources. His Majesty's achievement is comparable to that of the sacred ancients. Indeed. His Majesty's achievement is tumultuous that the entire Yu country would be terrified just by hearing this news. They could only offer up their treasures how would they dare contend against you? They talked until the Empress Dowager was pale and tottering in the background. And truly setting things in stone, the imperial tutor led the way for the officials and kneeled down reverently in front of M.O. Linyuan. 
His Majesty obtaining the approval of the heavens and bringing good fortune to this country can only be an incoming auspicious prosperity of the M.O. country. For the wealth of the common people. These old officials wish that His Majesty will live a long life. Meanwhile strengthening the M.O. country and spread the might of our lands. As soon as he knelt down, the other ministers quickly followed suit. May His Majesty's blessings last forever. Some of the ministers that followed the Empress Dowager's lead saw this and could only copy the other ministers. Since there were so many commoners watching, it would be tantamount to rebellion if they were not to pledge their loyalty to the new emperor. The Empress Dowager was angered to the point her words trembled you all. But without allowing her to finish her sentence, as soon as the commoners below heard the speech of the imperial tutor from the city walls, they all quickly knelt down. May His Majesty's blessings last forever. As soon as they thought of this little emperor ascending the throne, and they no longer had to fight or pay taxes. The citizens' enthusiasm soared as they shouted even louder. May His Majesty's blessings last forever and ever. The voice covered the sky and whistled through the air, causing everyone's ears and souls to tremble. Atop the city wall and everything below it almost everyone was kneeling down. The scene before their eyes was much grander than the simple and crude inauguration ceremony. The Empress Dowager didn't want the world to have any good impression of Emo Linyuan, and he was about to die anyway. But who knew, that in the end, Emo Linyuan's being would suddenly transform as a fortunate omen for the Emo country that everyone would recognize and remember. Thinking of this, she could not catch her breath, almost fainting. However, she was steadily supported by Emo Linyuan as he smiled and said. Is grandmother too happy? Like I said, this emperor does not have to leave. You the empress dowager openly glared daggers as she pointed at him. She wanted to speak, but Emo Linyuan held her hand. Does grandma want to talk about the hundred thousand man army? His smile was still as harmless as before, once it is in my hands, I will definitely take good care of it. Grandmother should definitely not worry about it. Chapter, 136 The once gloomy ceremony of sending off the emperor and the army ended with the empress dowager falling into a coma. Meanwhile, all the officials who looked like they were on the verge of death were now beaming with joy, as if they had won the war themselves. When they returned to the palace, the imperial tutor stealthily walked alongside at Emo Linyuan. Your Majesty, how did you convince the Yu country to lend a helping hand? They simply thought it was too inconceivable of a plan. If the Yu country easily surrendered, their citizens would definitely complain. Hearing this, Emo Linyuan remembered the brief reply sent from the other party. The only words that were written on it were, with these two things, we now don't owe each other. He helped him claim the throne, and in turn, he too, lent a hand for him to ascend the throne. It was actually only a simple matter. It's not a heavy matter. Mo Linyuan replied softly he treated the imperial tutor, who was also his actual grandfather, with extreme gentleness. He then asked, is there any news since the last time you asked for help? The imperial tutor glanced at the youth in front of him. They were related by blood and their long separation from each other had given rise to a higher level of familial affection at the current moment. He sighed and respectfully said, the best doctor in the M.O. country is the silent Buddhist master. When all the other doctors heard he had begun treating the miss, they refrained themselves from competing with him. M.O. Linyuan's forehead creased. It seemed that sending Yi Mu over to the silent Buddhist master is indeed a mistake on his part. That monkey's he very famous among the common people. The imperial tutor smiled in reply. Not only does he have good reputation, but this silent Buddhist master is also the direct disciple of the late senior monk Wen Ji, who was the greatest among them monks. Moreover, he has great medical skills. The rarest thing is that he is a very just person, treating all patients equally. Because of this, he is very known in the capital of the M.O. country. Hearing how the silent Buddhist master was such a high-ranking monk who discipled under an esteemed senior monk. M.O. Linyuan finally felt the feeling of reassurance crept to his nagging heart. But he still said. Keep searching. We must be able to find someone stronger than him. Yes. The imperial tutor silently noted this down before he watched the youth walk away before him. 
From the moment he heard that the Empress Dowager was to personally take him into the palace, he thought this Empress Dowager would take this opportunity to gnaw on a piece of meat from her prey. But, this seemingly frail youth was sharp as a beast king. All of them were worried for nothing. With such an emperor around, taking down the Empress Dowager was just around the corner. The next day, the Empress Dowager woke up. She had never suffered such a loss before. The moment she woke up, Zhao Yunqin slayed more than a dozen of her servants in her uncontrollable fury, causing a great deal of commotion. Regardless of this, she couldn't help but shed blood at the thought of Mo Linyuan's foolish face which had been a fod to fool her from the very beginning. He's truly that slut's child. Despite being only ten years old, he already had a heart of darkness. His attacks were truly ruthless. As long as she thought of how she had personally promoted him to the throne and given him military authority, Zhao Yunkin's blood began to boil, her body trembling. She didn't know if the Yu Emperor was brainless for helping a crown prince without any real power. But this scheme made her suffer terrible losses instead. No the more Zhao Yunqin thought about it, the more she felt like the words were stuck in her throat. That brat, Mo Linyuan, was only so young, yet he already had extraordinary means for the throne. A murderous light flashed in her eyes. It seems there is no other way but to kill Mo Linyuan before he could sit firmly on his throne. Because of his ascension as the new emperor of the Mo country, half of the imperial guard's power had fallen into his hands. Although, the empress dowager had intervened several times in power play, all of her endeavors had been neutralized by Mo Linyuan. But later on, the Empress Dowager received news that a very important person to Mo Linyuan was sick and currently receiving treatment from the silent Buddhist master. Someone very important. Zhao Yunqin seemed to have thought of something and coldly smiled. Chapter 137 The days gradually turned warm. After the summer solstice, the citizens of the capital felt a little stuffy. This restlessness was not only due to the weather, but also to the increasingly severe disputes in the imperial court. This was because the power held by the Empress Dowager was still great. Every time Mo Linyuan wanted to do something, it would be extremely difficult to put it to action. But when he retaliated, it was absolutely impossible for the Empress Dowager to do anything. When Mo Linyuan once again used the empty treasury as a reason to reject Zhao Yunkin's idea of building a summer palace, Zhao Yunqin finally exploded. In the great hall, she flicked her sleeves and left, cursing the emperor for being unfilial. Everyone remembered her vicious gaze when she departed in a fury. Therefore, when Mo Linyuan was about to leave the palace, he was stopped by his trusted aides. Your Majesty, the Empress Dowager is a narrow-minded person. She definitely won't let you off easily for striking her like this today. Leaving the palace now is too dangerous. Indeed, Your Majesty. Moreover, that Grandmaster Bai Hua has a very suspicious identity. I'm afraid there's a trap for you waiting if you were to personally pick him up. While Mo Linyuan listened, he calmly changed into his regular clothes. The Empress Dowager was still truly a powerful foe. Once she really decided to fight to the death, there wouldn't be much of a difference between staying in the palace and staying outside. So, Mo Linyuan said, it doesn't matter. As long as she bears her fangs at me, I will have to fight back. As long as this master was willing to enter the palace, he would be able to bring Yi Mu inside to be treated safely. Otherwise, being left in the temple even if he had sent many soldiers to protect it would still feel uneasy. How about Zi Su, who had already been promoted to the commander of the guards, said, should I bring him back? No need. Mo Linyuan said seriously, he'll go personally. On the other side, Yi Mu had fallen into an extremely deep dream. Inside her dream, her father was in an unbearable state, groaning in a hospital bed. Her father, who had fought on the battlefield in his youth, was a very patient and taciturn man. However, after a long period of chemotherapy and illness, he could not bear the pain even if it was the slightest touch. Miss Yi, your father is suffering from leukemia and his condition is very serious he needs to find a suitable bone marrow for the transplant. But then, Miss Yi. Congratulations. You are a match with your father. 
therefore, you are a suitable bone marrow donor. The scene changed, the doctor in white coat worriedly telling her. The operation will take two days and in these two days you will be completely numb you have been injured recently, why don't we push the operation back? Alright, since you insist, let's arrange the operation in a week. Inside the operation room, lying on the bed and ready to be anesthetized, she turned to her father and swore in her heart that as long as this operation could make him better, she would do anything. Anything. With the strong infusion of the anesthetic, she fell into a deep sleep. It was only then that she came to this strange world. If it wasn't for Yi Li, Yi Mu might not have had such a strong impulse to come back home. Despite his temperament of an extremely tyrannical and detestable villain, she experienced the warmth that only her father could give her from him. She must wake up. She still had many things to fulfill. She needed to obtain the city boundary map to return to her original world. Her sick father is waiting for her. This strong desire to wake up was the first thing the silent Buddhist master felt upon inspecting Yimu. Only after checking did he found out that Yi Mu's body was absorbing the external qi at an abnormally fast rate. At this rate, it wouldn't be long before she woke up. Chapter, 138 A trace of distress appeared on the silent Buddhist master naturally compassion-filled face. Coincidentally, Wen Feng had brought him unexpected news at this moment. Silent Buddhist master Wen Feng, who had been ordered to protect Yi Mu, walked in and smiled at him. Thank you for taking care of our young miss. But His Majesty has already found Grandmaster Bai Hua to help with her recovery inside the Imperial Palace. Later, His Majesty will personally bring the young miss back. Bai Hua. He silently looked at the seven-year-old little girl on the bed, and his heart sank when he heard this news. He knew Bai Hua's medical skills were unparalleled. If he were to come, he too, would easily know Yi Mu's current condition. Perhaps he would even use the method to abolish her martial arts forever to help Yi Mu get rid of the possibility of becoming a bloodthirsty murderer in the future. Yes. Wen Feng seemed pleased that he would soon return to Mo Linyuan's side and sincerely expressed his thanks. It'll be troubling you for a while, master. After he finished speaking, he immediately got someone to prepare the matter of sending off Yi Mu. However, he did not notice the practically anxious expression on the silent Buddhist monk an expression he had never seen before. Meanwhile, Mo Linyuan was ambushed on the other side. After he invited Grandmaster Bai Hua from out of his sect, he unpredictably received news that Grandmaster Bai Hua had died a miserable death. The next second, countless assassins arrived and caught Mo Linyuan off guard. It was a good thing that Mo Linyuan had prepared well enough to repel the assassins, but when he thought of how the Empress Dowager had easily killed Bai Hua off, Mo Linyuan became extremely worried for Yi Mu's safety in the temple. If the Grand Master Bai Hua had been attacked, what about Heaven's Inheritance Temple? Although the Heaven's Inheritance Temple was protected by the Imperial family, many unforeseen hurdles could happen. He had to go himself just in in case. Thus, after Mo Linyuan was able to repel the enemy, he did not return to the palace immediately. Instead, he gathered his men and hurried over to the Heaven's Inheritance Temple. The Empress Dowager who had missed the opportunity to kill off Mo Linyuan was originally very furious upon discovering another failed assassination. But after learning of Mo Linyuan's actions, she narrowed her eyes sinisterly. An extremely frightening thought suddenly surfaced in her mind, the atmosphere becoming increasingly chilling. Men, quickly bring this Empress Dowager's dictum and summon the Prime Minister, Minister Zhong, and Grand Commandant Zhou. This Empress Dowager wants to make use of their dead soldiers. On a gloomy, rainy night, three messages were urgently issued to these specific people the rage that Zhao Yunqin had accumulated for several months finally exploded. Since that Cretan is still thinking about others even at this time, this can only be good opportunity. If she refused to place a heavy bet, then Mo Linyuan would live another day again. In order to secure victory, the Empress Dowager sent out almost all of her troops. It was extremely difficult to nurture an inner force master these days, much less several hundred people. At the same time, the several large families who supported the Empress Dowager that received orders from, fell into deep contemplation for a moment before agreeing to send out all of their dead soldiers. 
Not long after Mo Linyuan ascended the throne, in such a short period of time, people knew that he was clearly someone they cannot fool. Such a prominent person was too much of a hindrance if there was a chance, they might as well help the Empress Dowager and let the foolish person ascend to the throne so that their family's power could develop. Under the thought of ambition, several parties had come together to form a terrifying team of nearly 500 inner force masters. They approached the direction where Mo Linyuan was. In the pouring rain, their movements were like ghosts filled with killing intent. Together such a number of experts was definitely something that is difficult to achieve even with the power of a small country. So, at this very time, it could be inferred that the Empress Dowager was really going all out. After all, even if Imo Linyuan brought his men with him, he still had lost some of his men. Furthermore, he inside the safe confines of the Imperial Palace right now. If she didn't take advantage of the situation, how long was she going to wait? Chapter 139. Almost at the same time the assassins made their move, Mo Linyuan also received a terrible news. In order to provoke Mo Linyuan, the Empress Dowager declared that she would wipe out the temple as well, including his person, Yi Mu. In this way, Mo Linyuan would no longer be able to leave even if he wanted to. At the very least, he had to bring Yi Mu along with him. Your Majesty. Let's return to the palace or retreat to the barracks. According to the reports, the Empress Dowager had sent out numerous people this time. Our forces are not a match. Mo Linyuan had only been in power for so long. Therefore, he didn't have as many connections and people like the Empress Dowager and the other aristocratic families combined. A grim expression was fixed on his youthful face the rain flowed down his skin and his eyes, but the light in them shone even brighter. Take my medallion to the barracks and have them deliver troops to me. Also, notify the imperial tutor and the others to quickly assist you. If they want to fight, I will accompany them. If they don't have enough inner force masters, it doesn't matter if we have to use ten times of the imperial army for defense. In any case, he was determined to protect the Heaven's Inheritance Temple. Meanwhile, inside the temple, the silent Buddhist monk had no way to know that the wilderness below the temple was going to turn into a mini battlefield. He was holding the needle in his hand, facing the biggest problem of his life. If he were to pierce through her meridians and forcefully wake up Yimu, it would mean that she would catalyze the demons in her body in advance. But if he refused to wake her up this time, Yimu would still open her eyes after ten years. And by then she would become the most frightening power by the side of the new emperor. For the past 18 years, he had saved people every single day. He had donated money to the poor, helped treat their illnesses, and solved their adversities. But with the needle and the decision resting on him, he was no longer the great master he was before. The reason why he had resisted Mo Linyuan's request to save her was because he was afraid of today. Yet, ultimately the person was given to him in the very end. Perhaps this was truly heaven's will. In order to protect the monks of the Heaven's Inheritance Temple, Mo Linyuan deliberately sealed everyone from entering the mountains. Only when the assassins arrived did Mo Linyuan realize the startling power that was in the hands of those aristocratic families. Moreover, these inner force masters were all dead soldiers. People with a hundred years of heritage are the only ones able to cultivate them. The clash between the soldiers and the killers had become a one sided massacre between the inner force masters. However, Mo Linyuan had taken advantage of the terrain and the heavy rain to occupy the high ground, which had dealt the enemy quite a big blow. 5,000 soldiers versus 500 inner force masters This small-scale battle had happened very suddenly. But the battlefield became as if they had been in the fray for a long time, particularly months. For more than ten years since Zhao Yunqin had seized power, she had never suffered a loss from anyone, not to mention being bitten by a little wolf cub that she had not even paid attention to before killing intent had accumulated in her chest for a long time. On the other hand, although Mo Linyuan looked gentle and harmless, he was actually a decisive strategist, allowing him to lower his deceitfully lower his head to Zhao Yunqin and stay by her side until his plans were brought into fruition. On one side was an empress dowager, who had gained power for a long time. And on the other was a young emperor, who was not afraid of tigers and wolves. This was only a clash that had come too late. 
just as the fight at the foot of the mountain was getting more intense by a thousandfold. Inside the temple, the silent Buddhist master silently cried out to Buddha in his heart before slowly inserting a silver needle into Yi Mu's skin. Not only did he want to awaken Yi Mu, he also wanted to catalyze the energy within Yi Mu's body that had yet to be digested. Although she would avoid becoming an oppressing force, a terrible temperament was waiting her. Although she would soon return to the side of someone close to her a seven-year-old child who is still immature and unable to withstand herself will eventually still hurt the people around her in the most vicious manner possible. Chapter, 140 Zi Su, quickly go and fetch Wen Feng. Take Yi Mu and leave first. Mo Linyuan knew in his heart that even if his troops were ten times numerous, they still wouldn't be a match for inner force experts. The only choice left was to save Yi Mu and rush straight inside the military camp at the outskirts of the city for refuge only then would they be safe. Yes sir. After running for a while, he turned around and saw that under the pouring rain, the foot of the mountain was filled with the mixed killing intent of several people. A flash of lightning suddenly spread through the sky, ominously illuminating the mud and blood on the ground. The battle for power were only to be this intense. But just when he was lamenting, a loud, rumbling, sound suddenly came from atop the mountain. It was as if thunder had struck the temple. Could it be that something happened in the temple? Thinking of this, Zi Su quickened his pace towards his destination. Soon, he saw that despite the rain, the top of the mountain was lit up with uncontrollable flames. The fire was getting bigger and fiercer, to the point that the rain couldn't extinguish it. Amidst the thick smoke and raging flames, the disciples that wanted to rush in and rescue them were trapped outside. Among them was Wen Feng, who didn't know how many had died or were still alive. But he then saw the silent Buddhist master supporting himself against the wall as blood continuously gushed out from the corner of his mouth. Master! We will come save you right now! A disciple anxiously shouted outside, listening silently to what was happening inside but his entire body couldn't help but tense up. In order to prevent them from rushing in, their master had hurriedly stopped them with a forceful palm, blocking everyone outside. Within the fire, a little girl dressed in white slowly turned around. Her figure was fuzzy as she covered her head, her expression one of extreme pain as her face contorted. All sorts of chaotic external chi reversed their course within her body. Yet, Yi Mu was still unaware of everything that had transpired only that she was woken up. Right now, her chest felt as if it was burning, and she felt inexplicable anger to the point she wanted to commit murder. Yi Mu slowly wiped the blood off her mouth after being awoken. You do you still remember Mo Lin Yuan? The silent Buddhist master hesitantly asked. The two words Mo Lin Yuan made the little girl react subtlety. Seeing her fiercely stare at him, he gave a silent and bitter laugh. Never before had he felt so guilty of an action. He pointed outside, towards where the battlefield was, he is waiting for you at the foot of the mountain. After he finished speaking, Yi Mu disappeared from out of the fire leaving a loud bang. The entire hall was on the verge of collapse with this collision, but it also opened up a path for those monks that wanted to save people inside. He silently looked out through the hole she had left. And in the pitch black night, the fire around him was still burning, the rain outside not even about to stop any moment. Only when Yi Mu disappeared with a tumultuous murderous aura did he finally slump to the ground as if all his energy had been sucked out. This night was destined to be filled with corpses. Zi Su, who was on the way, suddenly felt a murderous intent coming towards him. But before he could see who it was, he subconsciously used his sword to block it. A pang sound suddenly echoed through the night. His palm trembled until it felt numb, and the sword in his hand was broken. The wind from his opponent's palm carried an aura of death. If he had not dodged so quickly, the next to break would have been his neck. Who is it? Zi Su and the others immediately became alert and looked around. What on earth was that small and fast figure just now? Yi Mu squatted on a branch that was as thin as a wooden chopstick and shook it. She curled up her body and used both of her hands to grab onto her toes as she stared at the people below her. I want to kill. Chapter, 141 Yi Mu had never felt such a strong killing intent. 
It was so severe to the point the pain of not tearing her opponent to pieces was akin to being pricked by needles. It made her throw away the half of the blade that had been crushed into a ball and throw herself down once again. The sound of the blade hitting the ground was accompanied by the sound of thunder, making Zi Su shudder. In the next second, a small white hand reached out to grab him. Zi Zu's eyes opened wide, wanting to dodge, but that hand followed him like a shadow, growing larger and larger in his pupils. He was dead for sure. Your Majesty. Suddenly, from far away, many people's surprised voices could be heard. The voices were only so loud that they were slightly audible against the heavy rain and gruesome battle. However, Yi Mu could clearly hear them. Quick! His Majesty is injured. Protect him at all costs. She didn't know who the other party was referring to as Your Majesty, but an incomprehensible sense of anxiety appeared in Yi Mu's heart. After hesitating for a moment, she gave up on her prey and disappeared again in a flash. Zi Su and the others who were waiting for their imminent death had their eyes closed. Only after a while did they realize that they had escaped a terrible fate. Just when they had let out a breath of relief, Zi Su suddenly shouted, Crap! That thing must have heard the commotion below and let them go. This meant that His Majesty was in danger. Mo Linyuan had been struck by an arrow. If it were not for the protection of his golden mail, this arrow would have killed him on the spot. Who would have thought that besides the inner force master, the other party also had an expert knowledgeable on bows and arrows, only waiting for an opportunity to launch a sneak attack. As to why such an arrow had successfully pierced through his armor, the assassin must have used a heavy bow. His eyesight was extremely good. Seeing that someone was carrying Imo Linyuan up the mountain, he smiled slightly. Gathering his inner force, he drew his bow, and aimed at Emo Linyuan's neck. As long as it hit, he would then be by the Empress Dowager's side as her most trusted aide. No one would be able to surpass him. Swish. Originally, with the rain being so loud, the sounds of arrows would have been covered, but because this arrow was driven by inner force, it was too fast a sonic boom could be heard as it shot straight towards like death towards Emo Linyuan. Although Mo Linyuan wasn't able to see the arrow, he heard the sound of the bowstring being released. He did not know which direction the arrow was coming from, but it was already too late saw the gleam of the arrow's tip coming right at him at a terrifying sped. It was a very heavy, triangular-shaped iron arrow. When it reached him, he could clearly see its trajectory, but he could not avoid it. Could it be that he's destined to die here today? At this critical moment, everything around him slowed down and everyone looked at the arrow in horror. Some of them even reached out their hands to stop it, but in the end, the arrow pierced through the shield in front of Mo Linyuan, only a few inches away from his neck. But suddenly, an arrow that could even pierce through an iron plate was caught by a small, white hand. The crowd was in chaos. The archer's vision became blocked so he couldn't see if he had hit the target or not. However, as a very experienced archer, he was very confident in his aim. That little emperor must be dead. Yi Yi Mu. Her hair was in disarray and she wore a white robe. Her small hands gripped the arrow and with a clamp of her hand, the arrow broke into pieces. Mo Linyuan immediately grabbed her hand to examine a possible wound, only to find that there was no trace of the arrow left on her unblemished palm. The scent of blood made Yi Mu frown, especially when the smell came from Mo Linyuan's body. She stared at the wound that was still bleeding, and her eyes became more distorted as if traces of blood were spreading through her irises. Someone wanted to hurt Mo Linyuan. Chapter 142 Yi Mu Mo Linyuan endured the pain and struggled to sit up, his former vicious air gone as he stared at her. You're finally awake. You what's wrong? It was obviously the same person in the flesh yet why did someone he was so familiar with give off such a bizarre feeling as if she was a stranger? Yi Mu withdrew her hand slowly from the air. This time, her fingertips were stained with blood his blood. After a moment's hesitation, she gingerly brought her hand to her mouth for a sniff. Yi Mu did not expect that, instead of the metallic and nauseating smell of blood, she could only smell a hint of sweetness in the air. 
a kind of sweetness that cruelly stifled the bloodlust that had been tormenting her for so long and such an aroma assaulted her senses heavily. Yes, he did they hurt you. There was a long period of silence before Yi Mu finally spoke, her voice sounding extremely hoarse. Furthermore, her monotonous voice gave off a sense of eeriness. The surrounding people finally reacted, and someone hurriedly said in anger, it's them. They wanted to kill His Majesty, but His Majesty was worried about you. He did not want to retreat until he had found you first. But before he could finish his words, Mo Linyuan raised an arm to seize him from speaking further. He was half lying on a makeshift bed, creases nodding his forehead as he looked at the perplexing Yimu. The bad feeling in his heart could only grow stronger. Im all right as long as he is still alive and awake, that was better than death. Yi Mu stiffly patted the back of his hand in reply. Nothing will matter. Her voice became softer, almost inaudible in the sound of the rain. To kill he'll do it. After saying the last gloomy words, she disappeared from her spot. Her small body was extremely fast that the surrounding people all had the illusion that she had disappeared into thin air. But then, as if testament to the unreal scene that had happened, a blood-chilling scream came from afar. With the devil's awakening, a one-sided massacre had begun under her hands. The assassins, who originally had an 80% chance of killing the emperor, were complacent and didn't even pay any attention to her a small girl when she rushed over. They could only think in derision, where did this milk doll come from? Did she come here just to throw away her life? But soon, they realized how wrong they were. The little emperor was originally protected by twenty or so inner force experts, all huddled around him, while the rest were just ordinary soldiers. When they had chased after the emperor, it had been a one-sided badly a massacre, but after Yi Mu appeared, everything had changed against their favor. Yet, one thing remained, it was still a massacre with them as prey. Cries of horror and despair filled the air. The previously arrogant masters were lazing around their own camps, but after they experienced Yi Mu's terror, they had no choice but to stick together, gasping for breath for a chance to escape. However, even if they were to form a team, they were still unable to escape the fate of being brutally slaughtered. Yi Mu's initially white and clean clothes were gradually dyed red by blood. Ultimately in the end, no matter if she was approaching the enemy or her people on her side, she would murder them immediately without regard for the difference. And every time she ran out of strength, she would drain the internal energy of a few people around her. At the end of the aggressive carnage, she was like a demon that had eaten her fill, standing on top of a pile of corpses with a flushed face complete annihilation. Some soldiers, who had long since distanced themselves from the battle, were only bystanders to the slaughter that had happened before their eyes. Even though they hadn't slept the entire night, their spirits were still highly alert. Faces pale, they began to fight. A single person just a little girl, had overwhelmed four to five hundred people within two hours. Moreover, these people were not just ordinary soldiers like them, but genuine inner force experts. Each one of them wanted to escape, but no matter how fast they tried to outrun Yimu, she would still catch up to them. It was as if she had the ability to split up people she alone, would block anyone who tried to escape, and after killing them all, she would pile up all the corpses in one place, forming a terrifying mountain of dead bodies. Was she even human? Everyone was asking themselves this question. Chapter, 143 Mo Linyuan knew that before Yi Li died, he had forcefully passed his martial arts, along with the internal energy he had absorbed from numerous people, into Yi Mu, but he never imagined that Yi Mu would be so deadly. In less than a day, she was able to single-handedly exterminate all of the inner force experts from the three great clans of the Mo country and had not been harmed in the slightest. Yi Mu Mo Linyuan could only have his wound treated mildly in the battlefield with no proper place or recuperation. He got down from his makeshift bed and made his way towards Yi Mu. Your Majesty, don't go. Zi Su, who had rushed back, anxiously pulled Mo Linyuan back, previously, Miss Yi even attacked me. With her state now I am afraid she is obviously not sane anymore. You will only put yourself in danger. The others were also thinking the same thing. They stopped Mo Linyuan worriedly and did not let him pass. 
They were all vigilant as they stared into the distance, as if expecting doom to befall any time on them. The dark sky had slowly turned light, the rain finally stopping, but the blood still seeped into the ground in an endless stream. And even if the earth was washed by the heavy rain for an entire night, the area still reeked of blood seeping into the tip of Yi Mu's nose. Standing on top of the pile of corpses she had created, she used her blood-stained clothes to wipe the blood off her fingers. This action was done very calmly normal, even. As if she was wiping something off that was anything but blood. However, it was quite a bizarre and eerie scene, when faced with the corpses that definitely reached the underworld in a brutal fashion. Don't worry she will not harm me. Mo Linyuan could still remember the few words Yi Mu had said to him before. It was obvious to him that she was somewhat rational at the very least, she was still aware of his identity. Your Majesty. Seeing that Mo Linyuan was adamant, everyone stood in front of him with more resilience. The voices alarmed Yi Mu, who was standing far away. She suddenly looked over like a cautious little beast. The distance was too far, and no one could clearly see her expression, but they could feel her gaze even from afar. In an instant, they became even more edgy. I said it's all right Mo Linyuan's voice dropped to an extremely low pitch, as if he was afraid of disturbing someone. His serene phoenix eyes stared unwaveringly in Yi Mu's direction as he quietly instructed, all of you stay here. I will go over alone. After he finished speaking, Mo Linyuan ignored the disapproval in everyone's eyes and determinately walked towards Yi Mu. What kind of experience was it to climb a mountain of corpses? Mo Linyuan felt his hands and feet turn cold, his injuries seemed to be even throbbing more painfully than before. The feeling of his souls burying into the corpses' bodies beneath him was not the least pleasant. Despite his intelligence and maturity, he was still a teenager at heart. Facing this frightening scene before him, he felt a sense of tension in his heart that he hadn't felt in a long time. Yi Mu lowered her head, looking at him. She unconsciously slowed down the hasty, fervent motions of wiping her fingers, to look at Mo Linyuan but her eyes were dead, not the slightest warmth in them. Mo Linyuan's throat constricted as he approached her step by step. With each step, it felt as if he was walking on the sharp edge of a blade just one slip and he would be sliced away. Finally, his steps halted as he reached Yi Mu, who also stopped smearing her hands. Without waiting for Mo Linyuan to speak first, Yi Mu unexpectedly broke the silence. She extended her hand, which was getting more and more dirty, to him. There's so much blood I can't wipe it clean. It was clearly said in flat tone, but from her impatient, jittery actions, Mo Linyuan could feel the muted cries from the hidden depths of her heart if it had been the Yi Mu before. If she hadn't been bestowed a gruesome martial art, she definitely wouldn't have the need and want to kill so many people. Thinking of this, Mo Linyuan used his damp clothes to wipe her small hands instead. As the blood was slowly wiped clean bit by bit, he felt Yi Mu's turbulent emotions calm down by a lot. Look, isn't it all gone? Mo Linyuan showed Yi Mu her hands, and Yi Mu kept turning it over and over, only to hear him let out a long, weary sigh. Muir, can I carry you down now? Chapter 144 Mo Linyuan bent over and carefully lifted the girl away from the pile of corpses, but the moment he made his move, he discovered that something was wrong. The blood on Yi Mu's body didn't actually belong to anyone else the warm, fresh liquid in his hand told him that her body was currently oozing blood from the inside. What happened to you? Mo Linyuan immediately tensed up. Then he saw Yi Mu shake her head and weakly speak. I'm fine in order to control the internal energy in my body, I cut off my own meridians. Although my internal injuries are serious, my life is not in danger. But Mo Linyuan actually guessed this too, that she had chosen to do something so drastic in order to prevent herself from harming them. It was also because she was just the same foolish girl before that made his heart ache. And before he could say anything, Yi Mu had already fainted. Mo Linyuan was burning with anxiety as he hurriedly brought Yi Mu back to the palace. As for the corpses on the ground, no one bothered with them. On the way back to the palace, someone asked Mo Linyuan about the mountain of corpses. When Mo Linyuan heard this, he said in a rather sinister manner, Don't worry about it. Someone will naturally go collect what belongs to her. 
Meanwhile, the Empress Dowager, who was waiting in the palace for joyous news after a good night of sleep, heard the most unexpected news instead. What did you say? She ran barefoot out of the bed, grabbed a hold of the man's clothes who had announced the news, and said in a shrill voice, You said that evil creature is back here. How is that possible? In order to absolutely ensure a landslide success, not only did she use her strongest trump card, but she also sought help from the great families of the M.O. country to form a team of 500 deadly assassins. The face of the person under the Empress Dowager's hold suddenly turned pale and trembled all over. When Zhao Yunqin saw that he couldn't utter even a single word for a long time, she anxiously pushed him away and yelled. Where's Yuan Wei? Tell him to come and see me. She couldn't find any plausible reason for why the emperor had already returned. After all, the person in charge of the imperial guards she had sent out had yet to arrive before him. They should have won. The person fell to the ground, quivering, and then quickly kneeled down. Hearing the Empress Dowager's question, he stammered, Second Lieutenant Yuan Hehe's outside. The Empress Dowager was too impatient and didn't have time for a stuttering fool. Glaring at him and without waiting for him to finish speaking, she ran to the outer hall. With dread, she guessed that Yuan Wei must have failed his mission, so he didn't dare come inside to meet her. However, when she went out, she had the shock of her life she discovered that there were thirteen corpses on the floor. After a long time of surprise, she quickly tried to determine who was on the ground. Terrified, she discovered that the corpses were the captains of the thirteen squads she had sent out. Their faces were all washed clean of blood, but it was not hard to tell what happened to them back when they were alive from their mutilated bodies. Especially when many of them died with a horrid look, as if they had suffered hell. Somehow, the Empress Dowager could only feel a cold chill rapidly rise from the bottom of her feet, causing her entire body to stiffen. It was a sweltering day in May, but she seemed to be in the middle of a blizzard in winter. This what's going on? Zhao Yunqin resiliently asked after a while. Her face deathly pale, what about the other experts that were sent out? Find one to talk to me. Even if the quest had been a failure, why was she seeing a pile of corpses? But she didn't expect that her words would cause her trusted aides to kneel down. All gone someone said in a very low, hoarse voice. What do you mean gone? Say it more clearly. Zhao Yunqin suddenly pressed closer to that person, feeling even more uneasy. That person was so scared that he finally broke down and wept. He said with a tearful voice, there's no one left alive. All 237 men who had been sent out by our palace are all all dead. Chapter, 145 At that moment, Zhao Yunqin only felt the sky and the earth shake before her, and she almost fainted. But still, she was quick to remember something else very important. Where's Prime Minister Wen's group? Her face contorted, did they betray us and that's why we. Is that the reason why all of them were wiped out so easily? No, no, no. The person who replied remembered the demonic scene from before, and broke down a second time, tears falling down in a streak, not only our people. But none of the dead soldiers that the Prime Minister one and the other families have lent for this mission have returned all of them dead. Five hundred men all annihilated. Finally, the Empress Dowager couldn't take this blow any longer. Her vision turned black and she fell to the ground. Fortunately, someone else had caught her just in time, otherwise she would have rolled down the stairs. When she thought about how difficult it was to cultivate an inner force expert, Zhao Yunkin's entire body trembled. Her heart felt like it was being agonizingly, slowly cut by knives, she did not know how to explain this matter to the aristocratic families. She tightly held on to the arm of the person supporting her, and asked with the last bit of hope, then what about Imo Linyuan? What's his status? She had sacrificed so much. Even if Imo Linyuan wasn't able to die, at the very least he should have lost half his life, right? Yet in this dreadful moment, she didn't even know that those people were killed off by just a single person she only cared about what happened to the culprit. Her trusted aide said sympathetically, Your Majesty, he he's injured but with the protection of the armor, only his skin was damaged. Before he could finish, the Empress Dowager's eyes rolled to the back of her head and she finally fainted. The entire palace was instantly submerged into chaos. 
especially since all the imperial physicians were present at Missouri Linuan's place, no one could actually inspect the faint Empress Dowager. How is she? M.O. Linuan eagerly asked the imperial physician before him. Everyone had checked Yi Mu's pulse. After the final imperial physician had made his diagnosis, they all talked between themselves, coming to a conclusion, this lady has broken her meridians forcefully, but she is still young, so her body will still recuperate in the future. However, until her full recovery, she shouldn't casually use inner force for now. The imperial physicians could only see this as the sole answer and remedy. As for the reason why Yi Mu's personality had a drastic change overnight, it was very likely related to the type of martial arts Yi Li had passed on to her. For this, they could only wait until she woke up before they could ask her. After a few more days of resting, Yi Mu finally woke up. She was woken up by her nightmares she was wailing. Inside that dream, she was a demon that was harvesting people's lives. Yi Mu didn't want to kill anyone, everyone. But it was as if it wasn't her own body that she couldn't control herself. And later, when the people remaining had wanted to escape away and forfeit, she originally wanted to let them go. But at that time, when those people had scattered in all directions in her eyes, they were like red dots jumping about in a grayish world. She couldn't control the impulse and chased after them. And when they counterattacked, she would naturally kill back. As if they weren't already under a crushing defeat, she feared that the dead would run away, so she had piled them up together. Only when she saw that they weren't able to move, did she feel satisfied. This kind of sick cruelty caused her to murder person after person in front of her eyes, until there were none left. Until she turned her gaze towards the soldiers on the other side. And among them stood Emo Linyuan. There was such a horrifying impulse to harvest everyone's souls, but she was only a seven-year-old child in appearance. Her morals underneath her irrational haze wasn't completely extinguished yet, and in order to control the endless desire to kill, that was definitely not from her own will, she could only break her meridians and use the pain to wake herself up. Chapter 146 Yi Mu was wide awake, in full consciousness of her own actions last night. She looked at her hands, of which her white fingers were once smeared with blood. Back in the battlefield of her old world, when she used her gun to annihilate people, she didn't feel anything at doing the act. But it was only afterwards, when the adrenaline had simmered down, when she would feel a heavy, crushing weight in her heart. But now, after she had truly used her hands to kill no, massacred, five hundred people, something in her heart seemed to have shattered her firm belief in herself had crumbled. She was even thinking that if this continued, would she eventually become like Yi Li? While she was caught in her thoughts, Emo Linyuan came in. Seeing that Yi Mu had woken up, he was taken aback. You're finally awake. He rushed over and eagerly grabbed Yi Mu's hand. Only in front of Yi Mu did he display such a sincere expression of vulnerability. Thank goodness you're all right. He had been truly afraid. If Yi Mu were to fall into a coma again, this time, she wouldn't be able to wake up. And he no longer had any relatives or friends Yi Mu was the only and most important person to him. Seeing Mo Linyuan in a clearer light, Yi Mu's expression became somewhat complex. She was not able to forget that Yi Li had failed because of Mo Linyuan, but she knew very clearly in her heart that Yi Li's death could not be blamed on anyone else but himself. I apologize. Seeing Yi Mu not speaking, Mo Linyuan could instantly understand what she was thinking. He quieted down and said in a very low voice, I'm very sorry about Yi Li. Yi Mu had felt a bit of a raging fire in her heart before, but after she lost control and killed 500 people, she was finally relieved of the impulse. But her current situation showed exactly the same as Yi Li's. He easily killed and had different moods the Divine Terminator technique should have a lot to do with it. If Yi Li was still alive now and had succeeded, he would definitely become a terrible tyrant in the future. Then, perhaps, it's heaven's will for him to fail. After thinking it through, Yi Mu began to understand why Yi Li committed suicide. He could have chosen to live that time, but he had lost his most prized possession his martial arts. Therefore, he chose to die instead. She bitterly smiled and shook her head, let's not talk about those who have already gone to the underworld. Are we inside the MO country now? 
Seeing that her expression was serious, Mo Linyuan quickly said, Yes, I brought you to the Mo country Xiaolang was also with us, but I threw him into the army to train. The three of them were still together, and they all had experienced many horrid things together. The corner of Mo Linyuan's mouth slightly curled up as he looked at her and he said once more, I'm truly happy that you're fine. Yi Mu thought of Xiaolang and finally felt some peace in her heart. Both of them skimmed over the topic about the night's massacre, but Yi Mu suddenly thought of something and quickly asked, Oh right. Before I fainted, I had a map on me. Where is that map? Although it was called a map, it was actually human skin. After Yi Li had peeled it off, he had stuffed it into her arms. Mo Linyuan frowned slightly. You mean, that piece of human skin? Although gruesome, the strange patterns drawn on it made Mo Linyuan keep it instead of throwing it away in repulsion. But he had to remedy this of course. Therefore, he used a special method to store it and even made a copy of the drawing on paper. Yi Mu looked at the paper with the map drawn on it, and her eyes lit up. Do you know what this is? She did not intend to tell Mo Linyuan about her need of the city boundary map right now. After all, what she wanted wasn't a treasure trove, but the final, complete map. Is this a map? Yes. This drawing is from the legends. Two hundred years ago, the Empire left behind a treasure trove of information, a map of the world. This is a part of it. Chapter 147 The City Boundary Map He had never seen rumored map before, but as the Crown Prince, he naturally heard many legends about it. Legend has it that in it were countless inner qi cultivation methods that people could choose to cultivate some seven go as far as tell that endless gold and silver treasures piled up like a mountain. And most importantly, just by obtaining it, one could revive an empire. And part of such an earth-shattering artifact was now in their hands. Yi Mu continued, the reason why Yi Li disregarded his own safety and the odds stacked against him and rushed fearlessly into Imperial Palace was because of this map the Lake Yu Emperor carried a part of this map on his back. Unfortunately, it's only incomplete, and the remaining parts are still unknown. When Mo Lin Yuan heard this, he kept the map, a solemn look in place. It's all right. This is already a pleasant surprise. We still have a long time to slowly gather it. After Mo Linyuan finished speaking, he remembered that Yi Mu hadn't eaten yet. He quickly brought the kanji over and fed it himself to Yi Mu. The worry in his heart still hadn't subsided at all. You are now also a cultivator of the divine terminator arts. Yi Mu didn't hide anything and nodded truthfully. During that time, Yi Li had given me all of his inner qi. Therefore, I can only learn this cultivation technique to prevent it from causing my body to burst. Mo Linyuan grimaced. Nevertheless, although Yi Li is brutal, he wasn't able to lose his consciousness. Why did you he trailed off? Yi Mu had a bitter expression on her face, I'm not too sure either. And if I continue practicing this martial art, it'll surely become a devil when I grow up. It'll only speed up the process every time I dabbled in it. Seeing that Mo Linyuan's phoenix eyes had dimmed, his self-blame apparent by the minute, she quickly said, but it doesn't matter anymore, my meridians are damaged, and I can't use qi. So I shouldn't go senseless for now, that is. Hastily trying to change the subject she continued, as for you, you are already the emperor now. How can you still be surrounded by so many assassins? Five hundred inner force masters were not just for show. What did Mo Linyuan do? As she spoke of this, Mo Linyuan gradually calmed down. In the past few days, he had not gone to look for that woman in worry of Yimu, but it did not mean in the slightest that the matter was over not at all. You did remind me. After he took care of Yimu, he dutifully covered her with the blanket as he spoke. You should continue resting. I'll go take care of some matters. I'll be right back. Yimu was really weak at this moment. She nodded her head and saw Mo Linyuan leave without looking back. Yi Mu didn't know why, but she felt that Mo Linyuan's back was overflowing with a palpable killing intent. What was he going to do? The Empress Dowager was currently lying on the bed, sick and frail. Her delicate and fierce face was now haggard she had only woken up this morning after passing out, and her vitality was greatly damaged. 
Her private imperial physician had recommended that she had better take a good rest and not suffer any more irritable moods, lest, the damage on her body would be irreparable. Naturally following this, the Empress Dowager recuperated. But then, someone had noisily barged inside her quarters. Who is it? Who would be so bold? Hearing the commotion, Zhao Yunkin's already tired face darkened and she fiercely glowered at the entrance. It turns out the one who entered was none other than Imo Linyuan, who was wearing the dragon robe. The eleven-year-old youth stood tall, his spine straight. When he looked at the people around, his eyes were filled with a faint smile. If he could ignore the lingering murderous aura emanating from his body, he could have looked harmless to the extreme. How dare you! When Zhao Yunqin saw him, she panicked and immediately cried out. Since she already had a blatant fallout with him, she couldn't be bothered to continue pretending as a kind grandmother. She stared at him icily and said, This Empress Dowager is obviously sick. What is the meaning of this barging in without any word? Her fierce expression made Emo Linyuan even smile brighter. He beamed as he approached her, but the growing aggressive aura around him made no one dare to stop him. Of course, I'm here to visit royal grandmother. If five hundred people died, my grandmother would naturally be very sad. Chapter, 148 Zhao Yunqin had only just woken up from her abrupt shock and she already heard such stimulating words. Immediately, she felt her chest tighten, as if breathing had become difficult and it hurt to inhale. However, this was only the beginning. Mo Linyuan glanced at the medicine bowl that had already cooled down and said with an ambiguous smile. Ah, my memory is really fuzzy these days me royal grandmother hasn't drunk her medicine yet. Come, this grandson will feed you. Hearing this, one of Zhao Yunkin's trusted aides rushed over to grab the bowl. Your Majesty, this medicine is already cold, allow this servant to change it but before she could finish speaking, the rest of her words gradually died down as she was stared down by Mo Linyuan's ice-cold eyes. He pinched the edge of the bowl and jestingly smiled at her. Did I allow you to speak? Offending this emperor for a small matter, do you want to die? It was only a few threatening words, but they made even the tip of her fingertips chill in terror. Seeing this, Zhao Yunqin looked to the people around her for help, but they all only lowered their heads in fear. At the moment, the young emperor's killing intent was too strong, thus they all had a feeling as if they had been frozen in place. Come now, royal grandmother. Drink some medicine. Zhao Yunqin currently didn't know what kind of attitude she should have facing Imo Linyuan. For these past few months, the youth in front of her had constantly opposed her, which made her angry and vexed all the time she wished she could strangle him. Nevertheless, when she did make her move, Mo Linyuan was still standing even if she had utilized all her strength and methods she originally looked down on him a little, but now all that was left was fear. What are you trying to do? Zhao Yunqin slapped away the spoon that Mo Linyuan reached out towards her and angrily, fearfully said, so what if it was this dowager who did it? Do you want to settle debts? Ha! Don't forget this one still has the 500,000 army. Of the three great families of the M.O. country, who wouldn't listen to the commands of those above them? Only a few inner force experts died with this setback you think you are already on this dowager's level? These blatant words had stolen all the limelight it was naturally breaking decorum. Everyone looked in horror towards M.O. Linyuan for his expression, only to see him listening very calmly. His phoenix eyes were half squinted, his exquisite face still carrying a hint of a smile. You're done. He pursed his lips slightly, looking harmless. Drink the medicine after you've finished speaking. Those five hundred people are nothing at Ali have already forgotten about them. Nothing at all. Zhao Yunkin's heart felt even worse. The five hundred people who died were all genuine inner force masters. And death swarms at that. These assassins had been training for years, and it was a feat to even get a hold of all five hundred. Now that everything had been destroyed, Mo Linyuan still treated the matter as something so casual in his eyes. In the midst of her irate thoughts, she then heard Mo Linyuan continue apparently, he was still unfinished with his tirade. Royal Grandmother has been unconscious for a few days, I'm afraid she is ignorant of the current affairs. He held the medicine bowl as he slowly spoke, 
although, to my royal grandmother the death of a few inner force masters is a minor deal, on my end, it took a lot of effort to gather more than two hundred inner force masters. After that when the three families went to quietly collect their own people's corpses, I sent people to attack them. Now, don't you think there should only be a few survivors, right? Look at it this way, first, you find them to borrow their soldiers for the purpose of getting rid of me, but then, you betrayed them and slaughtered all of the deathsworn you have borrowed, greatly weakening their force. Right now who knows how much they hate you. It took Xiao Yunqin a while to understand what Emo Linyuan was implying. He was actually saying that he had found someone to pretend to be her man, and while she was unconscious, had him attack the people of the three great families to create the impression that she had destroyed the bridge after crossing the river. Chapter, 149 It was no wonder that even after she had woken up for so long, there hadn't been a single news from any of the aristocratic clans. They all thought that the people they'd sent out had been killed by my men. After all, over two hundred inner force masters were not a small number. Other than her army and the combined now deceased five hundred inner force soldier, there was probably no one else who could take them out those old foxes would definitely abhor her for doing such a sneaky act. After all, they had lent her all their men. You! Zhao Yunqin was anxious. But before she could even open her eyes to roar, she was stopped by Mo Linyuan roughly holding the medicinal bowl to her mouth. She struggled, refusing her best to drink it, but Mo Linyuan was still young, and had great strength. With just one grab of her chin, she was not able to break free. What's the hurry? What's more important than your body? Here, drink the medicine obediently. He beamed, but the medicine bowl in his hand filled her mouth to the brim with speed to the point black liquid flowed out from the corners of her lips. Zhao Yunqin could only choke and whimper. Empress Dowager. Mo Linyuan's sudden action terrified everyone. They hurriedly surrounded him but ultimately took a step back. Zhao Yunkin's face was pale as she held onto her neck with one hand, trembling, while Mo Linyuan had his vice grip on her. You evil creature. This is unfilial. Unfilial? It has already been two days since I've taken up court. Outsiders know that I am heavily injured and can't even get out of bed. It was all thanks to you, so how could I have the chance to be unfilial to you? As he spoke, he knocked the now empty jade bowl to the table at the corner of the bed, shattered the fine ornament to sharp pieces. He held a fragment in his hand and looked at Zhao Yunqin ominously. Tell me, now that you have no inner force experts surrounding you, how much chance do you think you have to escape if I were to kill you now? With this single sentence, everyone in the room quieted down. Zhao Yunqin did not even cough her lips open and closed, not a single word came out from her mouth. Half of the imperial army's authority were in her hands, and the other half were in the hands of Mo Linyuan. If it was only that, she wouldn't be afraid, but the inner force masters protecting her at the moment numbered less than twenty people. Since Mo Linyuan was able to kill all five hundred of them, then he truly has the ability to kill her in the palace. Right now. Meanwhile, Mo Linyuan really wanted to already finish her. Unfortunately, his foundation was still too weak. Not long after he took power, he still only had forty or so inner force masters under his command, and he had sent them all out to pretend as the Empress Dowager's soldiers, having them slaughter the soldiers from the other great families to promote conflict. If he had more people, he would definitely make a move. It was a pity that they were both in a disadvantage. Even if Xiao Yunqin were to die, both sides would suffer. And when the time came, it would be the aristocratic families who will reap the benefits and the gains wouldn't even make up for the losses. But regardless of what his strength was, Mo Linyuan did not show any signs of uncertainty on the expression of his face. He still acted as if victory was within his grasp. Have you decided? Royal Grandmother, you should understand what I mean. Zhao Yunqin forced herself to remain calm. You what exactly do you want? Now that the blade was pointed right in front of her and although she didn't know why Mo Linyuan didn't drive the sharp edge, she wisely chose not to provoke him. When Mo Linyuan heard this, he paused for a moment before speaking. I would like to know where my royal father is. In the past, with Mo Linyuan's absence in the country, 
she had always used the excuse that the emperor was gravely ill and was recuperating elsewhere to withhold him from the public and act as the regent. As a result, in these past few years, people had almost forgotten about the emperor, only assuming that he was dead somewhere. However, that emperor was still, in fact, very much alive. She was sinisterly hidden by Zhao Yunqin, and the reason why she had kept him alive till today was because of a secret he would not reveal even if he was threatened with death. Chapter 150 You won't say it. Mo Linyuan's patience gradually became thin. His phoenix eyes slightly narrowed as he said, This emperor's grandmother was rash a day ago she has baptized the Heaven's Rites Temple with her blood. Could it be that she will force me to do the same for today? The murderous intent in his eyes made Zhao Yunqin shudder. This dowager is telling you, T.E. telling you. She had never thought that one day she would be scared out of her wits by a child, but there was nothing she could do to escape. Your royal father your royal father is within the palace. He's in the underground mausoleum. The mausoleum was the place where all the deceased emperors were worshipped. Afraid that Emo Linyuan would misunderstand, Zhao Yunqin hurriedly continued, he's still alive. This dowager didn't kill him. It was hard to say what he was feeling at the moment. Mo Linyuan had originally been prepared for the news of his father's death, but now that he discovered that he still has very important family members alive, his heart unconsciously skipped a beat. The underground mausoleum. His royal father was actually just so near him. He fixed Zhao Yunqin with a deep look for a moment. Without further ado, he threw away the fragment in his hand, turned around, and left with his people. As soon as he left, Zhao Yunqin moved. She ran barefoot out of the bed and repeated the order, quick. This dowager is leaving the palace. Go and prepare the carriages immediately. She could no longer stay in the palace, or else her life would be in danger at any time. When Mo Linyuan brought his men to the mausoleum, the empress dowager had already fled from the palace. When Mo Linyuan heard of this, his brows only scrunched as he threw the thought to the back of his head. Someone, opened the underground mausoleum. This was the resting place of the M.O. family's old ancestors. Under normal circumstances, it was not allowed to be opened. However, M.O. Linyuan's face was terribly gloomy, and the imperial guards could not say anything against him but do as they were told. Finally, at the deepest, darkest part of the mausoleum, he found a man who was trapped in a dungy stone prison. What surprised him was that he was not only one person who occupied the prison a little girl with disheveled hair accompanied him. Mo Linyuan recognized her in an instant. She was the younger sister that he had wanted to take away before but she had betrayed him. The scene before her was very clear she had not gained any benefit from betraying him after all. Her life was worse than that of a beggar in the capital. The sudden arrival of a large group of people caused the two people in the prison to be surprised. The little girl was only half a year younger than Mo Linyuan. When she saw her brother in the flesh, she was stunned. Royal brother? You are my imperial brother, right? Wu royal brother? I am Xiao Dai. After she finished speaking, the man behind her also pushed aside his messy hair and came over. His eyes instantly widened at the sight before Hom. He asked in a trembling voice, Yo Yu are you honor? You honor. Quick, save me. Save your royal father. The people who came in didn't expect that there would be two living people at a place where the dead were supposed to be worshipped. Moreover, it was the astounding identities of the old emperor, who they were told was lying sick in bed, and the imperial princess who had been missing for a long time. What was going on? They all thought. When Mo Linyuan saw them, his soul fell into a trance for a moment. How beautiful and splendid was the life of his royal father in the past. Of the riches and countless beauties around him, he was just one of his insignificant, neglected children. And now, in just a few short years, it was as if the world had turned upside down. His half-brother, princes they were, had all died, and their royal father had become old and thin, without the slightest bit of his elegance and majestic aura left anymore. Chapter 151 Although he'd rather not recall his tragic past, familial kinship still caused Mo Linyuan's emotions to fluctuate a little more than usual. He hurriedly ordered his men to release them, 
but in his heart, he felt very regretful that even though his royal father and sister were alive, his strict, yet pathetic mother would never be able to return. Seeing the light again, M.O. Sherwin was so moved that he wailed pitiful despite onlookers. M.O. Dai wasn't any better, she cried and howled, completely devoid of the proper demeanor a princess should have. For five years, they were locked up. And in these past years, they both had lost all of their imperial bearing, leaving behind only the most basic urge for humans. Originally, they had wanted to cry bitterly with M.O. Linyuan in their embrace. However, the M.O. Linyuan before their eyes was very unfamiliar to them. Especially because of the thick, noble aura that oozed from him, they found themselves unable to find courage to approach him. M.O. Linyuan neither had the intention of getting intimate with them. To him, the person he was closest to, was the Queen Mother. Moreover, he had very little impression of his father. After all, there were only quite a few times this man had appeared in his memories before he was five years old. As for his sister. From the moment she sold him out, he no longer held any affection for her. Saving her now was just a coincidence and a casual act, but the fact that M.O. Dai and his mother had similar expressions still made M.O. Linyuan's attitude towards her soften a lot. M.O. Linyuan waved his hand and had his men clean them up before leaving with a complicated expression on his face. On the way, he heard that the Empress had headed straight for the Zhao Manor the moment she left the palace and was even using heavy weapons to protect her base. He could not help but sneer. The Empress Dowager, who had been acting arrogantly for so many years, did not expect that there would be a day where she would run away with her tail between her legs. It hadn't all been for vain to taste the bitter accidents she had brewed just for him these past few days. When he returned home, he saw that Yi Mu had already woken up. The moment he saw her, his mood instantly eased. During dinner, he slowly told her what had happened today. Ah! Your royal father and imperial sister. Yi Mu was at a loss because in the book, there was no instance in the text that told about M.O. Linyuan's royal father and sister in other words, they should have died before M.O. Linyuan's ascension to the throne. Otherwise, they would have been mentioned if they hadn't. However, these two people who did not appear in the plot suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Yes. In his heart, M.O. Linyuan was still also a little puzzled. I don't know how to face them. There was a rare look of confusion in the youth's eyes. When Yi Mu saw this, she smiled and patted his shoulder. This is a good thing. Isn't it better if there are two more people in the world who are closely related to you? You should be happy. When Mo Linyuan heard this, he pursed his lips. In fact, what he wanted to tell her back is that in this world, he only needed her to be the one close to him. They have been locked up for almost five years I don't know what they have become during that time, but no matter what, I hope you understand that they are not as important as you are. So, you better get well as soon as possible. Only with Yi Mu would Mo Linyuan would speak more than he would. Yi Mu's heart warmed as she nodded vigorously and said without hesitation, In this world, you are also the only and most important person to me. You are still growing, so you should eat more. As she spoke, she picked up a big chicken drumstick for M.O. Linyuan. Seeing that Yi Mu's personality had returned to its former liveliness after waking up, M.O. Linyuan was naturally ecstatic. He felt that he had to work harder and shouldn't always rely on Yi Mu's help. He also wanted to properly protect her happiness. When he thought of this, the worries his father and sister had all brought disappeared. He revealed a somewhat bashful smile and lowered his head to eat the food Yi Mu had given him. Chapter 152 Only after when the food was all wolfed down in hunger did Mo Sherwin and Mo Dai stop eating they were full to the point their stomachs could not handle anymore. Inside the dungeon, they were mercilessly left to starve for a day or two. The food Xiao Yunqin gave them can be even described as something dogs would never touch. Naturally, eating a warm and delicious meal after five years of being captive, they were almost driven to tears of joy. Royal father, tell me, was the Empress Dowager indeed killed by royal brother? Then my royal brother issues the emperor now. After M.O. Sherwin had washed up, he sat there for the first time wearing neat and elegant clothes. Hearing his daughter, he rolled his eyes, it would be terrific if that old demoness had died under my hands. 
He glanced at the guard stationed at the side and was not able to issue an order, locked in silence for a long time. After being viciously humiliated by Zhao Yunqin for five years, Mo Shirwen lost all the imposing aura he had from before. Why you tell me, is the Empress Dowager, that old demon Hao is that woman now? He stumbled with his words, his confidence utterly lacking. Still, the guard was very respectful with his reply. To answer the Emperor, the Empress Dowager has already left the palace. His words frightened the two people at the table terrible they almost jumped in place. What? She's still alive. Both of their faces instantly turned deathly pale. Previously, when Mo Linyuan came to save them, they thought that the old demoness was already dead. Who knew that she was still alive? When Mo Linyuan brought Yi Mu in, he was in time to hear their exclaimed voices and couldn't help but frown. Similarly, when Yimu saw the gloomy face on Emo Linyuan, she comfortingly squeezed Emo Linyuan's hand and gave him a beaming smile, only then did he walk inside. Currently, he had successfully instigated a rotten relationship with the Empress Dowager and a few other noble families. And even if some of the families would find out it wasn't Zhao Yunqin who killed their men, their losses would still be far too high Zhao Yunqin wouldn't be able to compensate them even if she wanted to. On top of that, Zhao Yunqin had already fleed from the palace. With her departure, Mo Linyuan finally felt like a fish in water, much better than when he had been restricted in many things by that old woman before. The moment he entered, Mo Shirwen and Mo Dai quickly surrounded him. With fear and trepidation, they greeted, Royal brother. You are already the emperor. Why didn't you kill that old demoness Zhao Yunqin and help us take revenge? That's right. Zhao Yunqin has imprisoned us for five years. How can you allow her to live? Mo Linyuan's entrance was met with two forces gripping him on the sides, Yi Mu was immediately pushed aside. A whiff of the former, various dishes they had eaten oozed from their bodies, making Mo Linyuan nauseous, suddenly feeling the urge to turn around and leave. The Empress Dowager had already been in power for so long even when you had the throne, father. How could she be easily overthrown after these five years of ruling? Mo Linyuan also didn't want to explain the current situation to them, anyway, don't worry about this matter. If you meet her, just stay away. Mo Linyuan's detached and straightforward personality and the aura as if he didn't want to be touched, finally made the two of them let go of him in embarrassment. Although the person who stood in front of them as still a youngster, his current bearing was not something an ordinary person could contend against let alone the likes of them who had lost their former grace. But, Mo Dai immediately lowered her voice as Mo Linyuan's gaze fell on her. But brother, aren't you the emperor? That's right. Why you are already the emperor? Could it be that you can't eradicate a woman? The old emperor looked at him with a displeased face. Mo Linyuan heard them speak these words in suspicion, a bit of reprimanding in them as if he was being berated for not taking revenge for them. Chapter, 153 Mo Linyuan couldn't help but sneer, that's right, I'm already the emperor. His cold phoenix eyes then swept over the old emperor. But when you were still an emperor, weren't you imprisoned by a woman as well? For five years, might I add. You. Mo Shiwen's face turned red from this direct stab. It's not the s same. She colluded with aristocratic families and caught me off guard. Aye aye. No matter how regal and imposing the old emperor used to be, being locked up for five years took a toll on his thinking as well, making him slow to understand things. Mo Linyuan's little sister, who was only ten years old, was none the better her eyeballs rolled back and forth between them in a frenzy in anxiety. The old emperor was stuttering for a long time, but he couldn't say anything when faced with Mo Linyuan. In the end, he just asked the other guards to leave, which left him a little discouraged. It was at this moment that Mo Dai suddenly pulled his sleeves. He suddenly thought of something and said with a stern expression. If that's the case, then forget it. Even though you are incapable of avenging your father, that's understandable because you are still young. How about this I am not dead yet? And now that I have been freed shouldn't you? Mo Linyuan's gaze instantly turned dangerous. What should I do? The old emperor was suddenly scared stiff by his threatening tone, 
making him forget the earlier lines he had discussed with M.O. Dai. However, M.O. Dai was stubbornly pushing him from behind, urging him to continue. He wiped his neck and stuttered, shouldn't why you return the throne tea to M.E. He clenched his fists to force himself, but his aged face was still filled with fear and uncertainty. After he finished speaking, he held his breath and waited for Mo Linfen to answer. At that moment, both Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan felt that what they heard was too absurd, it couldn't be right. Mo Linyuan even suspected he just listened to the most outrageous thing. The room instantly quieted down. Seeing Mo Linyuan's stormy face, Mo Sherwen was even more afraid. However, he recalled to mind that the person before him was still only eleven years old and his own son. What was there to be afraid of? He braced himself and said, You how old are you even? Can you handle political schemes at your age? Let me tell you, the Empress Dowager's methods are too ruthless. You're definitely not a match for her. So, it would be better to return the authority to me, and I will be able to deal with her properly. You will be like Dyer, protected under my wing. Isn't that easier? Hearing this, M.O. Linyuan could not help but laugh in anger. You. Protect me. You're going to deal with her. Yes. That's right. M.O. Linyuan walked to Yi Mu's side and once again pulled her small hands into his. His phoenix eyes drooped as he scoffed and narrated, I left the palace when I was just five years old. Yet my memories about royal father were unforgettable. If royal father wishes for me to be obedient, then you should be sorely disappointed. He raised his eyes and shot a piercing glance at M.O. Sherwin. The next time I hear you say that I will cut your tongue off myself. Why you, you? M.O. Sherwin was terrified by M.O. Linyuan's brutal words. He hid behind his daughter, looking at him in pure terror. This is outrageous. Where is your filial piety? Did you learn anything at all? M.O. Linyuan coldly harumphed in reply, when we left the palace, I couldn't even recognize a single word. And you want to talk about filial piety? He pulled Yi Mu outside and said the last few words without even turning his head to glance at them. All these years, I only know that those who follow me will live, but those who disobey me will only be fed to dogs. Yi Mu had could feel the killing intent dripping from his words. This was a side of him she had never seen before. Chapter, 154 Mo Linyuan was portrayed as a valiant, decisive, and wise man in the book she had read. Yet, the current Mo Linyuan seemed to be slightly different from that written image. As they walked out of the room, Mo Linyuan let out a long sigh of relief. But when he saw Yi Mu staring at him, he suddenly burst into laughter, the youth's face returning to its usual gentle state. As he lowered his eyes, he looked at her with a bashful smile and asked, Did I just scare you? Yi Mu shook her head, I just think that you and I are quite different. What's different? Then what do you like about me? Yi Mu thought hard about what she envisioned Mo Linyuan to be the astute and imposing Mo Linyuan versus the gentle, always smiling but still mysterious young man displayed in front of her. Suddenly, she felt that the latter was not bad at all. At the very least, he was still able to protect himself in any place that wanted to devour him. You're fine now. I feel relieved to see you become so powerful. M.O. Linyuan couldn't help but smile, becoming for bright. Even if Yi Mu was clearly younger than him, she was always concerned about him like a little adult. He found this just too adorable of her. Obeying his impulses, he reached out to pinch Yi Mu's chubby cheeks. You don't need to care about those two anymore. If they don't behave, then you can just directly retaliate. Yi Mu felt that such a statement was a little strange. Aren't they your family members? Moreover they shouldn't be looking for trouble with me, right? After all, during the encounter, they didn't even spare her a glance. A cold light flashed through Mo Linyuan's eyes. Still he smiled and said, before, I didn't think so too, but now, I'm a little unsure. Meanwhile, inside the room on the other side, M.O. Dai was quickly calming the frightened M.O. Sherwin down. Even she herself still had some lingering fear inside her body. Although on the surface M.O. Linyuan was speaking in a very gentle manner, his words hinted his murderous intent, causing them to tremble with terror. 
if they didn't listen, would he really cut off their tongues? Her hopes of M.O. Sherwin becoming the emperor again had been shattered especially her dream of becoming a princess once more. It would be a lie to say that she was not disappointed, but M.O. Sherwin felt even more displeased. This was because the previous M.O. Linyuan was, in his impression, a little boy whom was very easy to control. But now, why did he suddenly become covered in thorns? Ugh that unfilial son! He is just as disobedient as his birth mother. M.O. Dai secretly rolled her eyes, but she then asked timidly, then what do we do now? Royal brother isn't willing to hand over the throne, we. M.O. Sherwin rolled his eyes, it's all right. If he doesn't want to, we can do it slowly. After some time has passed, royal father will go see some old officials. I don't believe no one will support my claim to the throne. Hearing that, M.O. Dai still wasn't a bit optimistic. She thought for a while, then said royal father, with royal brother being so greedy, he definitely won't let us get our hands on him easily. How about this, the next time royal brother comes, how about you ask him to have me reclaim my title as a princess again? This way, with my identity, he'll be able to help you to succeed even faster. The old emperor was slightly moved by the idea, but when he recalled how Imo Linyuan had just threatened them then and there, his body trembled almost imperceptibly. Well talk about this later. He said. When Mo Dai heard this, she understood he was speaking from her. She was a bit indignant, even more when she thought of the little girl Mo Linyuan had brought with him. I wonder who that little girl with royal brother is? She didn't even do a ceremonial bow when she saw us. Little girl. The old emperor thought about it and realized that he really had neglected such a person, so Mo Dai pushed the thought further. Royal father. I am royal brother's blood sister, but he won't even spare me kindness. He's only adamant on holding that girl's hand royal father, do you think at this rate royal brother will still allow other females to become princesses? Chapter, 155. The old emperor sat up straight when he heard this. He dares. Do not fret, you will be the sole princess of the M.O. country. However, you must properly work hard to make your royal brother happy. After all, with what you did to him before, it is only reasonable for him to be still livid at you. When M.O. Dai heard this, she thoughtfully nodded. So, her royal brother was still blaming her for the past. In the next day, Wen Feng, who had been injured by Yi Mu before, returned after recuperating at the Heaven's Temple. Both M.O. Linyuan and Yi Mu were present when he came back. Yi Mu's eyes widened, not expecting she had injured Wen Feng and the people in the temple. What more, Mo Linyuan did not even tell her about it. Are they all right? Yi Mu asked with some unease. Mo Linyuan patted her hand soothingly. Don't worry. I already sent someone to deal with this matter earlier. You didn't kill anyone in the temple. Yi Mu remembered the night of the massacre and her mood dropped immediately. Mo Linyuan asked Wen Feng, what was the situation back then? How could you suddenly get injured by Muir? Wen Feng recalled for a moment and said, at that time, this subordinate told the silent Buddhist master that you were at the foot of the mountain and wanted to take the Miss Yi away. The silent Buddhist master was silent for a while, but not long after, a huge fire broke inside the room, and this subordinate hurried over to check, only to discover that Miss Yi had woken up. The silent Buddhist master was almost killed, and this subordinate was anxious to stop her. Yi Mu looked at him with blinking eyes. I'm so sorry I don't remember anything. It was as if a blanket of amnesia was wrapped around her. So, she felt a little guilty towards this master she had yet to meet. I'm all right. When Fong gave her a gentle smile, however, I came back this time with a message from the silent Buddhist master. He asked me to tell His Majesty that Miss Yi had gone berserk because of the mixed and chaotic qi inside her body. He also said that if Miss Yi feels the stirrings of her murderous intent come to light and become unbearable, you can seek him. Yi Mu nodded, yes, I should go find him. I heard you say that he woke me up, but I injured him. I should apologize. However, Mo Linyuan felt that something was amiss. Although he might have died that time if Yimu hadn't woken up in time, Yimu's sudden awakening was too much of a strange occurrence. 
Still, he didn't stop Yi Mu from finding the master in the future. He only told her to bring Wen Feng along. Suddenly, a loud noise came from outside the door. Royal brother, are you there? Mo Linyuan frowned subconsciously. He remembered he had left them yesterday with a threat, yet she still came looking for him today. She was too ambitious. After Wen Feng returned, he was able to hear what had happened in his absence, and hurriedly led his men away from the scene. Not long after Mo Linyuan gave the order for the passage to be opened, a young lady donning a blue palace dress came in holding a box of food in her arms. This time, Mo Dai's glance first fell on Yi Mu. Furthermore, when she saw Yi Mu sitting so comfortably next to Mo Linyuan, a tinge of jealousy fired inside her heart. She immediately tried to repress the feeling away. Royal brother. Mo Dai's smile was that of dripping flattery, but it was a pity that her current skinny face had high cheekbones. Her smile did not look cute at all, but it was even a bit horrifying. This is a soup that I cooked with my own hands. You've worked hard in dealing with the affairs of the country. Please drink this to replenish your tired body. Chapter 156 Mo Linyuan remained still. He only narrowed his eyes and asked, Who allowed you to rush about the palace so randomly? Mo Dai was stunned silly with his unfriendly attitude, but when she thought about how she was Mo Linyuan's sole sibling left, her attitude became more forceful and shameless. I am your sister. Why you why can she sit next to you while I am not even allowed to come see you? If Mo Dai hadn't included Yi Mu in this ordeal and dragged her down, Mo Linyuan wouldn't have done anything. But now that she included Yi Mu for comparison, this made Mo Linyuan incredibly furious. Sister. A sister won't sell out her own brother, he coldly remarked. The former empress was already dead, and Mo Dai being alive was just a stroke of luck. Back then, the empress risked her life to save the former emperor, and if it wasn't for Mo Dai, the people who were loyal to the empress wouldn't have died for vain at all. Mo Linyuan's icy words instantly caused Mo Dai's face to turn pale, while Yi Mu's eyes also widened. No wonder Mo Linyuan never talked about this little sister of his she had actually done such a thing. Mo Dai bit her lower lip. Sure enough, her royal brother still remembered her betrayal before, which explains his hatred, but she was still so young then. How could she be willing to leave the palace where she had lived all her life and suffer? She didn't want to give up the luxury. What else could she do other than to sell her brother to please the Empress Dowager? Isn't it human nature to take advantage of an opportunity to avoid danger? Her eyes filled with tears as she said aggrievedly, but no matter what, I am still sister. The Empress is already dead, and all our siblings have also followed her in the afterlife. Now only the two of us are left with each other, can't you just forget about the past and start over with me? Dependent on you. You're wrong. Mo Linyuan looked at her face, I will support you for the sake of my deceased mother and fellow countrymen. However, refrain from interfering with my life. I have already found someone worthy of me, so it is not necessary to be part of mine. As he spoke, he pulled Yi Mu's hand and smiled. I don't care about you. But inside this Mo Imperial Palace, I hope you will be smart headed and keep your distance from Yi Mu. Otherwise, I will take back everything I gave you. His decisive attitude immediately shattered all of Mo Dai's hope. How could he do this? She was clearly a princess. In the end, the food she brought for Mo Linyuan fell to the ground as Mo Dai fled in frustration. And when she thought of Yi Mu, who was dressed extravagantly and looked even more eye catching than a real princess, her eyes showed unwillingness and hatred. The only person she could rely on now was the old emperor. If only Mo Linyuan and Zhao Yunqin had fought to the point where both were severely injured, then she would never have let go of this opportunity. There was also this Yi Mu who came out from nowhere. Who even knew where this bastard came from? Was she even worthy to steal her position as princess? After Mo Linyuan dealt with Mo Dai, Yi Mu could not help but ask, Do you really have no good feelings towards this little sister of yours? Her temperament is bad, so stay away from her in the future. Yi Mu listened and opted to look through Mo Linyuan's paperwork. Although he was feeling a bit weathered, he still had the responsibility of dealing with national affairs. 
And before the night could pass, Yi Mu discovered that there were some papers that were neglected to the side. She curiously took it out and read it. The corn is full of locusts. Mo Linyuan nodded. She opened another one. This time, written on it were proposed reforms to the imperial examinations. Chapter 157 Seeing her open the letters he had deliberately ignored, Mo Linyuan said with a slight headache, the ruler of a country handles too many matters. I don't know much about remediating natural disasters, so rather than making the wrong decision by myself, I thought, why not deal with it later and discuss it with the six tribes? Although Mo Linyuan is young, he still knows himself quite well. He isn't the kind of person who would try to be reckless. Yi Mu asked him with great interest, then what are you good at? Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes and smiled. I seem to be well versed in the art of bargaining things to my benefit. As he said this, he could not help but feel somewhat proud of himself. When Yi Mu saw him raise his chin and his almond shaped eyes carrying a glimmer as he smiled, she thought he was even more handsome than a celestial child in the sky. In the end, she couldn't help but pinch his cheeks. You still have time to be pleased with yourself, huh? You don't look like a child at all. Mo Linyuan quickly evaded. Seeing that no one was around, he covered his face and looked at her accusingly. He then instead pinched Yi Mu's face out of adoration. How can he allow Yi Mu to tweak his face? He was so much older than her. In the end, he was still young, so to cover it up, he lowered his head and continued to read the papers. It was just that the dispute over power techniques that had previously been very clear in his sea of consciousness now looked like a mess, and he couldn't make sense of it even after half a day. Yi Mu didn't notice his abnormality and smiled, you're so smart, you can still study now. Although the Empress Dowager's strength is at its weakest, the three great families are still in power. I don't dare hand over the vital position to the imperial tutor so quickly. Yi Mu stroked her chin thoughtfully. So, you want to be diligent in your education, but can't find someone you trust. Right, even if it's my grandfather's house, there still poses a lot of inconveniences. Then, it's done. Yi Mu puffed out her chest and patted it, roaring, do you see it? Since masters are too scarce, you should open your eyes to a new one. Mo Linyuan stared at her for a long time, and finally let out a faint smile. I don't see one. What are you talking saying? It's me. Yi Mu angrily pressed down the paper in his hands, and looked at him with her round eyes, I know a lot of things. Oh. Seeing her approach, Mo Linyuan teased her with interest. But you're only seven years old. How could you know so much? Yi Mu rolled her eyes, could it be that you've never heard of divine bestowment? She pointed at herself and said with firmness, I am someone bestowed by the heavens. The heavens have ordained me to help you. Mo Linyuan couldn't help but laugh. With her chubby face so close to his, she was so adorable that he wanted to take a bite out of her. Then, you're an expert in the matters of this world. That's guaranteed. Yi Mu placed her hands on her waist. Mo Linyuan drew closer to her. On the bed, the two of them sat very close to each other, separated only by a short tea table. Then tell me, will I defeat the Empress Dowager in the end? Definitely. Then, how did I defeat Her Majesty? Mo Linyuan was only joking around he didn't expect Yi Mu to think about it seriously. Hmm in the end, the Empress Dowager had an affair with someone whom you were able to hold in captivity. And to protect that person, she handed over her authority as a regent. But that person's identity is not in the book. Not in the book. Yi Mu, who quietly said these words, covered her mouth with both hands as he looked at Mo Linyuan with unblinking eyes. He probably didn't hear anything. Right? A book? Mo Linyuan heard it. Yi Mu stuttered, ah, book scholars tell that we should not reveal fate so casually. Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes. So, you're not going to tell me? Yi Mu shook her head. I won't say it even if you beat me to death. It is easier to accept if they rever her as someone from the heavens who descended to the mortal world to mentor the emperor. Chapter 158 Mo Linyuan was adamant about letting her go. 
Feeling playful, he moved his hand and pushed the tea table to the side. Really? I think you don't know either. The Heaven's Bestowal, or something like that little girl, have you been reading too many books these days? Of course not. Yi Mu denied fervently and solemnly said, you should believe I'm someone bestowed by the heavens. Mo Linyuan's smile became even more amused. Then I'll believe you when you tell me who the Empress Dowager's man is. Or, even better, you can even tell me about this book. Aya why do I feel so hungry all of a sudden, I think I should go eat. After Yi Mu finished speaking, she hastily jumped up from the bed like a released carp. But when she was just was about to escape, her short stature was stealthily pulled back from behind by M.O. Linyuan. Trying to run again. The young man's laughter rang in her ears, and at the same time, his hands naughtily scratched her sides. Are you going to talk or not? Are you sure you don't want to say anything? Yi Mu's entire body quivered as she released an uncontrollable laugh, twisting her body into a fried dough twist. I'm warning you. She said between laughter, if you continue to be like this, independent Illinois make a move. Oh. Unfazed, M.O. Linyuan continued to bully her. A deep smile appeared on his picturesque face as he listened to her cheerful laughter. Then do it. Didn't the heavens send them to help me? Are you willing to hurt me then? Yi Mu's eyes brimmed with tears from laughter as she glared fiercely at him with wide eyes. Wait for me to tell you don't force me. Ha ha ha, or I will attack. The two children fooled around until M.O. Linyuan wholly suppressed Yi Mu. Although they were plying around, they suddenly became solemn at this moment. Are you honestly telling the truth about you being bestowed by the heavens to help me? M.O. Linyuan looked into Yi Mu's eyes. After their bouts of laughter, they were now serious. Seeing that M.O. Linyuan had finally released her, Yi Mu let out a sigh of relief and replied, How can I still be a fake? I truly came here to help you. Then what you just said is true. Yi Mu recalled that most of the recent occurrences strayed from the novel's actual plot nevertheless, she garnered differences are likely especially with her meddling. Ultimately she said, they should be close enough. There was a ghost of a light that floated within M.O. Linyuan's eyes. Finally, he said softly, I trust you too. What? From tomorrow onwards, you will teach me. Are you telling me him to be the emperor's tutor? Yi Mu's eyes lit up. Mo Linyuan went nearer, and as if doing a mock ceremony, he extended a finger and flicked her forehead as he chuckled. No, you'll just be reading with me. Oh that's fine, I guess. But regardless of whether Yi Mu was willing or not, she had become the son of heaven's companion with just a touch of his hand. After all, for now, she was too young to be the emperor's tutor. In any case, when he was studying, he had the little Yi Mu to accompany him, finding this setup extremely pleasing. Although he wasn't expecting much, he later discovered that Yi Mu was indeed more mysterious than he had imagined. Although she was unknowledgeable in a lot of areas and didn't know how to compete for power, the things that she taught of were things that Mo Linyuan had never heard of before. They were genuinely profound ideas. As a result, Mo Linyuan was in high spirits as he studied. At the same time, with other matters no longer being disturbed by the Empress Dowager, everything went smoothly. The previous, gruesome battle had considerably dampened the Empress Dowager's spirit. Other aristocratic families were also intimidated and restrained themselves so that it became easier for them to sit in the imperial court. Although the Empress Dowager still had the power to assist the Emperor, her escape from the palace significantly reduced her authority, giving Mo Linyuan more time to grow and enrich his mind. Chapter, 159 A year passed quickly. Mo Linyuan did the math problems that were only available in the postmodern era, exclaiming in wonder at the magic of multiplication, subtraction, and division. In this era, there were calculations, but they were too troublesome. If numbers can be manipulated as easy as this, then he believed addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division would bring great convenience to the people. The imperial tutor previously always said that he wanted to reform the imperial examinations and depose of the myriad of family techniques so that only one standard will be left. I felt that it wasn't appropriate and never agreed. But now, the idea seems wise. 
Regardless of whether these techniques are supreme and came from the top hundred, their practicality is too low. Although the study of character is essential, one still has to emphasize learning to use it to learn. His eyes lit up slightly. It's like arithmetic. For it to be used in every way, I believe we should include it in the next imperial examinations. Yi Mu, of course, had no objections to this reform. She nodded and smiled, this thing is simple I can write textbooks for it. In this era, there were both papermaking and printing techniques. Writing books is still very convenient, but... Yi Mu touched her chin and said, it's just that the existing papermaking techniques are either too expensive or too troublesome. Furthermore, they are too fragile and are not suitable for writing. How about this, I'll try to improve the papermaking techniques when I have time. Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows and smiled. May I ask Master Yi if there is anything she doesn't know? Yi Mu had a headache as she pointed at the paper on the table. My brain is quite straightforward. I can't read between the lines, but I do know quite a lot about practical techniques. Mo Linyuan chuckled. This little thing was not modest at all. He said, arithmetic is good, but I feel that physics doesn't seem to be of much use. You don't believe it's necessary to involve in the imperial examinations, do you? To study how water forms into the air and then condensing to frost what use was there to it when people mostly relied on their physical strength and martial arts. Yi Mu was like a knowledge shell. In her era, everyone wanted to learn from her, so naturally, she was able to teach him a little this time. Seeing Mo Linyuan looking at her, she let out a snort and said the next sentence profoundly, remember, no matter what it is, learning it will be useful. This sentence made Mo Linyuan's heart skip a beat. Learning anything is useful. He suddenly understood, as if he had recognized a new logic. Of course. Yi Mu took out the wheel that she had prepared earlier and waved it in front of him, I'll show you the power of physics today. Just observe how handy this little thing is. Just as the two were about to delve into the matter, someone came to report. Your Majesty, something bad happened. The Father Emperor ran away from the Hall of Virtue. Over the past year, Mo Sherwin had tried to regain his power many times. He had once sat in the Emperor's seat and experienced a kind of glory no one could easily attain, and after being fiercely bullied for five years, he became even more eager to reclaim it the moment he came out. Besides, there were people from powerful families to add oil to the fire, making M. O. Sherwin, even more, daring to run away. Even if the Empress Dowager had always wanted to capture M. O. Sherwin, M. O. Linyuan had never so much as spared an effort to protect him. However, could he let such a person become another trouble? Chapter 160 After a year, Yi Mu had become accustomed to M. O. Linyuan's inner cruel side, so thinking of a good strategy, she whispered into M. O. Linyuan's ear. How about we make a commotion? Let's find a group of people pretending to be the Empress Dowager's people and save him. With his lingering fear of the Empress Dowager, I'm sure he would be frightened till he would refuse to run away again. She broke into a wicked laugh when she thought of M. O. Shiwen's panic-stricken appearance. Matters now are sensitive. Therefore M. O. Sherwen should not be allowed to make things worse. As M. O. Linyuan listened, his eyes brightened slightly. That's a good idea. He thought of it for a while and then asked Wen Foam to come forward to say a few words in his ear. Yi Mu stared at M. O. Linyuan from the side he was now twelve and a half years old. Although he was still only a child, his eyes held too much heaviness and maturity that did not belong to his age. Nevertheless, his delicate, Slightly raised chin and phoenix eyes were still pleasing to the eye. Yi Mu couldn't help thinking, why did such a person die so early in his forties? After Mo Linyuan was able to issue the command, he saw the Yi Mu, who was waiting, looking at him fixedly he immediately thought her little appearance too indescribably cute. What are you thinking? He looked at Yi Mu and could not refrain from stretching out his hand to pinch her little button nose. Oh, nothing. I just feel a little stuffy in my chest recently. It must be from the approaching the full moon again. Yi Mu subconsciously touched her nose and whispered. When Mo Linyuan heard this, his eyes dimmed. Every full moon, Yi Mu would wake up feeling extraordinarily ill-tempered and unpleasant. 
Even if the silent Buddhist master can help her suppress it when they are in the temple, the thought that she was at the control of others made Mo Linyuan feel uneasy. Then he'll take you to the temple. Remember, although the silent Buddhist monk is a close disciple of the late great monk, you should be on guard against him don't believe him so easily. Yimu nodded, don't worry, it's okay he'll be back soon. Mo Linyuan nodded and personally sent Yimu off as far as the gates. Her departure from the palace to the temple, she was accompanied by a large number of soldiers. Everyone knew that Mo Linyuan held great importance on this girl with unknown origin since every time she goes away from the palace Missouri Linyuan doubles the guards guarding her. Here again. When Yimu arrived at the temple, the monk came out from the depths of the jungle, carrying a medicine basket on his back. As a powerful monk, his appearance was otherworldly his thin eyebrows, paired with an out-of-place, compassionate expression, still made him look unforgettable as if he was some mystical creature. Yimu nodded, I'm going to trouble you again. Somehow, I feel the murderous aura in my body is getting heavier. Every attack is stronger than the last. She said, keeping a close eye on the monk. After placing the basket down, the silent Buddhist master just sighed, that is because you accumulate too much external force in your body, and the internal force of this poor monk that is placing in your body can only mildly play a stabilizing role. But it can certainly not be as strong as stopping it completely, so for you to experience that kind of feeling is expected. He paused, then added in a quiet voice, of course, with your meridians far from being restored to their healthy state, you are not able to use your internal force. He then gestured, follow this poor monk to the backyard. The poor monk will help you concentrate and calm down. Yimu nodded when suddenly a monk hurriedly ran towards them. Master, master, it's not good. A pregnant pilgrim fainted in the Buddhist temple. What? The silent Buddhist master's expression changed, subconsciously looked at Yimu. Yimu waved her hand, it's all right, you go and see her first, I can endure it for the time being. Chapter, 161 Mm. The silent master hurried away, and after thinking for a moment, Yi Mu followed him. Currently, the Buddhist temple filled to the brim with people. One of them was a young woman kneeling on the ground with a child in her womb, about seven or eight months pregnant. In her case, she should have been moved to the inner rooms immediately, but a group of people stopped at the entrance of the Buddhist temple, blocking the monks. After a basin of water poured down her body, the pregnant woman woke up and saw the leading lady sneer. Well, I finally found you. And look, your belly is already swelling. It seems that it will take some work to kill him. The pilgrim next to her could not look down, holding the bead saying, Amitpa, no matter what the grudge is, it should not harm the children. You have committed iniquity. Bah! The rioting woman stood in front of the slave and cocked her head. She was our concubine who ran away secretly and got pregnant with another man. This seed is evil and filthy and should not stay. After she said this, there was a moment of silence. Many women came here to offer incense, but often, the more women there were, the more upright they were among other women. When they heard that the pregnant woman was a concubine, they looked a little disdainful. So, they only watched her being dragged away by the noblewoman, and all the people around her gradually turned away. Sweat poured off at the pregnant woman's forehead, and abdominal pain made her speechless. She could only look at the people around her with eager eyes, but no one dared to help her. Stop! A voice interrupted and sounds of footsteps approached the scene. All the pilgrims around respected him, and made way for him to enter the Buddhist temple. Silent Buddhist Master the master is here audible whispers circulated the place. Looking at the place full of people, he frowned and asked, who is making trouble here? Knowing the silent master's excellent reputation, the rioting lady frowned impatiently at the unexpected disturbance, master, I don't want any trouble. I just wanted to catch this runaway concubine back. The silent master looked at the pale-faced woman who was in pain and muttered, but she's about to give birth. Birth? The lady furiously responded, she eloped with someone and is pregnant with an adulterer's child. This child must not be born. And added. The pregnant woman grimaced, enduring the pain of an incoming birth while facing the crisis of life and death of both her and her child's life. 
But then, the amniotic sac in her womb burst. She struggled in pain and cried out to the people around. She couldn't even say a word and can only groan in utter distress. Because of a taboo, the monks took a step back and said, This temple is sacred. We can't let this woman give birth here. The lady exclaimed, Master. I shall take away this woman now. Otherwise, she will have defiled the holy temple of the Buddhist monks. The silent master who has always been kind to others turned stubborn and refused to let go. Her sack has erupted. If she doesn't go to labor now, the child will die. He should not exist in this world. There was a flash of cold light in the lattice eyes, and even if the master is knowledgeable and highly respected, you can't intervene in everything. This concubine is property of another house. Please get out of the way. Chapter 162 After she finished speaking, the woman pushed past the silent master and walked out of the temple. She was right a concubine was considered the property of her husband. If he tried to intervene, the law wouldn't stand by his side. But. Suddenly, a childlike voice broke the silence, wait a moment Yi Mu walked slowly towards the married women and said, saving a person's life is more admirable than building a seven-floor pagoda. Since we're at a Buddhist temple right now, you aren't allowed to kill anyone. You can deal with the matter of her escaping later your priority right now should be helping this woman give birth first. Many people didn't recognize Yi Mu when she appeared however, based on her luxurious clothes, they knew she had an extraordinary status. The married woman considered her proposal for a few minutes before she asked patiently, who are you to stick your nose into the affairs of one of the three great families? Yi Mu touched her nose, one of the three great families. Wow, that's impressive. As for who I am. She thought seriously about it for a moment and realized that she currently doesn't have an impressive identity yet. Having nothing to lose, she put her hands on her hips and said, Don't you know? I'm His Majesty's study companion. Everyone looked at her in surprise when she said that. As it turned out, she was the one whom the young emperor highly valued. The young emperor had even sealed off the road leading from the imperial palace to the temple for her. Even though she was merely his study companion, the emperor treated her like she was a princess. The married woman's domineering attitude instantly disappeared when she heard that Yi Mu was the emperor's study companion. A year ago, the Zhong family lent the empress dowager 100 suicide soldiers. After all the internal conflicts and struggle, all the great masters in the inner palace had died. As a result of this incident, Zhong family's strength was knocked down a few notches. Their ancestors implored them repeatedly to conceal their strength so they can bide their time. They followed their ancestors' advice and didn't clash directly with the young emperor. But what should they do now that one of the young emperor's people was bullying them? The married woman frowned, Based on your status, you still don't have the right to stick your nose into the Zhong family's affairs. She's a runaway concubine, you have no power to decide how the Zhong family should deal with this matter. A runaway concubine? Yi Mu shook her head. The woman has a speech impairment, right? Don't bully other people just because they can't talk. The Zhong family is influential and rich, so why would a runaway concubine from the Zhong family stay in the city? Wouldn't she leave the city to avoid being discovered? How could she still have the time to come to the Buddhist temple to pray and burn incense? I don't care. You are not allowed to take her away before we confirm her identity. The crowd was amazed by her keen observation skills. The monks didn't dare to touch her as they watched the scene unfold quietly. What are you all standing idly by for? Yi Mu swept her gaze across the monks in the room. Aren't you going to take her to the backyard to deliver the baby? But, a young novice monk suddenly spoke up, but this is a sacred temple how could she deliver a baby here? The young monk was at a complete loss. Yi Mu glanced at the silent master and asked, Do you think so too? The silent master smiled gratefully at Yi Mu, but he didn't reply. It was rare for him to smile, and when he smiled, he appeared more handsome and charming than usual. His pupils in his eyes were bright and clear. Send her to the backyard, I will personally help her deliver, he said without the slightest hesitation. Master. Go quickly. Yes. 
The married woman was furious when she saw how easily the silent master had snatched away the woman from her. She quickly ordered her servants to chase after them. The silent master originally wanted to help, but he was pushed aside by Yi Mu. Leave this to me, you should go help her. The silent master was anxious because he knew the pregnant woman was in a dire state. Before he left, he lowered his head and whispered to Yi Mu, be careful and remember that no matter what happens, you cannot use force. Suicide Soldiers Soldiers Sent to Die Chapter 163 when the crowd thought the silent master was only persuading them not to fight, but Yi Mu knew very well that the silent master was afraid she would kill them. Don't worry. Yi Mu glanced at the other party with ill intentions and said, I can still stall them without resorting to force. After Yi Mu reassured him, the silent master turned around and left. Seeing the silent master and his monks had taken away the woman they planned to capture, the noble lady chased after them in anger. However, she was once again stopped by Yi Mu. Move aside. The noble lady pointed her finger at Yi Mu with a scowl on her face and said, This matter isn't something you can stick your nose into. Don't act all high and mighty just because His Majesty dotes on you, you're not the ruler of M.O. country. Yi Mu glared at the noble lady with her hands at her hips. You're not the ruler of M.O. country either. Did you construct this temple? Who allowed you to bring your people to a public venue to commit murder? Did you construct or found it a mo country? Her words had completely put the noble lady at fault. The noble lady was furious she couldn't help but push Yi Mu away forcefully. Get up and stop spouting nonsense. No matter how you justify yourself, I'm still the person who is correct. When Yi Mu was pushed back by the noble lady, Yi Mu took a few steps backward before she sat on the ground. The rim of Yi Mu's eyes turned red as she looked up at the noble lady. You're bullying me. Yi Mu had suddenly changed her tactics and suddenly accused the other party of bullying her. I didn't. I only pushed you. You. You pushed me. Yi Mu bit her lips, her delicate and adorable face was filled with grievances as she looked at the other party. I was just trying to reason with you. Wu Wu I'm telling brother emperor. You the noble lady was enraged because usually, she was the one who would throw an unreasonable fit. She never expected there to be someone even more shameless than her. She had just pushed Yi Mu lightly. At this time, the imperial guard standing guard outside the temple rushed in when they heard the commotion and surrounded Yi Mu in a protective circle. The imperial guards stared unkindly at the noble lady that was causing a scene. Young lady, are you alright? Zi Su never expected anyone would dare to bully Yi Mu at Tian Shu Temple. Yi Mu covered her face with her hands and cried grievously. This noble lady from the Zhong family is bullying people Wuwush hit me. Everyone had seen her hit me. Everyone in the temple glanced at each other, it was indeed true that the noble lady was the one who hit the young lady first. Seeing that more and more imperial guards arrived inside the temple, the noble lady became slightly nervous. She didn't want to cause a huge commotion over the matter, so she glared harshly at Yi Mu and shouted unhappily, Humph! Let's leave! The noble lady and her servants quickly left the temple. They were afraid that Yi Mu would prevent them from leaving, so they left as fast as they could like they were being chased after by ghosts. Seeing that the people had left, Yi Mu removed her hands from her face, revealing a clean and tearless face. She didn't cry. Zi Su looked at her helplessly. Young lady, please get up, the floor is cold. If His Majesty found out that you sat on the cold floor, he would be very angry. Oh. Yi Mu stood up quickly and snorted. She's still too young to compete with me. She can't outcompete me when it comes to competing who is more shameless. Yes, young lady is correct. Young lady, do you want me to teach them a lesson since they're being so unreasonable? Yi Mu thought about it and then waved her hand. Forget it, I'm too lazy to deal with them. You can go attend your own matters I'm leaving now. Understood, young lady. Yi Mu turned around and ran in the direction the silent master had left. As soon as she stepped into the backyard, she could smell a pungent bloody smell. The smell made her even more restless. 
she forced her discomfort down and walked towards where all the monks were standing. Except for the two monks inside assisting, all the other monks were standing outside. Yi Mu asked one of the monks, how is the situation? The young monk replied, the situation is not good the pregnant woman doesn't have enough strength to push the baby out and she keeps bleeding. Both the pregnant woman and her baby are in danger. Yi Mu pondered for a moment before she said something to the young monk. The young monk widened his eyes in shock as he asked, that thing is it really useful? Chapter, 164 You'll know after you finish preparing it, Yi Mu answered before she walked into the room. Yi Mu frowned as soon as she entered the room. It was like she was in an oven the room was very humid. Open the window to ventilate the room. Shell suffocate if the room is too humid. It was summer, but because they were afraid other people might see the woman giving birth, they closed the door and windows tightly. However, human life was priceless, so they put the matter of her innocence aside first. No one questioned Yi Mu's order because of how dignified and imposing her voice sounded. The young monks in the room scrambled to open the windows, allowing the mountain breeze to blow in. The woman in labor was about to enter a coma from all the heat when she finally breathed in a mouthful of fresh air. The fresh air revived her. But the silent master was still frowning. During this era, the midwives only performed a guiding role and very few actually used knives to deliver babies. Although the silent master had medical expertise, he had never learned the art of delivering babies, so he didn't know where to start. What's wrong? Yi Mu asked. The silent master furrowed his brows and responded, she can't push the baby out and she also won't stop bleeding. If it continues like this, then both the woman and the baby will die. He said to the woman, you need to persist, the ginseng soup will be ready soon. You need to hold on. The woman gratefully looked at the silent master. Then, she pointed at herself and then at her stomach, pleading at them silently. Yi Mu immediately understood what she was trying to say. She was trying to say that if only one of them could be saved, then she wanted them to save her baby. The silent master obviously also understood the meaning behind her actions, but he stayed silent. When he saw that the ginseng soup arrived, he quickly received it over from the monk and began feeding the woman. Yi Mu stood silently by the side as she watched the scene. The silent master was carefully feeding the woman because ginseng soup was a pregnant woman's life-saving medicine. The white cloth was stained with more blood, but the expression on the silent master's face was never as pure and holy as it was now. After the woman finished drinking the ginseng soup, she seemed to have recovered some energy and continued to push. Although the baby was finally coming out, the woman began bleeding a lot not long after. Not good. Beats of sweat formed on the silent master's forehead as he became anxious. He wanted to help her, but he didn't know where to begin. Yi Mu was also anxious as she looked at the blood-stained woman. Why didn't the thing she asked for arrived yet? Just as she was thinking this, a young monk barged into the room. He had prepared the thing she wanted and delivered it to her. It was sausage casing that had been sterilized by salt water and then sewn together. At first glance, it appeared similar to what the modern time TT looked like. Shami was holding it and didn't know what to do. Seeing that the woman in labor was dying, the silent master had no choice but to pick up a pair of scissors. What are you doing? Yi Mu was startled by his sudden action and quickly stopped him. The silent master pursed his lips as he saw the pregnant woman's pulse get weaker and weaker. She said she wants to save the baby. Yi Mu let out a long sigh of relief before she said, you can cut her, but don't give her a C-section. She pointed at a spot under the woman and said, you can cut a little over here, then you have to reach in and pull the baby out quickly. You have to do it quickly because I have a method to save her. At such a critical juncture, the silent master shouldn't have listened to a young girl's opinion. But seeing how serious she appeared, he couldn't help but replied quickly, it's useless. If we pull the baby out, she will bleed to death. Therefore, it was better if they perform a C-section, that way, the baby won't suffocate and die. You have to trust me. Yi Mu pointed at the sausage casing and said urgently, you have to pull the baby out first, and then stuff the sausage casing in to stop the bleeding. I'm not sure if ITLL work, 
but it's worth a try if it can save her life. Yi Mu's calm composure made the silent master fall silent. He frowned as he looked at the sausage casing and unexpectedly agreed. Okay. Let's give it a try. Chapter 165 He followed her instructions and cut along the birth canal and then reached in to pull the baby out. His hands were covered in blood, but his expression remained solemn and dignified. What he was doing right now was considered to be filthy in this era. Most men would choose to stay far away from this kind of scene. Even under such circumstances, only the silent master remained completely focused as he wholeheartedly tried to save both lives. Yimu recalled how the people outside had evaluated the silent master's character she felt that the silent master was a good person. She had been suspicious of the silent master as the person who caused her to suddenly wake up and turn crazy. However, her suspicion of him eased slightly now. Just when she was lost in her thoughts, the baby was finally pulled out. Yi Mu quickly went over to help. She stuffed the sausage casing in and slowly but surely, the bleeding stopped. Even she was surprised that it had worked so well. It's useful. I didn't expect it to actually work. Yi Mu's eyes lit up. She learned this method from a battlefield doctor. However, she had never tried the method herself, so she was very surprised when she saw that it worked. The silent master couldn't help but let out a long sigh of relief when he saw that the comatose woman was no longer in life-threatening danger. The baby started crying after he gently hit the baby's butt. The baby's eyes were tightly closed on his purplish red face. His appearance was ugly when he started crying. The silent master and Yimu glanced at each other with a smile while the baby cried loudly. Before today, there was an invisible wall between them. But after saving the woman and the baby today, the invisible wall seemed to have become thinner. The silent master was holding the baby when he suddenly bowed at Yi Mu. Thank you. It was thanks to you that the baby was able to survive. You also prevented him from being an orphan. Yi Mu relaxed and waved her hand. I didn't do anything much I had given some advice. As for you, it's best if you change your clothes first. But the silent master didn't get up. There is another matter. The silent master appeared somewhat ashamed as he said, this humble monk hopes that you can reveal your blood clotting method to the world. Women are risking their lives by giving birth. Countless women die during childbirth. If this method is useful to other people, then it can save numerous lives. Yi Mu was stunned by the request. She didn't expect the young monk to be so thoughtful. But since she was doing a good deed, she waved her hand generously and said, Okay, then I'll have to depend on you to spread the word. After all, I'm still a kid, so other people won't believe me if I tell them. When the silent master heard this, the tips of his ears turned red. He was a monk would other people believe him if he tells them this. In short, the matter was finally settled. However, because she had to stay a few days in Tianshu Temple, Yi Mu didn't force the silent master to reward her for her meritorious deed. Seeing that he was tired, she allowed him to rest first. In the evening, the two of them ate a vegetarian meal in the temple. Yi Mu asked the silent master, You're a good person. At first, I thought you wouldn't allow the pregnant woman to give birth in the temple. You should have seen the other people's reactions when you allowed her to give birth here. They were looking at us like we were blaspheming Buddha. It wasn't just the Buddhist worshippers that disagreed with them, even the other monks disagreed with the way the silent master had handled the situation. After all, they considered the temple to be a holy and sacred place. The silent master put down his chopsticks and solemnly said, they are in the wrong. He folded his hands in front of his chest. Buddha had once cut off his own meat to feed an eagle because the eagle also has a life. All living things are created equal. So, in order to save the pregnant woman and her baby, the Buddha will not blame us for spilling blood in his temple. His eyes were focused when he said this. His overly delicate and beautiful brows that were usually seductive became pure and holy. Chapter 166 Yi Mu couldn't help but smiled. Now you'll have a clear conscience after helping someone. In the past years, I've always heard people talking about the good deeds you've done. 
I heard you gave away free items and even gave people medical treatments for free. But there is something I really want to know. She lowered her voice and said, you've always been doing good deeds. I'm curious, have you ever done anyone bad in your life? Wouldn't he be a saint if he hadn't done anything bad at all? But her brisk words pierced heavily through his mind. His eyes widened suddenly as he stared at Yimu. If someone had asked the question before she had, then he was able to say that he had never done anything bad without any hesitation. He had never harmed or deceived anyone. Ever since he became in charge of Tiancho Temple, it became a habit for him to do good deeds. He would endure any hardship gladly. But now that he thought back, had he committed any bad deeds? In a trance, he suddenly remembered the field of corpses littered at the foot of the mountain. At first, he awakened Yi Mu before everyone else and intensified the internal energy inside her body. He did this because when Feng said that Emo Linyuan was coming to pick her up soon. He wanted Yi Mu to kill Emo Linyuan. However, he never expected so many people were chasing after Emo Linyuan to kill him. Yet even under such circumstances, he still came to look for Yi Mu. What was most unexpected at that time was that even though Yi Mu was only six years old, she had enough willpower and determination to control herself. She killed off all of Mo Linyuan's enemies and to prevent herself from hurting Mo Linyuan, she destroyed some of her meridians. He originally wanted Yi Mu to kill Mo Linyuan. But in the end, the beast he released helped Mo Linyuan with his plight and saved him. When he descended the mountain and saw the field of corpses, he cried and laughed. In the end, he puked out blood. It was definitely God's punishment for wanting to harm other people. He didn't harm the person he wanted to harm and actually harmed himself in the end. Hey! Hey! Yi Mu waved her small hands in front of him. If my question is too difficult to answer, then forget it. Your face looks so unsightly. The silent master looked in her direction, but he didn't dare to meet her gaze because she was someone he unintentionally hurt in the process. Yi Mu poured him a cup of tea and said, You should be tired after such a long day. Rest well tonight. The silent master looked at the teacup in his hand and suddenly said, The truth is, I had done something bad in the past. Ha! Huh. Yi Mu's eyes widened in surprise and she immediately smiled. I never expected that answer. What did you do? The silent master looked at her with his delicate and bewitching eyes. In the candlelight, Yi Mu's round face looked very cute and lovely. I hurt someone. The people who chased after Mo Linyuan to kill him were all killed off. Their deaths were justified. But Yi Mu was still suffering the injuries she had received from that day. He intensified Yi Mu's powers too much, forcing her to be on the end of qi deviation. Even if he helped Yi Mu stabilize the internal energy inside her every month, she will still become more and more unstable. The reason she was able to maintain her sanity until now was that she never fully healed her meridians. Yi Mu's ability to recover from injuries was very strong. Although she may appear insignificant, tiny, and thin, she possessed hundreds of years of stored internal energy inside her. As a result, her body was different from others, no matter how serious her injuries are, she would quickly recover from it. But in order to prevent herself from hurting other people, she broke two meridians each time her other two meridians recovered. Chapter, 167 The one bad deed he did made him hurt Yimu. Yimu didn't know why he was staring at her so intensely. She tiptoed and patted the silent master's shoulder. No one is perfect. You've already done a great job. At the very least, you had only done one bad deed, she maturely said as she sighed with regret. The silent master didn't say anything else. He had bid her good night and told her to rest early before leaving. The next morning, the silent master went to the street, as usual, to medically treat poor people for free. Due to his good reputation, no matter the person who came to see him for treatment was rich or poor, they were all polite toward him. She was bored after sitting there for a while, so she helped the silent master wrap the medicine for the patients. During her stay here, she learned a lot about herbs. In addition, the medicinal herbs the silent master used are the commonly used ones. Your condition is difficult to completely cure. 
you should go back and soak your feet with hot water. If you can, I would recommend that you don't live on the mountain anymore, the silent master said to an old man. After he finished treating the old man, he prescribed some medicine to dispel heat for him. Just as he tiredly stood up to stretch, he saw Yi Mu stumbling toward him while she carried a tall medicine box. The medicine box was piled even higher than her head. The reason she was stumbling was not that she couldn't hold the weight of the boxes, but it was because the pile of medicine boxes was too tall. If she wasn't careful enough, all the boxes would fall to the ground. Even though he can't see her face, the silent master couldn't help but laughed when he saw the amusing scene. The person sitting in front of the silent master was dazed by his smile. The silent master was a handsome monk. He generally smiled at everyone gently, but for him to suddenly so brilliantly, it really made people's hearts pound. Yi Mu didn't witness the silent master's smile. She finally reached the table with her short legs and put the stack of medicine packages on the table. Then she wiped off the beads of sweat on her little face. Cough. All the heatstroke prevention medicines are here. There will be none left after we used up all of this, she said seriously. She looked at the silent master with her big round eyes as the silent master pursed his lips to prevent himself from further smiling. He handed her a bowl of water. Yi Mu was really tired. Her hands were filthy, so she took the silent master's hands and leaned in to drink the water. At that moment, they were very close to each other. The silent master didn't expect Yi Mu to use her mouth directly, instead of using her hand, so he was dazed for a moment. An old man came here to see the doctor, saw the scene and said, look at how gentle the silent master is. He really knows how to take care of other people. A female patient snorted and muttered, where did this little fox girl come from? How could you make the silent master feed you water in broad daylight? Don't you feel ashamed? Yi Mu wasn't someone who would willingly allow other people to bully her. She wiped her mouth and she finished drinking the water. Your words are so sour. It's obvious that you're jealous. As soon as she finished speaking, she disappeared like a wisp of smoke. Since the monk was here to do good deeds, it was best if she walked away and not quarreled with other people. After the girl's intentions were exposed by Yi Mu, the surrounding people were smiling smugly at her. Since Yi Mu had left, she couldn't even defend herself, so she could only turn away and leave. The silent master helplessly stared at Yi Mu's disappearing figure. He watched as Yi Mai rushed back to the house and helped move the stack medicinal packages that were even taller than hers. He couldn't help but shake his head and smiled bitterly. He didn't realize it, but whenever Yi Mu was there, his dull and quiet life was full of different colors, vitality, and energy. Chapter 168 The next day, the silent master was about to help Yi Mu circulate the internal energy in her body when a large group of people came knocking on the temple. The Zhong family was one of the three major families. They were used to oppressing and bullying other people. Although they've restrained themselves in the past year, they would still fight back if they were bullied. Madame Zhong personally brought someone here personally. Yesterday, she was scared away by Yi Mai, but after pondering over the events for a night, she felt that something wasn't right. So, she came here to destroy the temple today. Find that woman and that bastard child. Under her orders, the people she brought with her began to force their way in. The monks didn't dare to hurt anyone, so they couldn't prevent the outsiders from forcing their way in. The silent master was in a difficult position after hearing the news because the woman hadn't woken up yet. Yi Mu said, why don't you give her some internal energy to temporarily wake her up? Then, we can figure out the situation after she explains everything to us, and we can make a decision. The silent master practiced the clear heart cultivation method. It was a gentle style of cultivation. After he awakened the mother, Yi Mu carried the child in her arms. Her eyes became tender and soft with the child in her arms. The child had been drinking goat milk since his mother was unconscious. Yi Mu asked her, Who are you? Do you know how to write? There are some questions we want to ask you now because the Zhong family is here. The woman's complexion immediately turned pale as soon as she heard the Zhong family was here. She nodded her head and looked at them pleadingly. She was indeed a mute. 
Yi Mu brought a pen and paper to her. She asked her, they said you're a concubine from the Zhong family. Is that true? The woman shook her head quickly and wrote down her bitter experience. It turned out that she was a prostitute working in official brothels. Her name was Fang Ru. When the emperor ascended the throne a year ago, she was finally let go as a prostitute. She used the silver she accumulated over the years and bought her freedom. Then, she met the young master of the Zhong family. Young master Zhong liked her, but because she was a prostitute in the past, the Zhong family forbade young master Zhong from marrying her. They didn't allow him to even take her in as a concubine. She could only become his mistress living outside the Zhong family. A few months ago, she found out that she was pregnant. Because she was afraid that the Zhong family would force her to abort the child, she broke off her relationship with Master Zhong. However, her pregnancy was discovered by the Zhong family ten days ago. The Zhong family forced her to abort her child, but she refused. She decided to go to the countryside to lie low until the matter died down. But before she left the city, she went to the temple to burn incense for her unborn child. But she was caught at the temple, leading her child to have a premature birth. Yi Mu looked at what Fang Ru wrote and snorted, the Zhong family really are a heartless bunch, they don't even want their own flesh and blood. Fang Ru revealed a sad expression and pulled Yi Mu's hand, hoping Yi Mu could save her. She also wrote he as long as her child remained safe, she was willing to pray for her child's blessing in the temple for the rest of her life. Yi Mu looked at the silent master, do you accept nuns here? For the first time, the gentle expression on the silent master's face cracked a little, no, we don't. Yi Mai scratched her head and said, we should meet them head on first. The Zhong family couldn't find the woman or child, and they couldn't enter the rear court either. So, they resorted to slandering the temple and the monks. Everyone please come and take a look. Look at what kind of monks they are. They're forcibly detaining a concubine from the Zhong family in the temple. Don't even know what they're planning to do with her. Her words became more slanderous and unpleasant each passing second. Many of the Buddhist worshippers overhead the commotion and gathered around. They also felt that it was against the Buddha's teaching for Tiancho Temple to imprison a pregnant woman in the temple. When the silent master came out, he heard Madame Zhong's loud voice and frowned. Who is making such a racket in the temple? Madame Zhong stood in front of the servants and put her hands on her hips. It's me. Silent master, I see that you're still young, so it's natural for you to fall in love. Even so, you shouldn't have fallen for an escaped concubine. What's more, she's pregnant with someone else's child. Chapter, 169 Presumptuous A crease appeared in the space between the silent master's brows when he heard the woman's accusations. This was the first time he had been so angry. A Buddhist temple is a sacred place how can your mouth be so filthy? Im filthy? Madame Zhong laughed shrewdly. Am I the filthy one or are you the one with an impure mind? Not only do you have a young girl living in the temple, but you're also forcing a pregnant woman to stay here. Who knows what you're preaching here? The silent master was furious. But before he could do anything, there was a paw sound and Madame Zhong was slapped hard by someone. Madame Zhong screamed out in pain and retreated a few steps. Who is it? Who hit me? Yi Mu shook her hand and jumped in front of her. I'm really sorry for not slapping you hard enough. What did you just say? Is there a problem with a young girl staying at the temple? I'm here right now, why don't you say it to my face? Madame Zhong covered her face and glared resentfully at her, you little slut, how dare you slap me? Don't be impudent just because you're one of His Majesty's people. I'm here to catch a runaway concubine. Even if I report you to Asian Manor, they'll still side with me. Yi Mu didn't back down. You said she's a runaway concubine from the Zhong family, where's your proof? At this time, Fan Ru walked out from the rear court and looked at Madame Zhong with red-rimmed eyes. Madame Zhong was furious when she saw that Fang Ru had actually given birth to the child. You want evidence? I'll show you. She took a book listing all the concubines from the Zhong family from a box. Look right here. She personally inked her fingerprint right here, 
so this can't be fake. As soon as Madame Zhong took out the concubine book, the surrounding people immediately became discussing. Yi Mu looked at Fang Ru strangely, but Fang Ru turned pale and was on the verge of collapse. She had signed the book in order to become young Master Zhong's concubine. But later, young Master Zhong told her that because his mother disagreed, the page listing her was torn by his mother. Could it be that she didn't tear it? When Madame Zhong smirked when she saw Fang Ru retreating in fear with her child in her arms. She arrogantly said, this isn't a fake document. She is the runaway concubine from the Zhong family. Now you have nothing to say, right? Take her away. Then, she turned around and glared at Yi Mu. Damned brat, just you wait. I'll return your slap soon. The servants from the Zhong family walked toward Fang Ru, but Fang Ru kept retreating backward. She couldn't speak, so she could only scream as she held her baby. The silent master wanted to help, but the document was signed by her. This matter was something he no longer interfered with. Stop. Yi Mu jumped in front of Fang Ru and said, Did I allow you guys to touch her? Are you looking for a fight? Fang Ru quickly hid behind Yi Mu. Although Yi Mu was small, she was the only one willing to defend her. The silent master certainly wouldn't let Yi Mu, a child, bear the weight of the whole situation. He walked forward and said, This humble monk will personally verify the truth of this matter with the people from Asian Manor. However, she is still weak from giving birth, so you can't take her away. Madame Zhong didn't expect this group of monks to be so stubborn. Okay, just you wait. I will go report this temple for corruption. Madame Zhong's sharp and arrogant voice irritated Yi Mai. Her hands were itchy for action and a familiar voice could be heard. Why is it so lively here? Yi Mu's eyes brightened. Mo Linyuan was here. She subconsciously ran towards Mo Linyuan, and Mo Linyuan was also very happy to see Yi Mu. He came here today to bring Yi Mu back, but he had unexpectedly walked in on this scene. Chapter 170 Because Mo Linyuan was traveling incognito, no one but Madame Zhong recognized him. The expression on Madame Zhong's face changed instantly. She didn't expect a mere study companion to have the ability to have the emperor come and go at her will. She knelt down unwillingly and paid her respect to the emperor, Greetings your majesty. I wish you good fortune for ten thousand years. When Madame Zhong knelt and paid her respect to the young man in front of them, the surrounding people figured out the young man's identity immediately. They followed her lead and knelt down quickly. Mo Linyuan waved his hand carefreely, allowing them to stand up. Get up and explain the situation to me. Yes, Madame Zhong stood up unwillingly and began explaining, Your Majesty, you need to get justice for the Zhong family. We came here to catch a runaway concubine, but the monks in this temple are refusing to let the woman go. Your Majesty, please seek justice for us. Yi Mu snorted, I think there's something fishy going on here. This woman can't speak, so all the evidence is coming from the Zhong family. How could we just accept a one-sided story? Besides, they kept saying that this woman had an affair, but where is the man she had an affair with? Madame Zhong reluctantly said, the adulterer has been caught and beaten to death. The child in this woman's arms is the product of an affair. No. It wasn't like this. Fang Ru knelt down towards Mo Linyuan and shook her head unceasingly. This was not the case. Her child belonged to young Master Zhong. Mo Linyuan pulled Yi Mu behind him and smiled. He asked the Zhong family, Are you sure this woman is pregnant with another man's child? My words are absolutely true. This woman deserves to be drowned in a wicker basket. However, Yi Mu smiled and said, But this woman said that this child belongs to the young master of the Zhong family. Do you dare to let young Master Zhong come here to prove it? Madame Zhong's complexion paled at Yi Mu's words. Nonsense. My son is about to marry the young lady from the Wen family. How could he have illegitimate children? Yi Mu had a sudden realization. No wonder the Zhong family were so eager to kill the baby and the woman. It turned out that this matter might destroy young Master Zhong's marriage prospect with the Wen family. She said smugly, 
how about this we should invite young Master Zhong to come here and prove whether this child is his by a blood test. If the child is not his, then I will give this woman to you immediately. However, if the child belongs to young Master Zhong, then I want you to give him an official identity in the Zhong family. Are you willing to take this bet? That would be inappropriate. Madame Zhong hesitated because she knew that the child belonged to her son. Yi Mu ignored her and turned to ask Fang Ru, what about you? Do you dare to bet? Fang Ru nodded her head, the fearful expression her face was gone. Upon seeing this, Mo Linyuan knew who was telling the truth. He waved his fan and chuckled softly, young Master Zhong. Where is he now? Before Madame Zhong could speak up, the servant standing behind Mo Linyuan said, he is working at the Imperial Palace. Send for him to come here. Mo Linyuan had just spoken when Madame Zhong waved her hands rapidly. No. There's no need to send for him. If the Wen family found out about his son's dirty laundry, then they might break off their marriage agreement. She glanced at Yi Mu and then glared at Fang Ru angrily. Madame Zhong weakly replied, I admit that he is young Master Zhong's son. There is no need to conduct a blood test. The surrounding people immediately started booing at her. Madame Zhong couldn't hold her face up anymore. She shrank back and timidly said, I have confessed everything. Can I take the woman and child away now? This woman is indeed the concubine of the Zhong family. I even have the book listing all the concubines in the Zhong family to prove it. It didn't matter if she admitted to this now. She just needed to take the woman and child away, then kill them behind closed doors. Who would care about a mere concubine's death? Fan Ru seemed to have foreseen her own destiny, and she kowtowed at Mo Linyuan's feet. The child also cried out loudly. Madame Zhong glanced at the scene and felt that the woman was only bringing shame to the Zhong family. In Madame Zhong's opinion, this woman should have died a long time ago. When Yi Mu saw this, she tugged Mo Linyuan's sleeve and said, Your Majesty, don't you find the Zhong family to be quite interesting? The child is clearly their children, yet they continuously claim that it was a bastard's child. It's so obvious that they're afraid that the child will make the one family unhappy, so they want to kill this child. I have an idea. Why don't we give this woman a chance to set up her own household? This way, the child has nothing to do with the Zhong family and appease both sides. Chapter, 171 This absolutely cannot be allowed. Madame Zhong hurriedly retorted, Did you know that this woman used to be a prostitute? Do you want her to return to her old career by letting her set up an independent female household? Fang Ru's face instantly paled. Madame Zhong was undoubtedly stepping on her pride and livelihood by uncovering her past in front of so many people. If she didn't have a child, and if the child wasn't so young, she would have committed suicide to prove her innocence. Yi Mu was furious by Madame Zhong's comment. So, what if she was a woman? Can't women hold the other half of the sky along with men? Originally, Yi Mu was being quite courteous with the Zhong family. But now, the Zhong family completely infuriated her. She said to Mo Linyuan seriously, Your Majesty, I still need a female servant to serve me. Can you give me this woman? If she is sent to the Zhong family, she will undoubtedly die. If she can still live, why should we let her die? Yi Mu's words made everyone stunned. This woman was a concubine of the Zhong family. If she tried to erase her past by accepting her as a female servant, wasn't this slapping the Zhong family's face to the ground? Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes, why? You need to give me a good reason to persuade me. Yi Mu smiled and knew that Mo Linyuan was on her side. It was easy to find a reason for this. Your Majesty, if you think about it, the world is divided and there's a lot of hostilities between the different spheres of power. War might break out at any moment. We need a new army to protect us. Just now, the Zhong family's intentions were obvious, they wanted to kill this child. This way, young Master Zhong can marry Miss Wen from the Wen family. However, Miss Wen will not want to marry young Master Zhong if she finds out that he has an illegitimate child. Numerous children in this world will follow their example of killing illegitimate children to save their face and pride. 
These innocent children could have been the pillars of our MO country in the future, yet they were killed before they can contribute to our MO country. In order to prevent this, we need to set an example for everyone else to follow. You're shoving false arguments down people's throat. The Zhong family was baffled by his explanation. The emperor will not let the woman go because of this ridiculous reason, right? Mo Linyuan poked Yi Mu's forehead dotingly. Although it wasn't wise for him to go against the Zhong family, there was nothing he could do since Yi Mu wanted to go against them. What you said is correct. Mo Linyuan nodded his head prudently, every child in the Mo country is the future hope for our country. These children should be protected. Since the Zhong family doesn't want this child, then this child will be renamed Li. He will be raised for the royal family and grow up to contribute to our country. Mo Linyuan's words made the Zhong family hate Yi Mu to their bones. It was uncertain how angry Miss Wan will be once she found out that her son already had a son. Madame Zhong straightened her back and stared darkly at Fang Ru, this woman is the concubine of the Zhong family. This means that we can take her away, right? Yi Mu looked at her incredulously, she's just a concubine, they'll just redeem her from you. Do you want to separate the mother and the child that badly? I've always heard that the Zhong family has a reputation for being benevolent and virtuous. She dug around her sleeve and took out a piece of gold ingot and threw it at Madame Zhong's feet. Although a concubine only costs around a dozen tails of silver, you don't have to give me back the change. I have money anyways. Chapter 172. The Zhong family was furious with the verdict, but the emperor made it clear that he was standing on their enemy's side. Since it only involved a concubine, they could only let it go. However, since the emperor didn't give the Zhong family any face, they would definitely remember this humiliation and repay it back. The incident came to an end, but the problems between the royal family and the Zhong family got more intense and intense in the coming years. Four years later, the conflict between the two parties could no longer be hidden from outsiders. One day, a small lowly came running out of the verdant and lush mountains. She was wearing a tailor-made monk robe that was only available from the temple. The Buddhist worshippers climbing up the mountain looked at her with a strange gaze. Did the temple on top of this mountain begin accepting female disciples? Yi Mu ignored the strange glances people were giving her and disappeared into the rear mountain. Silent master, silent master. I'm here again. In four years' time, the silent master's face became even more gentle. Whenever he looked down, his eyebrows became even more enchanting. When he opened his eyes, his clear pupils became even clearer. Many Buddhist worshippers came here to admire the silent master's face. Even though they knew he was a monk, they still couldn't control their lustful gaze as they looked at him. The silent master was originally going to play chess with an old man when he heard Yi Mu's voice. His eyes immediately lit up and he didn't feel like playing chess anymore. The other party laughed at the silent master's reaction. He knew that the silent master had a friend who was closer to him than a biological sister, so he left them alone. Let's stop here for today. The old man stood up and said, let's save the chess game to this point. I will come again next time to continue the game. Amitba. This humble monk will send someone to lead you down the mountain. As soon as Yi Mu entered through the entrance, she saw a short old man leaving. She smiled at the old man before she walked in. Silent Master take a look at this. The western regions gave us the Buddhist scripture as a tribute. Yi Mu handed the Silent Master the scripture. The Silent Master's eyes were shining brightly as he looked at the scripture admiringly, why are you giving me these? The way he spoke with Yi Mu had obviously become more casual. Yi Mu said, You've read all the books in the library, so you have nothing else to read. Since you have nothing else to read, won't you feel bored? Anyway, neither Brother Emperor nor I like to read these kinds of books. The silent master accepted the gift since it came from Yi Mu's good intentions. He led her to the inner room of the temple. It's still the middle of the month, why did you come? Yi Mu usually came here at the end of every month and would live here for a few days. This was Yi Mu's second home. Speaking of that, Yi Mu appeared somewhat worried as she frowned. I feel like it's acting up earlier this month. 
She sighed, even if I break my meridians, it won't take long to recover from the broken meridians. When I woke up this morning, everyone was red, and I was seeing a double image of everything. I believe my situation may have deteriorated. The smile disappeared from the silent master's face when he heard Yi Mu's words. The book in his hand suddenly felt like it weighed thousands of pounds. Yi Mu became like this all because of him, all because he made a great mistake in a moment of weakness. Follow me. He led Yi Mai into the inner room. He sat cross-legged with her and said with a serious expression, The reason you're like this is that you have never relieved your murderous intent. The God of Silence cultivation method is originally an evil method of cultivation. It requires you to continue killing people and absorb external evil energy from other people. Since you keep suppressing it, you'll naturally receive a rebound. Moreover, he had intensified the internal energy inside her, so the murderous energy accumulated in Yi Mu's body was even greater than what it was supposed to be. What should I do? Yi Mu was bitter. She really didn't want to continue breaking two of her meridians each time. It was really painful. The silent master cautiously said, wait a little while longer. I will find a cure for you. Chapter, 173 In fact, there were many ways to cure her condition. One way was to allow Yi Mu to kill people which will let out the murderous energy from her body. The second way was to find people who were cultivating pure cultivation methods like him. Then they can help cleanse the murderous energy inside him completely. It was just that there were only a few people who practiced the same cultivation method as him, and he had never been able to find anyone else. Of course, the best method of them all was to completely destroy her martial arts and become an useless person. The silent master pondered over the last choice. Yi Mu was willing to endure the pain of breaking her meridians over and over again, and didn't even think about abandoning martial arts. Could it be that martial arts was very important to her? Chaotic thoughts flashed by his mind as the silent master concentrated on guiding Yi Mu's internal force. After a short while, Yi Mu fell asleep in his arms. When she awakened later, she will probably stop seeing the red double image of everything. The silent master couldn't help but touch her forehead after seeing the beads of sweat covering her face. After four years of friendship, the little girl had entered his heart unconsciously. He had never had a younger sister, so he naturally felt affections towards Yimu. At the same time, he had put past their differences. If he could redo everything again, he wouldn't have hurt her in order to kill Mo Linyuan. The silent master frowned deeply when he thought of this. Inside the quiet inner room of the temple, only a sandalwood incense was burning. Yimu rested at the temple for a few days before she returned to the palace. When she returned to the palace, she found out that the imperial palace was under martial law. What happened? She asked Wen Feng, who had been following her. In the past four years, not only had Imo Linyuan been strengthening himself, the three great families and the Empress Dowager had been actively recovering their strengths too. They had all been slowly restoring the strength they lost a few years ago. Wen Feng sighed, it's nothing big. The Grand Empress Dowager has just returned to the palace. Yi Mu froze for a moment before she laughed. It was time for the Grand Empress Dowager to return. After all, it was ridiculous for someone of her status to live outside the Imperial Palace. Yet she didn't have to cause a stir when she returned. It seemed like something big was going to happen again. Sure enough, she hadn't even reached Xiaoyang Palace Hall yet when she saw a group of imperial bodyguards clothed in black. Time hadn't left a trace on Zhao Yunkin's face, she still appeared beautiful and young for her age. However, she also appeared somewhat stern and imposing. Your Majesty, I left the palace to recuperate when I was ill before. Now that I've recovered, you're going to welcome me back, right? Mo Linyuan smiled slightly. He was now fifteen years old. For four years, he had done his best to expand his knowledge and strength in order to sit on the throne. Now, he was no longer the young emperor who needed his ministers to give him advice whenever he encountered difficulties. He was now a grand, reserved, benevolent, wise, and far-sighted monarch. M. O. Linyuan's growth in the four years was visible. 
the court officials thought that Imo Linyuan had been blessed by God because he could always think of an unique but useful and easy solution whenever he encountered difficulties. Emo Linyuan always smiled no matter what situation he encountered. The officials admired how well the 15-year-old emperor conducted himself. What is imperial grandmother saying? Of course I'm happy that you're coming back. The emperor's political achievements were impressive in the past four years. It would be difficult if the empress dowager wanted to seize the emperor's power on the grounds that the emperor was young and cannot handle the state affairs like before. Zhao Yunqin also knew that Emo Linyuan was more difficult to deal with than before. Zhao Yunqin narrowed her eyes and smiled when she saw Yi Mu walking in. I heard that the emperor really likes this young girl. Emperor, you should watch yourself. Your mother would be sad if she finds out that you are doting on a stray cat instead of your biological sister. Chapter 174 Emo Linyuan's eyes turned cold when he heard Zhao Yukin's words, but he couldn't help but smile when he saw Yi Mu walking into the palace hall with big strides. Royal grandmother shouldn't worry about it. No one can criticize me just because I want to dote and pamper someone. Zhao Yuqin stopped talking as soon as she sensed the killing intent behind Imo Linyuan's words. She only glared at Yi Mu in anger. How did the 500 people she sent all die? It was later verified after a long investigation that they were all killed by the little girl in front of her. Fortunately, her meridians were broken, and it would be difficult for her to kill again. Otherwise, she wouldn't have dared to return. She lost her cool and began panicking when she saw Yi Mu smiled like she didn't have a care in the world. She quickly got up and left with her servants. Yi Mu touched her nose and said, I don't know why, but I think she's a little afraid of me. Mo Linyuan pursed his lips and smiled. His eyes were sparkling like little stars in the sky as he looked at her. Ignore her. Are you feeling better? Yi Mu suddenly said she felt uncomfortable earlier today and needed to go to Tianshou Temple. It really scared him. However, Yi Mu carefreely waved her hands. I'm fine. She said with a smile, it was just a small problem. Brother Silent Master has helped me solve it. In the past few years, Mo Linyuan had been silently observing the Silent Master. He gradually relaxed when he realized that he was suspicious. But listening to how much Yi Mu was praising him, he couldn't help but turn sour and said, he's just a monk, so there's no way he has a sister. Yi Mu looked at Mo Linyuan's delicate and handsome appearance and smiled secretly, yes, only you have such an excellent sister like me. Yi Mu's words put Mo Linyuan in a daze. In the four years they've been together, he finally realized his romantic feelings for her. However, Yi Mu continued to treat him like a sibling. He felt very frustrated because Yi Mu didn't see him as a man. Yi Mu didn't find anything abnormal with him, so as usual, she helped him go through the daily accounts the officials had sent him. Mo Linyuan was now skilled at going through the accounts by now. Now he rarely encountered a problem where he couldn't solve. Even if he did, he can just ask Yi Mu. However, one of the accounts was giving him a headache. Yi Mu took the account from him and looked at it. She smiled and said, how many times has it been this month? You are only fifteen, yet they're already pestering you to marry a wife and get a concubine. Mo Linyuan would usually ignore these things, but Yi Mu's nonchalant attitude made him extremely resentful towards these meddling people. They just want to implant their own people around me. A prince usually gets married once they turn fifteen. But since I was crowned as the emperor before age fifteen, I have yet married. They said they only want to enrich my harem. Then don't you need to draft young girls? Yi Mu's eyes widened as she recalled all the dramas she had watched before. She was particularly curious about this, then why don't you just choose a woman? You'll have to choose someone sooner or later. She said with a sweet smile. What she had said was true, but Yi Mu didn't see Mo Linyuan's somber expression after he heard what she had just said. I don't want to choose. Ha! Huh. Yi Mu's eyes widened in shock. She poked him with a finger and asked, Why? You are now fifteen, right when puberty hit guys. You should be at the time where you're curious about the opposite sex. 
Mo Linyuan was depressed when he saw that she didn't oppose the official's idea of choosing a wife and a concubine for him. I don't like the people they're making me choose from. Yimu subconsciously asked him, then who do you like? She laughed when she finished speaking. Mo Linyuan had been busy stabilizing his power for the past few years. Where did he have the time to meet women? Even if he did, he probably hadn't seen many people. Mo Linyuan resisted the urge to tell her I like you. Yi Mu was currently oblivious to his feelings, and it was still too early for him to tell her. Chapter 175 Just at this moment, Mo Dai arrived in the palace hall. In the past four years, she had turned herself invisible and avoided political matters. Although Mo Linyuan did not like her, it was impossible for him to do anything to her. Now, she often went on a fast and bathed herself every day, praying for their dead mother. Mo Dai had grown up into a young lady now. She suppressed her jealousy towards Yi Mu and greeted Mo Linyuan. She said to Mo Linyuan, Brother, today is our mother's death anniversary. Father Emperor asked me to invite you to eat dinner together to mourn for our mother. He could refuse many things, but this wasn't something he could refuse. So, Mo Linyuan thought about it for a moment before he agreed. That night, he took Yi Mu to the place where Mo Sherwin lived. Mo Linyuan originally thought that there would only be a few people present, but surprisingly, Prime Minister Wen was also there. Prime Minister Wen and Mo Sherwin were about the same age, but they sat next to each other, they looked like they were similar in age at all. Yi Mu had heard of Prime Minister Wen's reputation a long time ago. This was her first time meeting him. He looked like a weak middle-aged uncle. Prime Minister Wen immediately stood up to greet Mo Linyuan when he saw him. Mo Linyuan frowned as he looked at Mo Shiwen's flattering smile. He replied, You don't need to greet me since we're not in court. May I ask why the Prime Minister is here? Prime Minister Wen didn't even have the chance to speak yet, when Mo Sherwin spoke up, you didn't know because you were young, but Prime Minister Wen and your mother were good friends. He came here today to pay his respect to her. Mo Linyuan was suspicious. He had never heard from his mother that she and Prime Minister Wen were friends when he was young. On the contrary, his mother appeared quite fearful of him. Of course, he didn't reveal any emotions on his face. He only allowed other people to help him get seated along with Yimu. There was an eerily quietness in the big hall. Yimu looked at the people present and turned towards Mo Linyuan. She couldn't help but quietly asked, How did your mother die? Mo Linyuan never mentioned the cause of his mother's death. Why didn't Mo Sherwin die with her? In fact, Mo Linyuan wasn't clear on the subject himself either. That year, the Empress Dowager combined her power with the Sher family and attacked the Imperial Palace. His mother risked her life to send him out of the palace. Shortly after he was exiled, he soon received news of his mother's death. He heard from rumors that his mother was forced to death by the Empress Dowager. He conducted various investigations and it was proven that his mother indeed died in the Empress Dowager's palace. However, the details of the matter were unknown. Prime Minister Wen chuckled and said, in the blink of an eye, it has already been years since the Empress died. This humble official will toast for her first. He picked up the wine cup on the side and drained the cup in one gulp. His eyes were filled with emotions he appeared truly sad. In contrast, Mo Sherwen and Mo Dai appeared more indifferent as they sat on the side. When Mo Linyuan saw this, he couldn't help but ask them the question Yi Mu asked him. Speaking of that, I wasn't in the imperial palace when my royal mother died. How did she die? Since he had suddenly brought up this question, Mo Sherwen was shocked and turned towards Wen Zhe unconsciously. Wen Zhe just shook his head and said, Wasn't she forced to death by the Empress Dowager? Mo Linyuan asked another question, What about you? He stared at Wen Zhe, Which side did the Wen family stand on in that matter? Although the Wen family wasn't one of the families that were officially listed on the Empress Dowager's side, it was obvious that after the incident, the Wen family and the Empress Dowager had a good relationship. Which side did the Wen family truly stand on? Chapter 176 Wen Zhe pondered for a moment before he said with a smile, 
the Wen family didn't dare to participate in the royal affair in the beginning. The reason why the Wen family were on such good terms with the Empress Dowager was that she was in power. We had no choice to do her bidding after she won the power struggle. Mo Linyuan was not easy to fool, so why did you say that you are good friends with my mother? After all, you didn't even help her in times of crisis. In addition to that, I haven't seen you mourn for my mother in the past few years. You had only come to mourn for her this year. I'm afraid you only came because you wanted to ask for something, am I correct? When Zai was taken aback by how blunt Mo Linyuan's words were, he could only stare at Mo Sherwen to help him. Mo Sherwen quivered at Wen Zhe's gaze and said quickly, Prime Minister Wen is a good person. When you were exiled, the Empress Dowager sent assassins to chase you down. It was thanks to Prime Minister Wen's help that you escaped many times. When Prime Minister Wen was looking for you in your state, he wasn't trying to harm you, but to help you. Today he came not because of his own private business, but because he wants you to bless him on a matter. What kind of matter? Mo Dai who had her head down the entire time, suddenly stood up and knelt in front of Mo Linyuan. Brother, he's here because of me. I am in love with the third young master of the Wen family. I also hoped that royal brother would restore my identity so that I could marry him with pride. Yi Mu was stunned by her request. Mo Dai was only fourteen years old and yet she wanted to marry someone. Mo Linyuan's face darkened. If Mo Dai wanted to marry someone else, he was willing to restore her status and let her marry with pride. But why did she have to choose someone from the one family out of everyone else? No to mention the fact that the aristocratic families and the royal families are not fighting and opposing each other. Based on the fact that Prime Minister Wen and the General of Yu State had a closed friendship, Mo Linyuan could tell that this person had ill intentions. When Prime Minister Wen saw that Mo Linyuan didn't immediately respond, he secretly glanced at Mo Dai, signaling her to do something. Mo Dai saw his signal and took out a piece of jade quickly, Royal brother, you do remember this jade? Of course, Mo Linyuan remembered the jade. This was a half-butterfly jade pendant that their mother bought for Mo Dai. At this time, Prime Minister Wen took out the other half of the jade, Your Majesty, please look at this. This was given to me by the Empress. The truth is, the Empress had set a marriage agreement with the Wen family for Mo Dai when she was just a baby. Your Majesty is a filial son, so you will surely satisfy her wishes, right? Mo Linyuan took the jade pendant and inspected it. Mo Linyuan closely inspected the jade pendant and concluded that it was indeed the other half of the butterfly jade pendant. Could it be that his royal mother really was close friends with Prime Minister Wen? Could it be true that she had arranged a marriage for Mo Dai when she was just a baby with the Wen family? He frowned deeper as those thoughts raced through his mind. Yi Mu who was just a silent spectator on this matter also felt that something was amiss. She could tell from their interactions that Mo Sherwen seemed to be afraid of the Prime Minister. There seemed to be things that even Mo Linyuan didn't know about. Let me think about this matter. Mo Linyuan didn't want to decide right now. However, Mo Dai knew how to seize a good opportunity. She clutched Mo Linyuan's sleeve tightly. Royal brother. I'm your biological sister and today is our mother's death anniversary. Please restore my status as a princess. Our mother in heaven will definitely want to see you and I interact with each other in harmony. The main reason she lost her status as a princess was because the Empress Dowager said that Mo Dai had died of an illness. So, as long as Mo Linyuan didn't personally restore her status, she will not have the status of a princess. Mo Linyuan looked at her tear-filled eyes and recalled that she had been diligent and obedient in the past four years. He almost agreed to her request because the status of a princess didn't hold much power. However, he swallowed back the words that he was about to say when Yimu anxiously pulled him back. Chapter 177 I have already said that we will discuss this later. He felt that he could no longer stomach the meal, so he took Yimu and left first. Damn it! Mo Dai noticed Mo Linyuan's slight pause before. Royal brother clearly wants to agree to my request. It must be Yimu's fault. She's too meddlesome. Wen Zhe was also a little surprised by the result. 
He thought that the emperor would agree to at least one of their requests to either restore Emo Dai's status as a princess or allow Emo Dai to marry into the one family. It seemed like the emperor was overly cautious. What should we do now? Emo Sherwin asked timidly. He felt that he was sitting on pins and needles every day now that the Empress Dowager returned. He was afraid that Emo Linyuan would not protect him, so all his hopes were on Wenze. However, the main reason he was helping Wenze was that Wenze had something he could use against him. Wenze glanced at him and said, Look at how afraid and cowardly you're acting. It's probably because of you that Emo Linyuan became suspicious. Xiaoyun ruined her life by marrying you. After he finished speaking, Wen Zhe also left. There was a gloomy expression on his face, he appeared completely different from before. On the other side, Emo Linyuan asked Yi Mu, did you discover anything odd about them? Yi Mu nodded her head, it's reasonable for you to restore Emo Dai's status as a princess since you two are born from the same parents. However, the atmosphere between the three of them was really strange. It was as if Wen Zhe was leading Mo Dai and Mo Shirwen by the nose. Mo Linyuan recalled their interactions carefully on the way back to the Imperial Palace, but it's only the title of a princess. What can they achieve with such a powerless title? There wasn't much power bestowed to a princess. Yi Mu didn't understand their intentions either, although we don't know what their intentions are, I know someone who will definitely know. Are you referring to the Empress Dowager? Mo Linyuan suddenly recalled that the Empress Dowager had recently returned. Yi Mu nodded her head, the Shi family, the Empress Dowager, and us, can now be said to be in a three-legged relationship. The Shi family appears to be close to the Empress Dowager because the Empress Dowager promised to give them a lot of benefits for siding with her. We should test to see whether the Empress Dowager is willing to restore Mo Dai's status as a princess. If the Empress Dowager is willing, then Mo Dai must be conspiring something with them. If the Empress Dowager isn't willing to, then you can agree to Mo Dai's request. This is a more foolproof plan. So how do we know whether the Empress Dowager will agree to it or not? Yi Mu narrowed her eyes and smiled, stupid. He'll personally go ask her. Mo Linyuan immediately shook his head, no, I can't let you risk yourself. Yi Mu laughed and said, how is this risking myself? Just let Wen Feng accompany me to visit her. Since she just returned, why don't you allow me to visit her in your place? A glint of light flashed in Imo Linyuan's eyes. There were a dozen palace servants standing behind him, but he still took her hand and said, only the empress can visit the empress dowager on behalf of the emperor. After he finished speaking, he felt like his heart could stop beating any moment as he stared at Yimu. Under the moonlight, Yi Mu didn't realize what he was implying, rules are meant to be broken. Anyways, who else can you send besides me? He really trusted her the most. But unfortunately, that wasn't what he was asking about. Okay. Rest assured I will get this done quickly. Yi Mu saw that she arrived at the place where she lived, so she waved her hand and bid him farewell, see you tomorrow. Okay. Mo Linyuan nodded his head. Since she was still young and didn't really understand what love was, he could only sigh and bid her farewell too, see you tomorrow then. Besides, he still had a long time. Chapter, 178 Early the next morning, Yi Mu went to visit the Empress Dowager while Mo Linyuan was attending court. The Empress Dowager had just returned to her palace when she heard the news that Yi Mu came looking for her. She couldn't help but feel afraid. Although Yi Mu may appear harmless on the surface, she knew that Yi Mu was a killing machine underneath that facade. She hated and feared Yi Mu because of her abilities. But since Yi Mu was currently unable to use her internal energy right now, she decided that she will meet Yi Mu. Empress Dowager, may you live for thousands of years with great blessings. Yi Mu smiled as she greeted the Empress Dowager. She appeared like a cheerful easygoing girl, just like any other average girl her age. Zhao Yunqin stared at her suspiciously, why are you here so early? Did Yi Mu come here to relay Mo Linyuan's words to her? Yi Mu said, I came here to congratulate the Empress Dowager. Oh. What for? Zhao Yunqin couldn't help but frown. Yi Mu said, 
it's about your granddaughter, Princess M.O. Dai. She fell in love with the third young master of the Wen family, so His Highness is preparing to restore M.O. Dai's identity as a princess. That way, she can marry into the Wen family with pride. When Yi Mu finished speaking, she examined Zhao Yunkin's expression closely. Zhao Yunqin coldly sneered in her heart, it turned out that she just came here to greet her. She didn't express joy or anger, instead, she just faintly said, Oh. That's a good thing. Since M.O. Dai came back from the dead, it is time for the emperor to restore her identity. Since I've heard the news, you can leave now. Although the empress dowager wanted to make things difficult for Yi Mu, it was better for her not to go head to head against the emperor since she just returned. However, Yi Mu refused to leave she smiled and pretended like she harbored no ill intentions against the empress dowager, empress dowager, I don't know if you heard the same, while the mantis stalks the cicada, it was unaware of the oriole behind. What do you mean? Zhao Yunqin narrowed his eyes. Yi Mu said, in a sense, the person closest to Empress Dowager should be the emperor, right? Zhao Yunqin sneered. Out of everyone in the world, the emperor was probably the one who can't wait for her to die the most. After all, the emperor's biological mother died in front of her. Of course, the emperor is my grandchild, so we are naturally close. Yi Mu shook her head, no, you obviously don't understand what I'm saying because the most stable chair is a three-legged stool. If one foot of the stool is broken, then the stool no longer can stand upright. Of course, unless you break another one of the stool's feet. That way, you will be left with one foot in the middle, balancing the whole stool. Yi Mu maintained the smile on her small face, but there her eyes were sharp and serious. That's why, no matter what the Shur family tells you or wants you to do, you shouldn't agree to it, let alone help them. The reason you were able to live peacefully in the past four years is that the relationship between the three stool feet was strong. Otherwise, how did you think you could have lived peacefully after what you did? Impudent. Was this girl implying that she should have died a long time ago? The servant standing beside the Empress Dowager immediately knelt down in a hurry, but Yi Mu was not afraid. She continued talking, you know exactly what I mean. That year, you joined forces with the Shur family and killed the Empress. As a result, you subconsciously regarded the Emperor as an enemy. But you should know that once the Emperor dies, you will be next. Otherwise, why do you think the Wen family wants to marry a princess? Perhaps, she will be used to replace you in the future. Don't forget who it was that imprisoned her underground for five years. Yi Mu was just trying to scare her because she hadn't exactly guessed what role Mo Dai was playing in this matter. But unexpectedly, Zhao Yunkin's expression turned unsightly when she heard Yi Mu's words. The Wen family had approached her and told her that the prince was dead. Now, there was only a princess left in the royal family. Unfortunately, the princess didn't have a status and was not recognized by the emperor as a princess. They told her that if she was willing, she can cooperate with the Shur family like before. Once Mo Dai's identity was restored, they could kill the emperor. As soon as the emperor dies, they will assist the princess to ascend the throne. This way, Zhao Yunqin can become the regent and rule over the court. The Shur family can continue to grow and expand their power without the emperor's hindrance. More importantly, both parties will receive an equal benefit in this plan. They won't have to worry about one side betraying the other side. Chapter, 179 However, Yi Mu's words reminded her that Mo Dai was only a puppet emperor once the plan succeeded. It may seem like she received the same amount of benefits as the Shur family on the surface, but in fact, it was not true. Since Mo Dai was the emperor, why can't they just kill her the Empress Dowager off and allowed the Shur family to become the regent? Mo Dai was not as smart or scheming as Mo Linyuan, so she could be easily controlled. The most important matter was that the young girl had been locked up by her for five years. Once she became the female emperor in the future, will she let her go after what she had done to her? She had always hated Mo Linyuan's existence, but she almost forgot that it would not be easy to get along with Mo Dai either. If Mo Dai collides with the Shi family, perhaps she, Zhao Yunqin will be the next person to be locked up in a dungeon. Thinking of this, Zhao Yunqin could no longer sit still. 
She glanced around and saw Yi Mu looking at her with a smile. Yi Mu's eyes seemed to be able to penetrate her thoughts, which made Zhao Yunqin terrified of her. Have you thought about it clearly? Yi Mu took in Zhao Yunqin's change in attitude and suddenly realized what she was thinking. Think about it, how much do you think Imo Dai hates you? Are you sure you want to see the Shur family become successful? If you are sure, then His Majesty will soon send out a decree that will restore Emo Dai's identity. Wait, wait a moment. Zhao Yunqin rubbed the space between her brows. She had a headache, Dyer had been dead for so many years. I fear it will be inappropriate for the Emperor to suddenly restore her identity. Oh. Yi Mu took a step forward, why? What kind of excuse should I give the Emperor for your refusal to restore her identity? You have to give me a reason, otherwise, I can't explain it to His Majesty. Zhao Yunqin discovered that Yi Mu was quite difficult to deal with, that's not something you can ask about. Get out! Even though she acted so fierce towards Yi Mu, Yi Mu didn't react at all. She merely smiled and asked, Empress Dowager, His Majesty suspected that his mother's death had something to do with the Wen family. Hence, he sent me to secretly get some evidence from you. We can stop talking about Mo Dai. However, you should answer my question. Because soon, one of the young masters of the Wen family might marry into the royal family. Zhao Yunqin asked fretfully, Will you even believe me if I tell you the truth? Yi Mu said, If I don't believe you, then I wouldn't have come here to ask you. Zhao Yunqin pondered for a moment before she said, At that time, the three big families have intervened in the matter. Otherwise, how could she win so easily? I understood. Yi Mu didn't know whether Zhao Yunqin was lying or Wen Zhe was lying. But she now had an idea what to do about Mo Dai's matter. When she returned, Mo Linyuan had just ended court. A smile appeared on his face when he saw Yi Mu. He walked over to her and pinched her nose intimately. How was it? Did you manage to coax the answers out of the Empress Dowager? Yi Mu smiled triumphantly, I did. It was all thanks to my silver tongue. I found out that the Empress Dowager and the Shur family had made a deal. Although I do not know the exact details of their deal, am certain that we cannot give her the princess identity back. After she finished speaking, she relayed the entire conversation between her and the Empress Dowager to M.O. Linyuan. Suddenly, an idea appeared in M.O. Linyuan's mind. After listening to you, I don't think it mattered what the identity of a princess can do. Perhaps it's more important to them whether or not I admit that she's from the royal bloodline. Chapter, 180 No, it can't be. Yi Mu immediately understood the meaning behind Mo Linyuan's words, could it be that Mo Dai wants to be the female emperor? Mo Linyuan's face dimmed instantly. If his guess was correct, then the marriage proposal from the Wen family was just a disguise. They were deliberately diverting his focus so that he will let his guard down around Mo Dai. That way, he will personally restore her status as a princess. After all, what can a mere princess do? If this is true, then we cannot believe a single word the one family said, Yi Mu said angrily. No wonder Mo Dai had been acting so obediently and calm these past few years. She had a plan up her sleeve all along. Had she not made this trip to the Empress Dowager's place, then Mo Linyuan would have restored Mo Dai's status based on their deceased mother, and the pair of jade butterfly Mo Dai showed him. Once that happens, Mo Dai will definitely jump out in the future and stab him in the back. What should we do now? When Yi Mu saw how angry Mo Linyuan appeared, she couldn't help but become a little worried, don't be impulsive. She is still your biological sister. Mo Linyuan wouldn't just chop their head off because of his anger, right? Since Mo Dai was in on this plan, then Mo Sherwin certainly was too. One was his father and the other was his younger sister. They are still his relatives. Mo Linyuan really wanted to know the reason why they're calculating against him. Had he not rescued them from the dungeon, they would have starved to death. Instead of repaying this debt, they're biting the hands that are feeding them. What for? I want to ask him. Mo Linyuan stood up. There was a murderous aura around him, and his sharp phoenix eyes were full of killing intent. I treated them fairly, 
why are they doing this to me? Eh, wait a moment. Yi Mu quickly grabbed him, they won't admit to anything if you confront them like this. Leave this matter to me. A light bulb lit up in Yi Mu's mind, I have a plan. Although Yi Mu said that she had a plan, she was partially only saying that to calm Mo Lin Yuan. After all, they were still in the dark regarding their enemy's plan. If Mo Lin Yuan did something out of anger, it would give reason to those eyeing his throne to attack him. Yi Mu carefully pondered over Mo Dai's mentality. In her opinion, Mo Dai was a woman who would give something she didn't need to receive something she needed. She may have ambitions, but her ambitions aren't big enough for her to desire to become the emperor. The reason she probably agreed to it was that she had no choice. If Mo Dai had a choice, she probably will continue to pretend she was invisible next to Mo Lin Yuan. After all, she already achieved some results by pretending to be invisible. Mo Lin Yuan had almost agreed to restore her princess status before. At this time, she wouldn't collude with other people unless she had no choice. For example, she might have been blackmailed by the Shi family or by the Empress Dowager with something she did. And if this matter were to be found out by Mo Lin Yuan, he would definitely not forgive her. The same probably holds true for Mo Sherwin too. If he was not threatened by someone, then it was impossible for him to take the initiative to stir up trouble based on how much he feared the Empress Dowager. Unless he believed that Mo Lin Yuan would not protect him after he found out the truth behind the Empress' death. As a result, he had no choice but to collude with the Shi family. Somehow, Yi Mu felt that what she had inferred was pretty close to the truth. Even though Yi Mu was a bystander in all of this, based on all the clues, she could only conclude that the cause of death of the late Empress bound the Empress Dowager, the Shi family, and everyone else together. The more Yi Mu thought about it, the more she was certain she was correct. She could not think of anything else that would make Mo Sherwen and Mo Dai feel that Mo Lin Yuan would kill them if he found out. Chapter 181 it was just that Mo Lin Yuan never expressed any doubts at the cause of his mother's death. Since he never doubted his mother's death, why did Mo Sherwin behave so strangely? Yi Mu turned around the corner and headed towards the place where Mo Sherwin lived. She felt that if she wanted to know the full truth, then she would have to start with the weakest link. At this time, Mo Sherwin and Mo Dai were together. However, they didn't even eat lunch yet because of the current matter that weighed heavily in their hearts. Since they mentioned the Empress' final wish and even brought out her butterfly jade, Mo Lin Yuan would probably restore Mo Dai's princess status, right? Mo Dai reluctantly said, Royal brother almost agreed to my request before. After all, restoring my title is only a small request. It must be that damned Yi Mu. She must have been afraid that I would snatch her favor after I restored my status. Mo Sherwin also felt unhappy. It was only a small request. The two of them had lived their lives quietly in the past four years without causing any trouble. Why didn't Mo Lin Yuan agree to their request? Let's wait a while longer. Mo Lin Yuan will definitely agree. We should remain patient. Yi Mu originally wanted to ask the servants to report to Mo Sherwin that she was here, but this was a perfect chance for her to eavesdrop on them. She had excellent hearing thanks to the hundred years of internal energy inside her, so when she heard Mo Shiwen's words, she suddenly prevented the palace guard from reporting her arrival. The palace servant was confused by her action. He looked at her then looked back at the palace hall. He was a master cultivator, but he couldn't hear anything from this distance. Since she was only a little girl, it should be impossible for her to hear anything. Mo Dai said, I heard from someone that Yi Mu went to visit the Empress Dowager this morning. She wouldn't find out something she shouldn't know from the Empress Dowager, right? That's impossible. Mo Sherwin said, that woman chose to cooperate with us, so it's impossible for her to dismantle the whole plan. Even if Mo Lin Yuan promised to give her more benefits, she wouldn't agree. Mo Dai mumbled, Sigh, if I wasn't afraid that the cause of royal mother's death will provoke royal brother, then I wouldn't have participated in this matter. I would be satisfied with just a princess title. The Empress Dowager and the people from the Shi family are difficult to deal with. Mo Sherwin also sighed, if Mo Lin Yuan found out the truth about what happened that year, then we're all going to die. 
what choices do we have right now? Later in the afternoon, you should visit him to curry some favor with him. Since we have no way out of this, we can only proceed forward with the plan. When Yi Mu heard this, she couldn't help but narrowed her eyes. She was stopped by the palace guard that was guarding M. O. Shiwen's palace. It was obvious that the palace guard wasn't one of the emperor's people. He thought something was fishy when he saw Yi Mu suddenly fell silent. Without Yi Mu's permission, he announced her arrival. Young lady Yi Mu has arrived. Yi Mu glanced at the palace guard, but she didn't say anything. The moment her name was announced, the door to the palace hall was flung open. M. O. Sherwen was a little flustered by Yi Mu's sudden arrival. She couldn't have heard anything since she was so far away from them, right? Yi Mu smiled generously at him and said, Yi Mu paid respect to the emperor's father. I came here to visit you on behalf of his majesty. She signaled her servant to take out the box she had prepared beforehand and opened it. There was old ginseng inside the box. M. O. Sherwen concealed his suspicious gaze and allowed Yi Mu to enter. Yi Mu didn't appear surprised when she saw M. O. die, instead, she greeted her properly. Everyone knew that the emperor favored Yi Mu. The reason was that Yi Mu saved his life. Even if Yi Mu didn't know the palace etiquette, no one could blame her or punish her. After all, the emperor always protected her. What did you come here for? M. O. Sherwin asked straight away. He had ordered all the servants to leave the room, except for the palace servant who announced Yi Mu's arrival. Chapter 182 The palace guard seemed to be a master at martial arts. His gaze was a little too sharp. Yi Mu glanced at him and she suddenly had an idea. I originally came here just to visit you. But this morning, I heard an interesting story from the Empress Dowager. M. O. Shiwen's heart jumped, and he asked urgently, What did you tell you? Yi Mu smiled and said, It's not much. She only told me that she wasn't the only one who caused the Empress' death. She told me that many people took part in the Empress' death. His Majesty doesn't believe the Empress Dowager's words, so he asked me to come here to ask you. Beads of cold sweat formed on M. O. Shiwen's forehead, that woman is vicious and ruthless. Her words cannot be trusted. W. What else did she tell you? Yi Mu said, she said she was able to succeed at the beginning of the power struggle because the three major families all intervened on the matter. M. O. Shiwen's face turned pale. Didn't that mean that M. O. Linyuan found out that the Wen family was not a trustworthy ally? Yi Mu examined his reaction and concluded that the Empress Dowager didn't lie. She also said Yi Mu continued slowly, she also said that you are the main culprit behind the Empress' death. Why you, you're talking nonsense. M.O. Sherwin appeared to be a cat whose tail had been just stepped on. However, the panic and fear on his face did not seem to be fake. When M.O. Dai saw M.O. Shiwen's reaction, she quickly held him down to prevent him from revealing anything. Then, she glared at Yi Mu with ill intentions. You're only a person from an unknown origin, what right do you have to participate in our royal affairs? My royal mother has been dead for many years. She died because she was forced to death by the Empress Dowager. Is that so? Yi Mu sat on a decoratively carved chair and smiled, but what you just said is completely opposite of what the Empress Dowager told me. Who do you think His Majesty will believe in? If the Wen family isn't blackmailing you, would you have colluded with them? There must be a secret behind all of this. Yi Mu's eyes seemed to be able to see through everything. M. O. Dai's heart trembled slightly when her gaze met with Yi Mu's eyes. She finally couldn't bear it any longer and asked in a low voice, How much do you know? Yi Mu said, Do you think I would be standing here if I didn't know everything? You are the daughter of the late empress while your father is the husband of the late empress. Yet your actions are so cruel and ruthless. The emperor has invited the empress dowager over to him. When the time comes, he wants the two of you to confront her. M. O. Shiwen's heart crumbled at her words, Zhao Yunqin actually dared to betray us. He had long said that Zhao Yunqin was unreliable. He told the Shur family not to cooperate with Zhao Yunqin, but they ignored his advice. Now, she had stabbed them in the back. Yi Mu smiled slightly. 
she didn't actually say anything with substance or specific. They assumed she had because they are disillusioned with guilt. However, their attitude allowed Yi Mu to confirm that they were being blackmailed by the Shi family. Yi Mu stooped up and said calmly, His Majesty said that the two of you still have a chance to tell him exactly what happened that year. If you truthfully tell him everything, he may consider sparing your life. Mo Sherwen and Mo Dai looked at each other. They couldn't figure out how much the Empress Dowager had told her. Mo Dai secretly glanced at the martial arts master standing behind her. The martial arts master had a gloomy expression on his face as he stared back at her. Mo Dai suddenly felt a burst of confidence seeing him standing behind her. She put on a scared expression on her face. Then she said to Yi Mu, We will tell you everything. But first, you should come into the inner room to have some tea. We will slowly tell you everything. Yi Mu did not doubt them and followed them in. However, when she sat down, Mo Dai and Mo Sherwin sat on her left and right side. The mysterious palace guard had disappeared. The death of the Empress cannot be blamed on me. As soon as Mo Sherwin sat down, he put on a bitter face and said, Xiaoyun really wasn't killed by me. Her death was caused by the Empress Dowager. Chapter 183 You should elaborate. I want to see how different your story is from what the Empress Dowager told me. Mo Sherwin lowered his head and hesitated. It was hard to imagine that a man like him used to be an emperor. That year, Zhao Yunqin and the Shi family joined forces and caught me off guard. In the end, the Empress Dowager managed to take away my power. Not only was that not enough for her, but she forced me to hand over the Empress as well. Hand over. Hand her over to whom? Yi Mu instantly realized that this was the key point to the story. Mo Sherwin stared at her. His gaze had turned gloomy as he said, there was a person who had liked the Empress for a long time. In order to force the Empress to accept him, he conspired with the Empress Dowager at that time. He helped the Empress Dowager rebel against me and in exchange, the Empress Dowager gave him the woman he always wanted. He did not want power, but a woman, my woman. Yi Mu's heart jumped, and then what happened? Mo Sherwin snorted, what else could have happened? The Empress was tainted by someone else how could she have the face to continue on living? So, she committed suicide. Yi Mu never expected the Empress to be the one to kill herself. Just as she wanted to ask him another question, someone behind her suddenly knocked her unconscious. Yi Mu closed her eyes and fell to the ground. Mo Sherwen hurriedly walked over. Has she fainted? I heard that she's very powerful. Are you sure she won't wake up? The martial arts expert sent by the Wen family snorted, she has passed out. The rumors stating that she has strong martial arts are mere rumors. She is only a young girl how can she do anything? Only people like you would believe in rumors. Mo Sherwen flushed red with rage at his comment. The other party sneered and said, I almost forgot. You do have some strengths, such as the ability to talk nonsense. That year, it was obviously you who gave your wife away to someone else in order to save your own life. After she was defiled, you felt humiliated and forced her to commit suicide. Yet when you told her the story, you acted like you had no choice but to do it. Mo Shiwen's expression turned unsightly at the other party's words. Stop talking. Why do I have to stop talking? The martial arts master didn't fear Mo Shiwen's identity as the emperor's father, don't forget that you're only my master's dog. If you're not obedient, then my master will tell the emperor how you treated the empress that year. I am instructed to protect you, but you should also become smarter and stop seeking death. Mo Sherwin didn't dare to talk back to the martial arts master even after being humiliated by him. He didn't have a choice since the other party had his weakness in their hands. How much longer did he have to live like this? He restrained his anger and said that damn Zhao Yunqin had told the girl everything. Isn't the Wen family going to do something about that? Wasn't there an agreement between Zhao Yunqin and the Wen family? The man frowned, Zhao Yunqin wouldn't have told the young girl everything so easily. You guys have been cheated by this girl. Then this little girl had lied to me. Mo Sherwen was enraged. Isn't that obvious? 
the other party sneered at him. Murderous intent surged forth in Mo Shiwen's eyes. It was fine that Zhao Yunqin had imprisoned him. He could endure the Shi family's threats. But Yi Mu was just a damned little girl. How dared to lie to him? He almost told her everything. Can you give this girl to me? The martial arts master saw the ill intention beneath Mo Shiwen's eyes and said, If I give her to you, will you be able to hide her properly? Besides, she is a good bargaining chip for us against the emperor. Chapter 184 It doesn't matter, Mo Shiwen said with an evil smile. There is a secret room in this room that no one knows about. If I lock her there, no one will be able to find her. The martial arts master thought about it and agreed. The imperial palace was filled with the emperor's people, so it wasn't easy for him to take a person away. He responded, I can leave her with you, but you must make sure that she will never leave that place. If she managed to run away and tell the emperor everything she knows, then we are both finished. Do you understand that? Mo Sherwen was a little scared, what if the emperor finds out about us? Bah! The martial arts master sneered, I just went out and asked around. The emperor didn't visit the empress dowager. This meant that this girl lied to us from the beginning to the end. Although the emperor could easily find out that she came here before, as long as you hit her well, he can't kill you. Mo Sherwen was very guilty, but he believed that the emperor would never kill his father, he felt relieved. Yes, he will never find the secret room. Mo Sherwen was very confident about his secret room. The man didn't feel reassured as he said, I will report the events to the Prime Minister now. I will leave her to you. You can do anything to her as long as you don't kill her. Yes, I understand. Mo Sherwen was kissing up to the martial arts master. When he was imprisoned by Zhao Yunqin, he had experienced a lot of things. He was often humiliated by Zhao Yunqin and had even licked her shoes. All his moral backbone was gone by now. After the man left, Mo Dai felt a little uneasy, the one family is really being too much. How can they only send one martial arts master to protect us? Now that he is gone, the Empress Dowager won't send people to imprison us, right? The two always lived in fear of the Empress Dowager. It's going to be fine. Before he returned, let's go to the dungeon first. Mo Dai nodded her head. But she was quite unhappy when she saw Mo Sherwen carrying Yi Mu in his arms. Why didn't you let that man take the damned girl away? We're endangering ourselves by letting her stay here. You don't understand, do you? A cold ray of light flashed in Mo Shiwen's eyes as he looked at the eleven-year-old Yi Mu. That brat locked us up here and gave us nothing but food and drink. He's treating us like we're prisoners. He stole my throne and stirred up all kinds of troubles. In the past few years, he hadn't even given me a woman. Since he is so heartless towards me, then he shouldn't blame me for being cruel. Mo Dai's eyes shone with excitement when she heard his words. Father Emperor, are you saying you want this damned girl's body? Mo Sherwin snorted arrogantly, so what if I want to? As long as I imprison her in the secret room, Mo Linyuan will never be able to find her. If he can't find any evidence, he can't do anything to me. After all, I'm still his father. Besides, that dog servant had just said that this little girl is not as strong and powerful as the rumor said. Now that she has fallen into my hands, what can she do? When she becomes pregnant, she will naturally become obedient. Mo Sherwin felt an unspeakable excitement when he thought of being able to sleep with the woman that Mo Linyuan cared about. In recent years, Mo Dai was neglected by her royal brother. She felt that it was all because of Yi Mu. Now that she knew that her father emperor would take Yi Mu's body, she was rejoicing in other people's misfortunes. After the entrance to the secret room opened, they hurried down the stairs of the secret room. This was a secret room that only the emperors knew. Whenever an emperor was facing a calamity, they could stay in this secret room to wait for the calamity to pass. However, Mo Linyuan did not know of the existence of this secret room. Chapter 185 However, they didn't notice that when they walked down the stairs to the secret room, Yi Mu moved her hand slightly and dropped a piece of cloth. 
the cloth was caught in between the door to the secret room. The cloth would be easily spotted, and it would be easy for her rescuers to see that something was wrong. On their way down the secret room, they light the oil lamps on the wall with fire. M.O. Sherwin placed Yi Mu on the bed of the secret room. Ha, I must say that M.O. Linyuan has good taste. Although this little girl is still young, she will definitely grow into a beauty that will bring the downfall of a country in the future. M.O. Dai was angry when she heard her imperial father's comment, I have long been dissatisfied with her face. Imperial father, move aside, I want to scratch her face until she's disfigured. Wait. M.O. Sherwin hurriedly stopped her, don't do that yet. If she becomes ugly now, then I won't even have the urge to do it. But I promise you that you can do whatever you want with her once I've gotten bored of her. M.O. Dai resentfully gave her plan. The martial arts master was blocked from leaving the palace after he knocked Yi Mu unconscious. He planned on leaving the palace to report to his master, but he was blocked by a guard. Someone had reported that Yi Mu had gone to find M.O. Sherwen. But when M.O. Linyuan sent someone to check on them, he found out that M.O. Sherwen was not in his residence. Yi Mu was not there either. By some lucky coincidence, a guy was seen sneaking out of M.O. Shiwen's residence. He was caught by M.O. Linyuan's people. Confess. Where is Miss Yi Mu? Zixu stared at the man coldly. He could tell from just one glance that this man did not work for His Majesty. Ever since Empress Dowager left the palace four years ago, the Emperor had cleaned up all the people working for the Empress Dowager in the palace. Since this person was clearly not working for the Empress Dowager, then he must be a spy sent from the outside. Sensing that the situation was not good, the man immediately tried to escape. But Sixus martial arts were above him, so the intruder was quickly stopped. You want to escape? I'm going to bring you to meet His Majesty. When he heard that he was going to be brought before the emperor, the man tried to commit suicide by poison. Unfortunately for him, Zixiu was able to remove the poison pill from inside his mouth. Then, he tied the intruder up and brought him to M.O. Linyuan. Where is Yimu? M.O. Linyuan sensed that something had gone wrong. Yimu told him that she needed to return to her residence first. So, he waited for her to return to have lunch together. But he waited for a long time and she still hadn't returned. Later, he learned that she went to M.O. Shiwen's residence on her way back. Recalling that M.O. Sherwen was trying to conspire against him, the murderous intent flooded M.O. Linyuan's heart. He hadn't even settled his accounts with him yet, but he actually dared to make a move against his people first. M.O. Linyuan could feel that something was wrong when the servants reported to him that M.O. Sherwen was not at his residence. Fortunately, they were able to capture someone trying to sneak out from M.O. Shiwen's residence. The man refused to tell them anything. For the emperor to be able to catch him, it seemed that he was wrong before. It was clear that the emperor had gotten wind of their plan and was waiting for this final confirmation. Fortunately for him, they haven't found Yi Mu yet. The emperor shouldn't know much about their plan right now. At this time, a person entered the palace hall and said, Reporting to your majesty, I have searched the palace and found no trace of the retired emperor. M.O. Linyuan became restless instantly. He knew that there was a secret passage in the palace that led people outside the palace. Could it be that M.O. Sherwen had taken Yimu away? That was impossible. M.O. Sherwen was still waiting for him to restore M.O. Dai's princess status, so he wouldn't have left. Could it be? M.O. Linyuan shuddered. Could it be that Yimu found out their secret, so they took care of her? M.O. Linyuan had guessed quite correctly. He felt more restless when he recalled that Yi Mu still couldn't use her internal energy yet. No, it was more accurate to say that Yi Mu didn't dare to use her internal energy. Once she uses her internal energy, then all the pent-up murderous energy inside her will break out, leading to a massacre in the Imperial Palace. Chapter 186 What should Yi Mu do if she cannot resist? M.O. Sherwin probably had a martial arts expert supporting him, so it was even more unlikely for Yi Mu to escape. M.O. Linyuan was uneasy. He decided to go to the place where M.O. Sherwin lived. Since Yi Mu went missing there, then there must be some clues left behind. Just as M.O. Sherwin was about to undress Yi Mu, 
Yi Mu's small hand suddenly grabbed his hand and stopped him. What are you doing? Mo Sherwin was frightened when he saw that Yi Mu had woken up. However, when he saw that she was drowsily staring at him without an ounce of killing intent behind her eyes, his courage returned. Don't you know what I'm doing? He had not betted a woman for several years, so his gaze was quite impatient as he stared at Yi Mu, seeing your reaction, you must be a virgin, right? I'm surprised to see that Mo Lin Yuan was able to hold himself back after being together with you for so long. But in the end, I will be the one taking advantage of you. Yi Mu frowned, I don't have that kind of relationship with him. Mo Sherwin waved his hand, it seems like you still don't understand his feelings. Anyways, you will never be able to escape this place now that you're here. When Mo Lin Yuan finally realized that you're missing, you've been thoroughly played by me. A glint of killing intent flashed in Yi Mu's eyes. Mo Dai coldly sneered, I thought that you were quite skilled due to the rumors, but it turned out that you're just a useless little girl. I don't even know why the emperor values you. Perhaps he values you because of your appearance. Yi Mu suddenly glared at her and said, I have nothing to say since you've caught me. It's just that when I was unconscious, I heard a man talk about what really happened to the late empress. Was it all true? Mu Dai and Mo Shiwen's expression darkened and they heard Yi Mu's question. Did you hear everything? They were starting to panic, but Mo Sherwen quickly calmed himself down. It doesn't matter what you've heard because you will never be able to get out of here. Yi Mu frowned, I don't plan on living anymore now that I'm trapped here. I just want to know if you really sold your wife away to save your life. Mo Sherwen was stunned by her sudden question, but his old and vain face distorted quickly after he got over the shock. It was obvious that slut's fault. She had ambiguous relationships with other people first. Since she didn't put me in her eyes, then she shouldn't blame me for selling her out. Who did she have an ambiguous relationship with? Who did you sell her to? M.O. Sherwin snorted coldly, who else could it be? It's that old bastard one. I trusted him so much, but instead, he helped the Empress Dowager to steal my position as the Emperor away. If it weren't because of his intervention, I wouldn't have lost so badly. Not only did I lose all my power after that struggle for power, but I was also imprisoned for five years. Yi Mu was stunned by his revelation, then why are you helping him murder his majesty? Shouldn't you be helping Mo Lin Yuan since he betrayed you before? Bah! Mo Sherwen was obviously very angry. That evil creature, Mo Sherwen had only been close to his mother since childhood. Why would he care about me? He didn't know what had really happened that year, and yet he already imprisoned me here. If he knew that I was the one who drugged the Empress, sent her to Wen's bed, and humiliated her about it later, then he would commit patricide. Mo Sherwin felt that he was wronged, it was clear that she had an ambiguous relationship with Wen. I merely allowed their relationship to happen and secured my life at the same time. What did I do wrong? In the end, she committed suicide and caused me so much trouble. So, the reason that you're helping the Wen family is that you're afraid that they will tell the truth to Mo Lin Yuan. As a result, you can only help the Wen family to harm your son. Yi Mu finally understood the cause and effect of everything that had happened. She sighed deeply and said, Fortunately, Mo Lin Yuan didn't take after your brain. Chapter 187 Her words angered Mo Sherwen but Mo Dai quickly tugged his hand and said, what are you still speaking nonsense with her? Break her body first. Mo Sherwen tried to grab Yi Mu, but Yi Mu swiftly avoided it, do you know what you're doing? Mo Lin Yuan had no reason to doubt what happened to the late empress, but he will eventually find out that something is amiss since you've kidnapped me. Mo Sherwen sneered, why would I be afraid? He has no evidence, so he won't dare to commit patricide. Mo Sherwin once again rushed towards Yi Mu to grab her. This time Mo Dai also joined him to help. Mo Dai had long disliked Yi Mu. She would be ecstatic if she could finally knock Yi Mu down to the mud on the ground. Yi Mu sighed while she dodged away from their hands, Mo Lin Yuan's mother is really unlucky to have married a scum like you. Because she met you, she was forced to die. I didn't want her to die. Mo Sherwin didn't feel like he was to blame. 
At first, when the Empress Dowager colluded with other families, the one family only wanted the Empress in return and nothing else. The Empress Dowager forced me to personally send the Empress to Wen's bed. After that, Wen wanted to take her away, but she refused to leave she told him that even if she had to struggle at death's door, she would wait for Mo Linyuan to return. But how can I stand her after she was slept by another man? She was a thorn in my eye, so I merely mocked and humiliated her a little. Who knew that she would commit suicide when she found out that I was the one who drugged her? Had she been alive, then I would have at least been able to collude with the Wen family. Then, the Empress Dowager wouldn't have imprisoned me for five years. The more he spoke, the angrier Yi Mu became. How could there be such a scumbag in the world? She stared at Emo Dai and asked, What about you? She was your biological mother. Since you knew the truth, why didn't you tell your brother? Emo Dai's expression became twisted, it was all because of it. I had pretended to be invisible and obedient for so long, but royal brother didn't even glance at me. In contrast, you did nothing to deserve my royal brother's attention and doting, yet he continued to spoil you. So, why should I tell him the truth? The people from the Shur family told me that once I restore my princess status, they will slowly push me to power. Once an opportunity comes, they will replace my elder brother with me. I will become the emperor. Why would I cut off my road for my elder brother when I can just replace him? After she finished speaking, she heard a cold voice resonating inside the secret room. It seems like you really do want to replace me and become the emperor. It was just a short sentence, but everyone inside the secret room immediately fell silent. Mo Linyuan slowly emerged from the darkness. He had come here to find them, but he unexpectedly found a piece of cloth left behind by Yi Mu. To prevent himself from startling them, he had let several people use internal energy to slowly force the door to the secret room to open. He didn't expect to come upon such a wonderful scene as soon as he came down the secret room. Mo Dai's expression immediately turned ghastly pale as she quickly fell on her knees, Royal brother, please let me explain. Yi Mu was the calmest among the group. She had heard the movements above the secret room, so she encouraged Mo Sherwin to reveal everything. After all, there was some stuff that she didn't know how to Mo Linyuan personally, so it was better to let him hear everything himself. The internal energy around Mo Linyuan was pulsating dangerously. He had rescued Mo Sherwen from the prison and protected him, but for what? Mo Sherwen was the one who harmed his mother and now he wants to harm him. He even wanted to hurt Yi Mu. Why didn't he die instead of his mother? Yi Mu walked to Mo Linyuan's side and held his hand. No matter what happens, he will still have her. Chapter 188 An invisible pressure seemed to be pushed down at Mo Sherwen and Mo Dai in the dark. Mo Sherwin knew that everything was over and that he was going to die. Mo Dai knew that this was the end for her too. She was tied up and tossed to the side of the room. A dozen guards surrounded the dark room. It was impossible to escape. Everyone watched as Mo Linyuan walked towards Mo Sherwin step by step. Mo Sherwin was forced into the corner. What do you want to do? In your father. Mo Sherwin would have never imagined that Mo Linyuan would arrive here so fast. He had just kidnapped Yi Mu here and originally planned to wait for the Wen family to arrive here and help him create the illusion that Yi Mu was never here. Then, he can enjoy Mo Linyuan's woman as much as he wants. But his plan fell apart when Mo Linyuan found the secret room and overheard everything. How did he find the secret room? Mo Linyuan was 15 years old, but he was already very tall. He looked down at Mo Sherwin in a condescending way and asked, Is there anything else that I don't know about? Are you hiding any more secrets? Mo Sherwin was trembling as he quickly shook his head and said, Nothing. I'm not hiding anything else. I didn't kill her, she committed suicide herself. What did you say to her to cause her to commit suicide? Mo Sherwin didn't dare to speak. Tell me. Mo Linyuan withdrew his sword from the sheath. The sudden sound scared Mo Sherwin so badly that he immediately curled into a ball and protected his head by covering them with his hands. The blade was suddenly thrown at him, but it missed him by mere inches and had buried itself in the wall. 
M. O. Sherwen immediately peed his pants from fear. What did you say to her? M. O. Linyuan remained cold and indifferent as he tried to extort a confession out of M. O. Sherwen. Too sad. M. O. Sherwen shuddered as he hugged his head with his arms, I said that she finally got her what she wanted. I also said that you aren't my biological son, instead, you are a child from the one family. I told her that a slut like her was not worthy of living in the world. The Empress was already under house arrest. But she committed suicide in the Empress Dowager's palace by hanging herself after she heard those words from him. M. O. Linyuan sneered. His voice was getting louder and louder until he finally snapped. What right did you have to say that to her when you sold your wife to save your own life? And instead of thanking her, you humiliated her and caused her to die. He grabbed M. O. Shiwen's collar and pulled him up. M. O. Sherwin trembled under his fury gaze, but he managed to stutter out a few words. I have evidence. I have evidence. His eyes widened as he stared at M. O. Linyuan. It was uncertain whether M. O. Sherwin was more fearful or angry as he explained everything. Before your mother became pregnant with you, she had an ambiguous relationship with one. One time, your mother was injured while hunting. One rushed to rescue her. However, before they came back, they had been gone for several hours together. When she came back, she was sloppily dressed. Soon after that event, she was pregnant with you. Who knows who your real father is? Then why didn't you say that before? The veins on M. O. Linyuan's forehead seemed as if they were about to burst and his grip on M. O. Sherwen involuntarily tightened. I didn't dare. The Wen family is a powerful and influential family. I only managed to sit on the throne thanks to my family. I have no real power or influence, so how could I dare to go against the Wen family? Otherwise, do you think that I wouldn't have killed a bastard child like you? Bang! M. O. Linyuan slammed M. O. Sherwin against the ground. He pulled the sword buried in the wall and pointed the sword at him. So, because of this reason, you had merely given me the title of a crown prince. You never asked for my well-being or cared for me because of your own doubt. Instead of confirming the truth, you only dare to secretly doubt your wife. You really are a useless piece of scum. M. O. Sherwin dared not to refute M. O. Linyuan's accusations. Yi Mu was protected by Wen Feng who was standing behind her. Yi Mu felt sympathetic towards M. O. Linyuan. It would have been better for him to be fatherless rather than have a father like M. O. Sherwin. M. O. Linyuan finally calmed his emotions down. He looked at M. O. Sherwin who was curled up in the corner of the room. In a calm and indifferent tone, M. O. Linyuan said, Since you say that I'm not your son, then I won't be committing patricide if I kill you, right? Chapter 189 You M. O. Shiwen's eyes widened in shock, No, no. I am your father. M. O. Linyuan appeared cold as he sneered, I don't have a father who covets my woman. If Yi Mu didn't have the ability to resist, and if he hadn't come here quickly, wouldn't M. O. Shiwen's plan succeed? Scum like him was not worthy to be his father. M. O. Linyuan's words scared M. O. Sherwen, but my plan didn't succeed. I was just possessed by my own greed for a moment. I haven't had a woman for a long time, so my desire took over my rationality. Who told you to put me under house arrest? You didn't even give me a woman. M. O. Sherwen acted as if he was the one who had received an injustice. M. O. Linyuan raised an eyebrow and stared at him. Let's settle the matter like this I will tell everyone that you have an acute illness. You can't get out of bed due to the illness. I've invited numerous doctors to the imperial palace to cure you, but none of them was able to cure you. Finally, the illness took your life today afternoon. What do you think? M. O. Linyuan laughed, anyways, your body was already weak in the past five years. It's better for you to leave this world early. M. O. Sherwin trembled in fear when he felt the murderous intent from M. O. Linyuan's words. He quickly abandoned all his dignity and kowtowed, P. Please, you cannot do this. I am your father. Your mother really loved me. You cannot do this. Everyone loved people who are good-looking. In the past, M. O. Sherwin was a handsome youth. 
Mo Shiwen's royal mother was a proper lady who had fallen in love with him at first sight. However, she was still young at that time and she didn't know that some people were rotten beneath their beautiful exterior. Did you love her then? Oh of course I did. Mo Linyuan smiled, if that's the case, then you should go down to accompany her. After he finished speaking, he raised his sword and swung it down fiercely. Blood immediately splattered everywhere as Mo Shiwen's head rolled on the ground. Everyone had a terrified expression on their face as they watched Mo Shiwen die. Oh! Mo Dai let out a stifled scream under the gag. She looked at Mo Linyuan in disbelief. In this era, people believed strongly in ghosts and spirits. She never thought that Mo Linyuan would actually make a move to kill their father. He actually dared to kill his biological father. Her scream alarmed Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan's face was stained with blood as he turned to look at Mo Dai. His eyes were filled with killing intent. Mo Dai felt that her three spiritual souls had gone into her seven mortal souls. She struggled through the ropes binding her as she cried for help from the people around her. There were a dozen or so men in the secret room, but none of them even glanced at her. Mo Linyuan walked towards her with a sword. He was slowly getting closer and closer. Mo Dai finally stopped pleading and hoping that someone was willing to help her. She looked at Mo Linyuan pitifully. She finally remembered all of Mo Linyuan's good points at this final moment. She would have died a long time ago if it wasn't for Mo Linyuan. Even though Mo Linyuan didn't restore her princess identity, he had protected her from the Empress Dowager and everyone else who wanted to harm him. It was a momentary slip in her mind that caused her to walk down the wrong path. Originally, all the evil deeds were committed by Mo Sherwin. Even though Mo Sherwin would have been angry, he wouldn't have killed her if she had stepped out sooner and told him everything. But now it was too late for her to explain anything. Mo Linyuan personally reached out and took the gag from her mouth when he saw Mo die burst into tears. You look like you're afraid. Sob, sob, sob. Our royal brother, I was forced to do it. I wanted to tell you everything originally. It's the truth. Is that right? Mo Linyuan looked down at the tied up Mo Dai. His expression was bone chillingly ice cold as he stared at her. But why do I feel that you really want to replace me as the emperor? Chapter 190 Mo Dai could only cry when she heard Mo Linyuan's words. She sobbed and cried which ruined the makeup on her face. Royal brother, no matter what I did, I am still your biological sister. We came from the same parents. I am only 14 years old I don't want to die yet. Royal brother, please let me go. I promise I will never show my face in front of you again. Their only silence after Mo Dai begged for her life. Mo Dai could feel the lingering presence of death in Mo Linyuan's silence. Strictly speaking, Mo Dai had been dead nine years ago. If he never officially granted her an identity, then she will be a person with an unknown background for the rest of her life. Even if he spared her life because of their mother, he didn't seem to have to worry about what she will do in the future because she had no power to harm him. Seeing how Mo Linyuan remained silent, Mo Dai could no longer restrain herself and started crying out loud. Royal brother, please spare me. I won't get in your way anymore. Since I have no official identity, I can't do anything to cause you trouble. Our royal mother only gave birth to the two of us, do you really want to kill off your last blood relative? Mo Linyuan sighed suddenly. It's true that you pose me no death even if I spare your life. Mo Linyuan's words made Mo die extremely happy. But Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes, I feel that you are no longer worthy to continue living in this world. You continue to help the enemy plot against me even though you knew the truth about our royal mother's death. It seems as if you are willing to betray me for the sake of receiving some benefits even though you know we are blood-related siblings. He raised his sword again after he finished speaking. Royal brother. Mo Dai was frightened to the point where her voice suddenly changed pitch as it echoed in the secret room. She struggled desperately as if her life completely depended on it. Her eyes widened in fear as she stared at her royal brother. You killed your biological father. 
aren't you afraid of retribution from heaven? Mo Linyuan smiled softly, having relatives like you is already retribution for me. The sword rose and fell. Mo died died with remaining grievances in the mortal world. The air reeked of blood and murderous intent. Mo Linyuan appeared to be an extremely terrifying existence at the moment. Whenever he looked in a certain direction, the soldiers standing in his line of sight would immediately involuntarily bow their heads. No one wanted to approach him because no one had the courage to do so. It was also because he had just killed his biological father and sister without blinking his eyes. In this era, relationships with families were greatly valued. As such, the guards couldn't help but tremble when they saw how ruthless M. O. Linyuan acted towards them. Finally, M. O. Linyuan's gaze fell on Yimu. M. O. Linyuan's figure was elongated under the light of the flickering flame. His dragon robe made him look even more ferocious. His ice-cold expression and the bloodstains on his face made him look terrifying. He reached out his hand toward Yimu. Come here. Everyone subconsciously looked towards Yimu. Mo Linyuan had a frightening appearance at the moment. If she was a normal little girl, she would have screamed and fled the moment she saw Mo Linyuan. However, Yi Mu was not a normal little girl, so she didn't scream nor did she flee. She looked at him quietly for a second before she walked towards him. However, instead of holding his blood-stained hands, she wiped his face with her handkerchief. You did very well. She actually said that he had done a good job. One of the guards had a shocked expression on his face. How could slaughtering his relatives be a job well done? As she rubbed the blood off his face, she said, the retired emperor suddenly died of an illness today. No one anticipated that this would have happened. You don't need to be too sad. As for M.O. Dai. She is only a maid who merely resembled the princess who died nine years ago. You favored her because she looked like your late sister, but now that she had unfortunately died, let someone bury her. Chapter, 191 Everyone bowed their heads in fear when they heard her words. Only M.O. Linyuan gradually smiled upon her words. He raised his blood-stained hand and held the hand that Yi Mu was using to wipe his face. Are you afraid of me? Yi Mu shook her head, the M.O. Linyuan that I know is an earnest emperor who had wholeheartedly committed his mind and body to the well-being of the world. He has done nothing wrong, so why should I be afraid of him? She looked at him seriously with her big round eyes. Mo Linyuan looked down at her he could see the reflection of the flickering candlelight in her eyes. He could feel sorrow spread throughout his heart. I only have you now. He suddenly pulled her into his embrace, don't you ever think about leaving me. Yi Mu said, I will accompany you to accomplish great things. The murderous intent in the air dissipated in an instant after they embraced each other. The onlookers were traumatized by what they had just seen. No wonder the emperor favored Miss Yi she really deserved to be favored by the emperor. The preparation after their death was quickly prepared. The body was dragged out from the secret room for burial. The commoners didn't know anything. They were only informed that the old bedridden emperor had finally succumbed to the illness and died. The emperor promised not to eat meat for three days and granted amnesty to the world. However, the news shook the royal court at its core. The old emperor died, and the princess who had died nine years ago had disappeared. Instead, they only received news that a lowly maid resembling the appearance of the princess had died. The princess was the emperor's blood-related sister. Yet he had casually revealed that she had already ceased to exist. The officials of the court dared not to breathe another word. M. O. Linyuan's ruthless moves had undoubtedly alarmed everyone. This was especially true for those who wished to fight against him. When the Empress Dowager heard the news, the teacup she was holding accidentally fell to the ground. She could hardly believe that a fifteen-year-old can actually do such a ruthless thing. She trembled in fear before she whispered softly, send news that I have fallen sick. In the next few days, don't allow anyone to visit me. Yes. The people in the three big families were also afraid. Their plan hadn't even begun and yet, their pawns were already dead. They heard that Mo Linyuan was enraged when Mo Linyuan discovered that Mo Sherwen wanted to harm Yimu. As a result, he killed Mo Sherwen, 
making it seem like he killed his father for a beautiful woman. Of course, no one dared to write such speculation on the official historical record. Instead, these were all rumors passed on orally. After the one family heard the news, they immediately made their third young master marry another woman. This made it seem as if they had never asked Mo Dai's hand for marriage. Not long after, the emperor asked Prime Minister Wen to stay after the morning court ended. Wen was not a little uncertain about the young emperor's true character, so he pretended to be submissive as he stood behind the emperor with his head lowered. Only the two of them remained in the imperial garden after everyone retreated. Mo Linyuan quietly said, Mo Sherwin told me that you are my biological father. What do you think of his speculation? Wen almost lost his usual calmness after he heard those words. That's nonsense. The late empress was a loyal and pure woman. She should not be subjected to such slander after her death. Mo Linyuan laughed when he heard his righteous words. There is no one else here right now. He turned around, and there was a hint of a mocking smile on his handsome face, Wen Xiang, I want to hear the answer directly from you. Did you love my royal mother? Wen remained silent. There was no expression on his old scholarly face. Mo Linyuan nodded his head, let me put this in another way. He walked a few steps towards Wen, Mo Sherwin said that something happened to you and my royal mother after you saved her in the hunting forest. Did anything happen between the two of you? Wen looked at the young boy's ice-cold eyes. Cold beads of sweat gradually formed on Wen's forehead. He remained speechless even after a long time. Chapter 192 I'm asking you whether you did something with her or not. Is my question difficult to answer? Mo Linyuan asked softly as he glanced at one from the side. There was a shallow smile on his handsome face as he stood next to a cluster of beautiful flowers. Wen was in a daze as he stared at Mo Linyuan. He finally opened his mouth to talk, but he was unable to say even a word. His heart thumped rapidly. Those things had happened such a long time ago that he never expected that he would be questioned about the events from that time in such a direct way. Mo Linyuan could already guess the answer to his own question after he saw Wen's reaction. He slightly raised an eyebrow and asked, So, you really did something you shouldn't have done? Wen swiftly knelt down. He didn't kneel down because he was afraid. After all, the late empress had died many years ago. Even if he was put on trial right now, he won't be charged with any crime because there were no witnesses. Mo Linyuan sighed, since you want to kneel, then just kneel and tell me the details of what actually happened. He paused for a second before continuing, I just want to know more about what happened in the past. I want to know more about my royal mother's past regardless of our personal interest. Mo Linyuan's words touched Wen's heart and soul. He looked left and right and saw that no one else was present. Suddenly, Wen had the urge to tell him everything. In addition to that, he also wanted to confirm his doubts. Your Majesty, do you want to know about the Empress' past, or do you want to know about something else? That will depend on what you have to say. Wen stared at Mo Linyuan, but he discovered that he couldn't read any emotions on Mo Linyuan's handsome face. He lowered his head and remained silent for a few moments before he finally began talking. Your Majesty, this official is guilty. However, there was no alternative at that time. No one knew what really happened besides me and the late Empress. He confessed that he had private dealings with the late Empress. Mo Linyuan did not believe that his mother was someone who would have an illicit affair with someone else, so he stared at one with ill intentions and asked, then what kind of situation rendered the two of you with no alternatives? Wen pointed at the pavilion on the side. Mo Linyuan snorted and walked towards it first. The two sat opposite each other with a cold stone table between them. Speak. Mo Linyuan's deep eyes stared at him without blinking. Wen usually had a fake smile on his face. It was rare for him to show other emotions. However, if one looked at him closely right now, he appeared to be quite nostalgic and compassionate. This official already knew the late empress before she was crowned as the empress. She was a noble lady of the first class that all the men in the capital loved. They all wanted to marry her, and this official was not an exception. Mo Linyuan did not rebuke him, continue talking. 
At the beginning, this official had gone to her estate to ask for her hand in marriage. She did not dislike me at that time, but she refused my proposal at the last second. This official was not reconciled and went to her estate to propose to her multiple times. In the end, I did not succeed because the Grand Tutor's daughter was destined to enter the palace. When sighed, sure enough, the late emperor married her that year and she was crowned as the empress. She had known that that was her destiny for a long time, so she didn't give anyone a chance with her since the beginning. At that time, the late emperor coveted her beauty, so he acted quite nicely to her. I asked to have an audience with her several times after she married, but she rejected my request each time. She was virtuous and ladylike. It was the late emperor's blessing that he was able to marry her. But because she was greatly favored by the late emperor, one of the imperial consorts became jealous. During the hunting event, the imperial consort plotted against her. Chapter 193 This official had yet to marry after many years because my heart still cared about her. When I saw that she was in danger while the emperor was busy appeasing the officials and his consorts, this official went to rescue her first. After this official rescued her, this official discovered that she was doused with an aphrodisiac. In the end, we had no choice but to go over the boundary of what was proper. M.O. Linyuan continued listening to him. It was unknown whether he believed what Wen had told him, but he allowed Wen to continue to speak. When Wen saw that M.O. Linyuan remained silent, he couldn't help but sigh in sorrow. His majesty should know what happened later. When this official brought the empress back, this official discovered that the late emperor's expression was a little off. Combined with the consorts adding oil to the fire, the late emperor became even more suspicious of us. It was a pity that the Wen family was too powerful, so he couldn't do anything to us. As a result, he could only take his anger out on the empress. The empress suddenly fell out of favor and naturally became depressed. However, this official made a promise with her to forget everything that happened in the forest. For the sake of her family, she could only conceal everything. It didn't take long for her to discover that she was pregnant. She was pregnant with you, your majesty. Then, when smiled bitterly, at first, this official had doubts too. Later I asked her if the child was mine, but the empress insisted that she drank contraception soup after she returned to the palace, so that the child was definitely not mine. She said that you're from the royal bloodline. After that, this official severed all my impractical feelings for her. After he finished speaking, there was a long silence. M.O. Linyuan closed his eyes. No wonder he was never favored by his father when he was a child. The reason the late emperor had already looked at him with suspicion was because of this event. He had no evidence to support his doubt, and he was unable to touch the Wen family. Even when M.O. Sherwen still held power, he was already a good for nothing. It seemed like you really loved my mother based on what you had just said. M.O. Linyuan tapped the stone table with his finger, so that's why you helped the Empress Dowager plot against M.O. Sherwin. I heard from her that you only wanted my royal mother in exchange for helping her. As M.O. Linyuan said this, there was a hint of murderous intent in his eyes, so, it seemed like it was you who actually caused the death of my royal mother. Wen's face instantly turned deathly white. He explained in a panic, M.O. Sherwin was unable to protect her. Because he was in a hurry to explain himself, he forgot to address M.O. Sherwin as the late emperor, instead directly addressed M.O. Sherwin as M.O. Sherwin. M.O. Sherwin does not have the ability to protect her. Had she left the palace with this official, then she would have lived. M.O. Sherwin said coldly, I just want to know if you bullied her after M.O. Sherwin doused her with medicine after he sent her to your bed. This was the first time when addressed himself as I instead of this official in front of M.O. Linyuan. The expression on his face was gradually turning ugly. M.O. Linyuan sneered after he saw the expression on Wen's face. He stood up and said, at this point, you still want to say that her death has nothing to do with you. I don't care whether you really love her, or did you merely want to possess her because you are not qualified to love her. Just as Wen wanted to open his mouth to say something, M.O. Linyuan waved his sleeve abruptly. That's enough. Now that I know everything that I want to know, I will not keep you here any longer. Prime Minister Wen, it's quite late now. Wen didn't get up immediately. 
He secretly clenched his fist and hesitated for a moment before he asked, Your Majesty, why did you ask about this? Mo Linyuan looked at him and replied, You are not qualified to ask me this question. After he finished speaking, Mo Linyuan got up and left. Shortly after he left, Wen also got up and left. When Mo Linyuan turned a corner, he was suddenly stopped by Yi Mu. She looked at him with a strange expression on her face, What are you plotting? Mo Linyuan was shocked by Yi Mu's sudden appearance. He didn't have the calm and indifferent expression he had when he was in front of one. Did you hear everything? Did you eavesdrop on us? Chapter 194 Yi Mu snorted, I didn't sneak around to eavesdrop on you too, instead, I listened in on your conversation in the open. But explain this to me. Don't tell me that you're planning to sell yourself off to the enemy by acknowledging him as your father. She was merely joking around, but Mo Linyuan remained silent. It can't be. Did he actually plan to sell himself off? After a long silence, Mo Linyuan took Yi Mu's hand and they headed toward the Qin Palace. Neither of them brought along personal guards, so it was just the two of them as they slowly walked. Mo Linyuan finally spoke just when Yi Mu had given up on making him talk. There was a large power gap between the three great families and the Empress Dowager. As a result, it was difficult for them to trust each other completely in order to work together to topple me from my throne. However, we have recently discovered that they wanted to get rid of me and support Mo Dai to become the new emperor. From this, we can see that they managed to form an alliance. It was through sheer luck that it was destroyed in a timely manner by us. Yi Mu vaguely understood Mo Linayuan's worries now. So, even though Mo Dai is dead, you will fall into danger again if the Shi family and the Empress Dowager join forces again, right? Mo Linyuan nodded, even though I have secured the throne, they still pose a threat to me if they join forces. If we end up in a war for power, then both their forces and I will definitely receive a lot of damage. There are no heirs to the throne, but the Shi family will continue to grow. I am in a very dangerous position right now. It was as if a light bulb had gone off in her head as Yi Mu's eyes widened in surprise. So, you went to look for one because. I went looking for him because I want to use him. Mo Linyuan admitted his intention without hesitation. He narrowed his phoenix eyes and a hint of dangerous light flashed in his eyes, I know that I could exploit him after I heard about the grudges they had years ago from Mo Sherwin. The Wen family is the head of the three great families. The other two families blindly follow the Wen family. This will be the perfect opportunity to divide the three families. After he finished speaking, he smiled bitterly and stared at Yi Mu. Do you think I'm ruthless? Do you think that I'm ruthless to use my deceased mother to preserve my life? Yi Mu shook her head quickly, you're forced to do this because of your situation. I believe that if your mother is in heaven, then she will definitely hope that she will still be able to help you even after death. Yi Mu replied without hesitation. Her response calmed Mo Linyuan's chaotic mind. He was really afraid that Yi Mu would hate him for being so scheming and ruthless. I didn't want to do this either. But because of your appearance four years ago, I took the opportunity to split the Shi family and the Empress Dowager apart. But after four years, they managed to nurse back their relationship and form an alliance. Im their enemy im the thorn in their eyes. However, if I manage to temporarily pull the Wen family away from them, then their alliance will split apart once again. As Mo Linyuan explained everything, a mysterious smile formed on his face. I was planning to favor one of the family over the other in order to break off the alliance between the three great families before. I was afraid that the plan would fail because they won't fall for it. But now, I have the one family's weakness in my hands. He slowly balled his hand into a fist. He stared at his hand as if he had caught something. If one believes that I'm his son, then he will not become suspicious if I start to favor him. It would have been too late for him when he finally realized that he had fallen for my plan. At that time, he either helps me pull the two other families and make them pledge their alliances to me, or he will become my trusted aide and help me take care of the other two families. This will be a very good breakthrough. Therefore, if it was truly necessary, then he did not mind acknowledging him as his father. 
He had not decided if he should follow through with the plan or not yet. But from his years of experience, his guts told him that this was the best plan. Chapter, 195 Yi Mu frowned slightly and stopped walking when they arrived in front of the huge palace gate. The two of them looked especially small compared to the huge gate. However, Mo Linyuan was born to the royal bloodline. He was born with the ability to produce clouds and rain with the wave of his hand. He was born with the innate ability to change the world. From the bottom of your heart, do you really believe that one is your biological father? Yi Mu asked in a low voice. Mo Linyuan froze for a moment and the expression on his face turned gloomy. Yi Mu held his hands and said, It's okay, you still have me. The gloomy expression on Mo Linyuan's face began clearing up after he heard her words. He looked at Yi Mu. The long plain white robe that he was wearing was picked up by the wind as it gently flutters in the air. His appearance was picturesque. At this moment, he resembled a celestial being more than an emperor. Yi Mu, to be honest, I don't really care about the blood running in my vein. Yi Mu didn't expect him to be so open-minded, but his open-mindedness might have something to do with the bitter experiences he faced in his childhood. Mo Linyuan pursed his lips slightly and continued, I can accept it even if it turns out that I'm not from the royal bloodline. I can also accept Mo Shirwen as my father. I will accept the person who will give me more advantage. But in my heart, I am still me. I do not belong to anyone and I will not be affected by such trivial things. He looked at Yi Mu nervously after he revealed what he thought. Even if he didn't care about those matters, it didn't mean that Yi Mu would not care about them. He was worried that Yi Mu would think of him as someone ruthless, someone who will abandon everything in order to succeed. Even so, he wanted to tell Yi Mu the truth. In the power struggle of the royal court, only the strong can survive. He relied on Yimu and his own strength to climb on the position he currently had. He had encountered countless obstacles to reach where he was today. He had nothing at all in the beginning. But after he calculated and schemed against other people, he finally managed to become an emperor with power. He didn't want to hide his true self in front of her, so he told her the truth. He told her exactly what kind of person he was, and he could only hope that would accept him for who he was. Yi Mu was originally listening attentively to his explanation and merely smiled after he finished talking. Her hair was combed into two flower buns on her head, and she was currently wearing a pink palace dress. When she smiled, she looked like a blooming flower. She pulled his hand and tugged him along as they continued to walk, okay, let's eat before we continue talking. Mo Linyuan was slightly dissatisfied that he didn't get a concrete response from Yi Mu. He pulled her to him and stubbornly said, You haven't responded to my explanation yet. Yi Mu tilted her head and looked back at him with a bright smile on her face, What's there to respond to? I think you did a wonderful job, I only blame myself for being too simple minded in the past. It was impossible for a crown prince not to scheme and calculate against his enemies if he wanted to unify the whole world. She had forgotten that a ruler not only needed a very powerful army, but he also needed to be wise and far-sighted to be able to form his own nation. Even after the ruler formed his nation, he will continuously be subjected to power struggles against his greedy subjects. Mo Linyuan's pale cheeks suddenly turned red. Then he looked at Yi Mu firmly, do you hate me for turning into someone like this? He was someone who was even willing to use his dead biological mother to his advantage. Most people would avoid him in disgust. Sometimes, even he was disgusted by himself. Yi Mu never expected Mo Linyuan to be someone who would waste his time on insignificant problems. She didn't say anything in response. She merely stood on tiptoe and suddenly kissed the side of his face. The soft touch from her lips made Mo Linyuan freeze in place. He looked at the bright smile on Yi Mu's face. This is okay, right? This will let you know that I don't hate you. Anyways, why are you stressing yourself over this? I already told you that I will accompany you until you unify the world. She felt a little embarrassed after she finished speaking because no matter how she listened to her words, it seemed as if she was confessing to him. She turned around and ran up the stairs in embarrassment. Mo Linyuan was in a daze as he stared at Yi Mu bounce up the stairs. He finally revealed a smile after she disappeared up the stairs. 
she was indeed the person he had fallen for. She was uniquely different from everyone else. No wonder he liked her so much. Chapter, 196 Due to the death of M.O. Sherwin and M.O. Dai, their plan to dethrone the emperor disappeared. However, the atmosphere in the royal court each morning became tenser by the day. It didn't take long before the emperor became seriously ill. Although the news said that the emperor was ill, it was more accurate to say that it was poisoned. He will vomit blood whenever his emotions fluctuate. This made everyone in the palace nervous and tense. Did you poison him? After the morning court ended, the Wen family secretly met up with the Empress Dowager. The Empress Dowager looked at them with a strange expression on her face. I wanted to ask you if you guys had planned it. Did you poison him? Wen stood up. The expression on his face was malicious, I already asked the Zhou family and the Zhong family before I came here. They told me that they wanted to kill him, but they never managed to succeed. So, the only possibility is that you were the one who poisoned him. Zhao Yuqin was unwilling to be blamed for something she did not do. Since there they were the only two people in the palace right now, Zhao Yunqin no longer needed to be polite. She walked up to him directly. Let me tell you the truth, I did try to plot against him, but my plans did not succeed. The child emperor has an iron wall of people guarding him. Now, I can only doubt you. Tell me, what poison did you use? Why did you suddenly poison him? Wen frowned, I wasn't the one who did it. Zhao Yunqin looked at him suspiciously, if it's not you, then who else can it be? You can tell me the truth because you and I are still on the same boat. It's really not me. After Wen finished speaking, he immediately thought of something, so he turned around and left. Zhao Yuqin tugged his sleeve, fine, they'll believe you since you insist that you aren't the one who poisoned him. However, why are you in such a hurry to leave? I heard that you've been lukewarm to your wife. Could it be that you still can't forget about her even after she died so many years ago? Wen pursed his lips and pushed Zhao Yunkin's hand away. The emperor knew about our plan to kill him and replace him with M.O. Dai. As a result, he killed M.O. Sherwen and M.O. Dai. He hasn't found trouble for us yet, so we should lie low for now. Zhao Yunqin snorted, why should I be afraid? He can't come looking for me since I'm already pretending to be sick. There's nothing wrong with being more careful. After Wen finished speaking, he shook off Zhao Yunqin and left. Zhao Yunqin stamped her feet in anger after he left. Her eyes gradually became cold. After he left the Empress Dowager's palace, he went to the Imperial Physician's Bureau instead of directly returning home. He used all kinds of methods to find the Imperial Physician that had treated the Emperor today. Tell me. Is he really poisoned or is it fake? The Imperial Physician looked around and saw that no one else was in the room, so he bowed towards one. Prime Minister, he is indeed poisoned. The poison is very potent. However, His Majesty was cautious and was able to discover the poison quickly. As a result of the timely treatment, His Majesty will be fine. But the aftermath of the poison will be quite troublesome. When pondered for a moment before he suddenly asked, I heard that the poison would make a person's blood and chi flow irregularly. As long as the patient has a small mood swing, he or she will vomit blood. Is that true? Yes, that is correct. The imperial physician lowered his head. He felt uneasy because he was afraid that the prime minister might make him do something to the emperor. It was impossible for him to do that because the emperor was surrounded by numerous guards. He will probably be killed before he manages to do anything. However, the prime minister made an unexpected request. I need you to help me steal one of the emperor's robes that are stained with blood. The imperial physician looked up in surprise, that is a death sentence if I get caught. A person's body and skin came from their parents. In this ancient era where people heavily believed in superstitions, a person's hair, blood, and other bodily matters cannot fall into the hands of other people. It was impossible for him to get his hands on the emperor's stuff. Chapter, 197 What? Are you unwilling to do it? When narrowed his eyes and snorted coldly, don't forget that your family's life is in my hands. Whether you are willing to do it or not, you have to do it. 
He was gloomy, so he left before he could reply. On the other side of the palace. Yi Mu wiped off the droplets of sweat on Emo Linyuan's forehead with her handkerchief. Her tone was somewhat displeased when she asked, This is the first time I saw someone poisoning themselves. How does the poison taste? Is it delicious? With that said, she used some force as she rubbed his face. The place she rubbed soon became red. Mo Linyuan saw that she was angry with him, so he sat up quickly and said, Don't be angry, I have no other choice. Cough. Cough. Wait a moment. Lie back down. What are you doing? You know that you have to control your emotions. Lie down. Yi Mu pushed him down on the couch so that he was lying again. She sighed, what is the purpose of doing this? Did you do this to make the Shi family and the Empress Dowager suspect each other? No. Mo Linyuan shook his head. His phoenix eyes on his pale face were half-closed, but a glimmer of light flashed in his eyes. After I questioned that old fox from the Wen family about my birthright, he would definitely ponder why I wanted to ask him about it. He may even believe that it was because Mo Sherwin said something to me before he died. He paused and took a sip of water with Yi Mu's help, then he smiled. He won't ask me directly about my birthright, so he will definitely come up with a method to get some of my blood. So, it seemed like one wanted some of Mo Linyuan's blood to see if Mo Linyuan's was actually his child. Yi Mu froze for a moment at this thought. The people in this era believed that the blood was part of a person's spirit, so they paid extra attention to make sure their blood, which contained their spirits, won't fall into other people's hands. Mo Linyuan had come up with such a peculiar plan to trap when he didn't even take his own health into consideration. When Mo Linyuan saw that Yi Mu had understood his plan, he did not explain any further. In short, you don't need to worry about me. I am well aware of our situation. You say that you already have everything planned out, Yi Mu murmured, but I was scared to death when I saw you suddenly vomit up blood. Can't you tell me about your plans beforehand? Yi Mu sat down on the side of the couch and carefully pinched Mo Linyuan's waist. Mo Linyuan promptly begged for forgiveness, that was necessary for the plan. They all know that I care about you and that I won't hide anything from you. They will really believe that I have been poisoned by someone else if they see your genuine reaction. Yi Mu was still unhappy, I will still be able to act genuinely even if you told me about the plan beforehand. She blushed a little when she recalled how pale she turned when she saw Mo Linyuan vomiting blood suddenly. She was really embarrassed about her reaction before. Ah! It's best to never mention it again. Mo Linyuan grabbed Yi Mu's wrist when he saw that Yi Mu was planning to leave, what's wrong? Are you embarrassed? I'm not. Yi Mu slapped his hand away. Mo Linyuan laughed, I don't know who it was earlier but that person held me in her arms while she yelled at me to get a hold of myself and told me not to die. Her eyes turned red and she looked as if she was about to burst into tears. You. You're not allowed to talk about it. Yi Mu was furious as she quickly covered his mouth with her hands, but Mo Linyuan was still laughing at her. Okay, fine, I won't talk about it anymore. He tucked her hand and continued teasing her, I won't talk about how you cried because of me. Stop speaking about it. Yi Mu rushed toward Mo Linyuan, but Mo Linyuan pulled her into his arms and embraced her. She was shocked by the sudden embrace and wanted to move away, but she was unable to move because Mo Linyuan was holding her tightly. W what are you doing? Mo Linyuan was still smiling. His hair was spread out around him and his phoenix eyes were drooping down. He looked like a charming and seductive evil spirit. His pale lips were curved into an alluring smile. Yi Mu, haven't you noticed? You really care deeply about me. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid that I will die? Chapter, 198 Yi Mu really didn't want to argue with a sick person. Of course, I'm afraid that you will die. Now let go of me. Mo Linyuan's eyes shone brightly, and his handsome face became even more enchanting. Why are you so worried about me? Is it because you're my friend or is it because of something else? Yi Mu looked at him with a puzzled expression on her face. Something else? 
M.O. Linyuan's heart gradually started to beat faster. He casually asked, for example, are you worried about me because you like me as a man? He held his breath subconsciously after he finished asking her the question. Yi Mu was stunned by the sudden question and became mute. Mo Linyuan found her dazed expression to be quite interesting. He reached out his hands and squeezed her cheeks. He realized it was meaningless to test her like this. He simply smiled and said, since you didn't respond to my question, then I will confess first. Yi Mu, little Muir, I like you. I like you. His words were like a spell. Yi Mu instantly froze as she looked at him in disbelief. Mo Linyuan waited for her response, but Yi Mu still hadn't replied after a long time. She looked like her soul had left her body. Mo Linyuan was unhappy with her silence. Earth to Yi Mu. Yi Mu suddenly snapped out of it and asked, D did you just say that you like me? Like? Mo Linyuan chuckled, I think my feelings run deeper than the word like. Yi Mu was shocked by his confession. It turned out to be true. Mo Linyuan actually likes her. She grabbed her hair, why you l like me? W y do why you like me? She kept repeating the sentence over and over. This was unscientific. According to the original storyline, he would eventually marry his empress and a few concubines in the future. Later in his prime, he would slowly fall into depression. How did he end up liking her? Yi Mu broke free from Mo Linyuan's embrace. Mo Linyuan's face sank when he saw her retreat from him, but he hid his disappointment. He smiled and asked, Are you shy or are you scared? When he said the latter few words, his tone was inexplicably cold. Yi Mu did not answer. It was more correct to say that she did not know how to answer him. She looked at Mo Linyuan who was currently wearing a plain robe with dragons embroidered on it. She tried speaking several times, but no sound would come out from her mouth. Mo Linyuan misunderstood her silence. He narrowed his eyes dangerously, but the smile on his lips became more enticing. Or is it because you don't like me at all? Silence fell upon the Qin Palace. Fortunately, no one was around, the two of them were alone. Otherwise, Yi Mu would never have the courage to ever look at Mo Linyuan again in the future. She forced herself to calm down. Yi Mu replied truthfully, You are a good person. But but she can't like him. She wanted to return home to save people after she collected the city boundary map. She came here as a guest she never had the intention of staying here permanently, much less marrying someone from this world. But what? At this point, Mo Linyuan's expression had turned extremely frosty. He sat upright and asked, Do you really dislike me? He originally patiently waited for her to understand his feelings. But after years of interacting with one another, she still remained oblivious to his feelings. When he saw her concern for him today, he thought that it was because she actually liked him, so he confessed his feelings to her. But who would have known that she would have reacted this way to his confession? She was panic-stricken and she appeared to be scared of his sudden confession. Yi Mu was also confused. Do I like him O Linyuan? She had never thought about it before, nor did she ever think that Mo Linyuan would actually like her. Chapter, 199 She pondered over the question for a moment before she answered seriously, Well, I never thought about liking someone before because I don't want to get married. Mo Linyuan stared at her earnestly and when he saw that she was being serious, he smiled and asked, Silly girl, why don't you want to get married? Or is it just that you don't want to marry me? And no. That's not it. Yi Mu quickly waved her hands to deny it, if I want to marry someone, then you would have definitely been my first choice. But the problem is, I really don't want to get married. I never had the intention of marrying anyone. Mo Linyuan's anger was inexplicably quelled by Yi Mu's words. He pondered over something for a moment before he let out a long sigh of relief. It seems like I was the one who was impatient. I should have waited for a few more years before asking you this. You're still young. When Yi Mu heard Mo Linyuan's words, she replied sincerely, Even if you waited a few more years for me, my answer will still be the same. Mo Linyuan's eyes narrowed instantly, What answer? That you don't want to get married? Yi Mu lowered her head, 
there is a reason that I don't want to get married, and I will never change my mind on this subject. When she said this, the room fell into a dead silence again. It was unknown what Emo Linyuan was currently thinking about, but his breathing was slowly quickening. It was obvious that he was not calm. What's the reason? He leaned towards Yimu, his posture suddenly turned dangerous, or are you unwilling to tell me the reason? Yimu really wanted to sigh, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. After she finished talking, Yimu turned around and left. She didn't have the courage to look into Mo Linyuan's eyes because his gaze was frightening. Looking back, Mo Linyuan had treated her very well in the past few years. It seemed like he treated her well because he liked her. Mo Linyuan was silent for a moment when he saw that Yi Mu had run away. Then, he suddenly smashed the jade bowl that he was holding. However, this wasn't enough to smother the rage building up in his heart. He smashed the table with his hand and the table shattered into two. The sudden movement and noise startled everyone standing guard outside. Soon, Wen Feng and Zi Su walked inside and knelt on one knee. Your Majesty, do you have any orders? Mo Linyuan stared darkly at them, is there something wrong with little Mu's body? His question was directed at Wen Feng because Wen Feng had always been the one to accompany Yi Mu to Qianshou Temple. Wen Feng replied, her body had been the same as always. Does your majesty have any other questions? If it was not a physical problem, then why doesn't Yimu want to get married? Could it be that she was worried that she won't be able to control her body in the future and become a murderous monster? As a result, she doesn't want to get married and cause her future husband trouble. Mo Linyuan directed a question at Zi Su, is Yimu close with other men in the palace? His question was laced with thick murderous intent. Zi Su replied immediately in fear, no. Besides going to the Tianshou Temple, Miss Yimu only accompanies your majesty. She isn't close to other men. Mo Linyuan was not surprised by his response. After all, Yimu spent the most time with him, so he could rule out the possibility that Yimu liked someone else. Mo Linyuan gradually calmed down, but his expression still looked very unsightly. Perhaps she was just too young to understand marriage and romance, so it was probably inevitable that she would try to reject it. Didn't she say that he was the first person she would choose if she had to marry someone? Why was he still doubting her? After he let out a long sigh, Mo Linyuan closed his eyes. It was fine, he will wait another few years for her. But there was still an uneasy feeling in his heart. He felt like he had overlooked something, but he just didn't know what he had overlooked. Chapter, 200 Mo Linyuan became busy after his confession, which made Yimu relieved. She believed that Mo Linyuan had confessed to her in the spur of the moment. Even though she rejected his confession, he probably wouldn't force her to do anything. After all, he was the emperor. After he dealt with the enemies, he will have the time to interact with other women and realize that he wasn't truly in love with her. Even so, Yimu still hid from Mo Linyuan. During this time, Mo Linyuan and Prime Minister Wen seemed to have gotten closer. It was time for Yimu to go to Tianshou Temple again. This time, she sent a messenger to inform Mo Linyuan about her departure and secretly left without Wen Feng. Your Majesty, Miss Yi has gone to Tianshou Temple. The messenger immediately reported that Yimu had left the palace. Mo Linyuan nodded at the news, but he narrowed his eyes suddenly. Except for the time where Yi Mu had murdered 500 assassins in cold blood, Yi Mu had never lost control, so Mo Linyuan wasn't too worried about her. But right now, he couldn't stop thinking about why Yi Mu was so against marrying someone. Was there something that he didn't know about? Yi Mu had always concealed her pain so that he wouldn't worry about her, and the silent master listened to Yi Mu's words right now, so he wouldn't tell him if something was wrong. It seemed like he needed to continue looking for famous doctors to cure her. Yi Mu ran to Tianshou Temple. When she arrived, she realized that today happened to be the annual Dharma convention of Tianshou Temple. She held her breath and ascended the mountain quietly. Tianshou Temple was particularly lively today. Many people were kneeling three times and praying at the foot of the mountain. Tianshou Temple has twelve halls and eleven of the twelve halls are open today. There were many people praying inside each temple. 
Although they all wore different clothes, they were all sincerely reciting the same scripture. Yi Mu originally thought that it would be very noisy and annoying since everyone was reciting the scripture, but she was surprised to find that the noise was not unpleasant. Whether they were poor or rich, everyone was sitting on top of a praying mat as they recited the scripture together. It was a harmonious scene. Their dedicated and sincere attitude, and the dignified and solemn bodhisattva status made Yi Mu realize how fascinating and charming religion was to the people. Faith was a strong bonding force no matter the era. Yi Mu stood by the entrance to the temple. She was entranced by their sincere chanting when someone tapped her on the shoulder. Why are you here? Yi Mu turned around and saw that the silent master was wearing a golden kasaya while standing behind her. She was afraid to disturb the people chanting the scripture in the temple halls, so she pulled the silent master to a quieter place. She looked him up and down and clicked her tongue, fortunately there aren't many young ladies here today, otherwise, you would have seduced their hearts away. The silent master frowned slightly at her and said, Stop spouting nonsense. He led Yi Mu to one of the unoccupied rooms in the Buddhist temple. Yi Mu stuck out her tongue and followed behind him. The sunlight fell on his golden kasaya, shrouding his body in a golden halo. The kasaya was bestowed by the emperor to him, and it suited him perfectly. Chapter 201 He was smiling with his clear eyes and the corners of his mouth were slightly curved upward. He was holding a bracelet made from ink-black Buddha beads and behind him was a lush green forest. They walked up steps made from jade. Yi Mu seriously said, I believe that a person starts practicing Buddhism from birth. It's not the same kind of practice like chanting and reciting the Buddha scriptures every day, but it's still a form of practice. A person's emotions and desires are also endowed by heaven. The problems and distresses we encounter each day is a test given by heaven. I don't believe chanting and reciting scripture in one place is considered practicing Buddhism. Why don't people look around and appreciate the great scenery? The beautiful lush mountains and the crystal clear rivers. Why won't they appreciate the mysterious beauties of the world? She folded a finger and said, Look, if you marry a wife, then you have successfully practiced your desire for love. If you gained wealth, then you have successfully practiced your desire for money. You need to practice all your desires and experience the world. This way, you won't have any regrets when you depart from the world. The silent mast looked past her. Tianshou Temple was built on top of the mountain, so he was able to see the roof at the eleventh hall and the world below the mountain by standing on the stairs. He finally spoke after a long stretch of silence, the moment I entered the temple, I had left the mundane world. I only cultivate my heart, mind, and character now. Yi Mu didn't quite understand what he meant, but she could feel the deep sense of helplessness from his tone when he said it. Then, as if something had suddenly dawned on her, Yi Mu's eyes brightened. That's right. You don't have to do anything for today's Dharma convention, right? The silent master nodded. Today was the day the believers will practice Buddhism by themselves. They needed to read the scripture in the temple for an entire day. Their living areas had already been arranged, so he didn't have anything to do. Yi Mu smiled slightly, since that is the case, then I will take you along to play today. Play. Yep. Yi Mu rolled up her sleeves, you need to experience both cultivating inside the temple and cultivating in the secular world. You should give yourself a vacation today by cultivating in the secular world. The silent master knew that he should refuse, but when Yi Mu started dragging him down the mountain, his resistance suddenly disappeared. Did he really hope that he can walk in the secular world again one day? Yi Mu put a hood over his head and then made him change into commoner's clothing. She was also dressed like a commoner. The two of them secretly went through the back door and descended the mountain together. While they were descending, the silent master began questioning Yi Mu, what if a disciple needs me? What if there is a problem with one of the Buddhist worshippers? What if? Yi Mu dragged him with force, interrupting his words. Relax. I promise that the twelve halls of Tianshou Temple will not collapse in one day. The silent master pursed his lips and fell silent however, he still felt very uneasy. He kept turning around to look at Tianshou Temple until it disappeared completely from his view. 
But soon, he didn't have the leisure to think about the temple anymore, because Yi Mu urged him to get on a horse. What is this for? Heaven knew that this was the silent master's first time riding a horse. The monks preach mercy and compassion, so how can they slave animals? Yi Mu ignored him. This was the horse she rode when she sneaked out today. She sat in front and smiled evilly, if you don't hold tightly on to me, then don't blame me if you accidentally fall off. She kicked the horse with her legs and shouted, Go! Ha! Huh. Wait a moment. The silent master was unable to continue talking, instead, he tightly clung onto Yi Mu's clothes to prevent himself from falling off. In the past, he had always walked when he descended the mountain. Each time he descended the mountain, he was either practicing Dana or giving free medical treatments to the poor. This was his first time descending the mountain to go out to play. The horse they were riding seemed to love bullying the silent master too. When it noticed how nervously the silent master was holding on to it, it started running faster and faster. Chapter 202 The horse was obviously overexcited as it jumped and raced across the road. The silent master's straw hat had fallen off and he wanted to go back and pick it up. However, Yi Mu did not agree. After all, she believed that it was such a pity to cover up such a beautiful face. As for his bald head, she will look for a piece of cloth to cover it up with later. After a while, they stopped by a village. She had no choice but to stop because the silent master threatened her that if they didn't head back to pick up the straw hat, then he would jump off the horse. He didn't want to go out wearing such clothes without wearing a straw hat. Yi Mu was helpless. After they stopped in a small village, she secretly led him to the courtyard where the people had hung their clothes to dry. What are you doing? The silent master looked at her with a righteous expression on his face. Hush! Yi Mu told him to quiet down, and then she stole a piece of cloth with lightning speed and ran out. The cloth was probably going to be used to making a piece of clothing for a child since it was a small piece of cloth. When the silent master saw that Yi Mu had stolen something, he quickly urged her to put it back. Yi Mu refused. She took the blue cloth and wrapped it around his head, this way, no one will know that you're bald. That's absurd. The silent master pulled the cloth quickly off his head and said, if you want return it, then I will. He walked back towards the courtyard, but he was dragged back by Yi Mu. Although Yi Mu could not use her inner strength, her physical strength was much greater than that of a monk. When the silent master saw that he was about to be dragged away by Yi Mu, he quickly started shouting, Is anyone there? Someone stole. Before he could finish talking, Yi Mu covered his mouth with her hand. She used some force and dragged him away quickly. When the family heard the commotion outside, they came out and saw that a piece of cloth was missing. They quickly chased after the thief. After Yi Mu snatched the cloth, she dragged the silent master to run along with her. The silent master originally wanted her to stop and return the cloth, but when he saw the aggressive married woman chasing after them, he realized that if she caught them, then their reputations would be lost. He didn't mind losing his own reputation, but Yi Mu will also lose her reputation. Yi Mu noticed that the silent master had stopped resisting. The two ran two miles before they reached the horse. They climbed on the horse and ran away. While they were on horseback, the silent master had scolded her several times. He said disapprovingly, you should not have stolen something. Although it was just a small piece of cloth, it was still the property of an ordinary farmer. Yi Mu gasped for breath as she said, who was the one that said that he won't head to the town without a straw hat? How can I find a straw hat in this barren mountain? I had no choice but to steal this. The silent master shook his head firmly after he heard her explanation, I will not use something that is stolen. We should turn around and return it. Yi Mu stopped the horse and turned to look at him, we will return the cloth later. If that's not enough, then we can leave some compensation for them later. Will that be alright? She pulled out the piece of cloth and tied it around the silent master's head. A handsome person will look good in anything. The blue linen and the white and blue clothing he was wearing matched nicely together. They were in the woods right now. The sunlight peeked through the leaves and fell on the silent master. 
He was not wearing his kasaya, but he still gave off a pure and holy feeling. The silent master looked at her with a complicated expression on his face. He should refuse, but the smile beneath Yi Mu's eyes made him fall silent. He guiltily thought I must return it later. It looks pretty good. After she finished tying it around his head, Yi Mu nodded her head with satisfaction at her work. The silent master continued to remind her, we must return this to them later. Yi Mu couldn't help but rolled her eyes at his words. She grabbed his hand that was about to touch his head and asked jokingly, can you stop acting like a monk for one day? The silent master fell silent for a moment while Yi Mu continued talking. Chapter 203 As long as you stop being a monk for a day, you can become an ordinary person. When you become an ordinary person, it will be natural for you to make a mistake. After a long silence, he finally lowered his head and said, "You'll just take it. Hell try to forget that this thing on his head was stolen. Yi Mu was satisfied and took him all the way to town. The weather was pleasant, it was a good day to go to the market, they tied their horses in the stable, and happened to be hungry, and went to a restaurant by the way. At that time, the menu plates were all hanging on the wall. Generally, there were not many dishes in a small restaurant, and they were changed every few days. Yi Mu asked, What do you want to eat? He was about to speak, but Yi Mu stopped him. Come on, you mustn't order vegetarian food. Don't forget, you're not a monk today. But he can't eat meat either. He began to look at her with his eyes wide open. Yi Mu was amused by his expression. She ordered a vegetarian dish, a meat dish, a bowl of soup, and then a pot of wine. Eat some. If you don't eat meat, how can your body bear it? Yi Mu said with a smile, just as the wine she ordered was served first, she poured a glass for herself and another for the silent master. The silent master's scalp was numb, after years of fasting, he had long treated these things like it was poison. Yi Mu persuaded him to drink a few times until the expression on her small face sank. Master, every bad experience is also an experience. If you never experience how being contaminated feels like, then how will you learn to shy away from it in the future? She placed the cup in front of him. If you drink, then I'll spare you from eating meat later, I promise. The silent master's heart was engaged in a fierce ideological struggle. If he eats meat, then it was equivalent to destroying a living thing, but wine is made from grain. So, he subconsciously picked the wine. Yi Mu's eyes flashed, and an evil grin spread across her face. Come and have a drink. This will be the start of your new life. Yi Mu's words touched him. He gritted his teeth and drank the wine in a gulp, but as soon as the wine got into his throat, he almost spat it out and kept pouring water to press down the spiciness. At this time, Yi Mu was holding a wine glass and looked at him with a smile, is it good? She chose the wine with the highest concentration of alcohol. It was specially ordered to deal with foolish monks. The silent master was speechless. At this time, his jade-like face and eyes were turning a little red, his sharp eyebrows were extremely enchanting. His rabbit-like eyes gave off a kind of unutterable amorous feeling. Not only Yi Mu was stunned by his appearance, but the person on the next table was also stunned. The man at the next table stared at the silent master for a long time. The silent master was tall and beautiful. He even looked better than a woman, so it was natural that the silent master had caught the other man's attention. This was especially true after the silent master had become drunk, giving him a defenseless appearance. His eyes revealed his purity and innocence, he simply looked too alluring. His Adam's apple bobbed up and down until finally, he couldn't resist himself from coming over. He was dressed in a luxurious attire with two thugs standing behind him. It was obvious that his status was extraordinary. The man was still staring at the silent master without blinking. May I sit here? Before Yi Mu could even speak, the silent master said quickly, Suit yourself. Yi Mu raised her eyebrows and didn't speak. The large man looked lustfully at the silent master and said, I am the eldest son of the Zhou family. I have just returned from an errand outside. May I ask this brother what your surname is and where you are currently living? The silent master put down his chopsticks and was prepared to tell him the truth, but he was suddenly stopped by Yi Mu. 
We're just ordinary people, so why are you asking this? Zhou Su turned his attention to the little girl who looked only about ten years old, and his eyes brightened even more. Are you two brothers and sisters? Chapter 204 What do you want to do? Yi Mu opened her mouth first to inquire about their intentions. She was only eleven years old, so she had not matured yet. Although she could not compare to the silent master's innocent yet alluring face, Yi Mu looked smart and adorable. It was obvious that she was a budding beauty. Zhou Su didn't say much. As soon as he waved his hand, someone behind him stepped forward and put a pouch full of silver on the table. He used a kind tone and said, Looking at your plain clothes and the simple food you ordered, I presume that your family situation is not great. Why don't the two of you sell yourselves to me? With my status, I will definitely ensure that you will live a good life. Yi Mu looked at the silent master. The silent master assumed that the man had misunderstood them and since they looked like people that weren't easy to trifle with, he apologized and said, Thank you for your offer, but we have no intention of selling ourselves. Goodbye. He pulled Yi Mu along, preparing to leave. You want to leave? The two of them were stopped by the servants of the Zhou family. The silent master frowned and looked at Zhou Zhu's back. He asked, What do you mean by this, young master Zhou? Zhou Su chuckled and turned around. He narrowed his eyes and said, Nothing. No one had ever refused my offer in my life. Little brother, are you sure you want to reject my offer? The silent master pushed Yi Mu behind him to protect her. He was certain now that this was not a misunderstanding and that Zhou Su was a bad person. Zhou Zhu's smile deepened when he saw that the silent master was acting nervously. The people around them saw that Zhou Su and his underlings were not people that they should provoke, so they all left quickly. They dared not stay and watch the show. The owner recognized Zhou Zhu's identity, so he didn't dare to report the crime. He could only pray for their safety. It seems like the two of you rarely go out, hmm? Zhou Su laughed when he saw how tense the silent master's body was. It seems like I am right. If you had gone out often with your appearance, then I wouldn't even have the chance to meet you. The silent master was more and more confused as he listened to him. What did this have to do with his appearance? Zhou Su stood up and approached the silent master one step at a time. He was tall and strong, and he was half a head taller than the silent master. There was also a ruthless kind of energy around him, look at your face, it really looked more delicate and softer than a woman's. Your eyes are beautiful. They look even more alluring when you're angry. I wonder how much more alluring your eyes will look in bed. The silent master was confused by his words. He took Yi Mu along as he backed away. He didn't understand why the man was looking at him like how a flirty nobleman would look at a pretty young lady. He was a man. The poor and innocent young monk didn't know that some people had unique hobbies. They liked to eat both men and women. He lowered his voice and whispered to Yi Mu, This man is very strange. You should run while I try and stop him. Yi Mu looked at him pitifully, You fool. He wants you, so why are you telling me to run? Zhou Su calmly laughed, You won't be able to run away. Come. Bring them back to my estate. I've never played with a brother and sister together before. The two people did not look like they were children of a rich and powerful family. Since they have no power or money, how will they be able to fight against him? When the two thugs heard his order, they forced Yi Mu and the silent master into a corner. The expression on their face was very relaxed. They're both practitioners of martial arts, one or two enemies will not pose a threat to them, not to mention a small child and a beautiful weak man. The silent master retreated slowly as he warned them seriously, Don't come any closer, you are not my opponent. Brother, did you hear that? This pretty boy said that we're not his opponents. His brother laughed darkly, It seems like this pretty boy only knows how to show off. Do you believe that I can kill you with just one finger? Chapter 205 The silent master's body was tense as he said, If you don't stop cornering us, then I will really have to use force. He wouldn't have used force if he was the only one beaten. After all, he was a monk and monks cannot hurt other people. But Yi Mu was standing behind him right now. 
since Yimu can't use her strength right now, she will be powerless in front of their attackers if he didn't protect her. Yimu tugged at the Silent Master's sleeve and said, Brother, you must protect me. The Silent Master nodded his head solemnly and looked at the two approaching thugs seriously. Don't come any closer. The two thugs looked at each other with a smile, thinking that the pretty boy really liked to play the hero. Then, in the next second, the thugs made their move. As a result, only a blood-curdling scream could be heard. Zhou Su glanced over, fearing that they would hurt the person he liked. But what he saw, surprised him greatly because the person who fell on the ground was one of his thugs. How did this happen? Amitba. The silent master asked for forgiveness for his sin. He didn't intend on hurting anyone, instead, he merely did it in self-defense. He hoped that the Buddha would not blame him for his actions. Yi Mu secretly laughed, I would have never guessed that you're this skilled. The silent master did not reply. He started practicing Buddhism when he was young. Although he only practiced the gentlest of all martial arts, his martial arts skill was not lacking at all. He felt that this situation was quite strange. No one had ever picked a fight with him in the past when he descended the mountain alone. Most people did was point at him and gossip behind his back. He didn't know what was going on today. Was it because he wasn't wearing his kasaya and had a cloth covering his head? What are you two doing? Zhou Su stood up in anger and scolded his thugs, you can't even catch a pretty boy. Do you think I feed you guys for nothing? The shopkeeper and the waiter had long run away. Only the two of them remained on the second floor of the restaurant, so Zhou Su was not afraid that other people would see his ruthless side. He rolled up his sleeves and walked forward. He looked at the silent master with a dangerous gaze. I would have never imagined that you're a martial arts practitioner too. Unfortunately for you, you will meet your match today. The way he stared at the silent master made his scalp feel numb. Why are you bothering us? What is your purpose? Ha! Huh. I state my intentions clearly earlier, but it seems like you're the stupid type. He took a dangerous step forward and said, I want you to submit to me in bed. Now that I put it so bluntly, do you understand? It took a while for the silent master to fully process what he had just heard. When he finally understood the meaning of what Zhou Su had said, the silent master's cheeks flushed red instantly and his eyes became mesmerizingly innocent. He clenched his hands into fists. You are shameless. You call this shameless? There are even more shameless things in this world. Zhou Su waved his hand, and the three of them rushed toward the silent master together. The silent master had nowhere to retreat to, so he could only close his eyes and fight back. The two men underestimated the silent master before, so they were easily knocked down by him. Now that they were using their full force, they were still not the silent master's opponent. Zhou Su originally believed that the silent master will be someone he can easily deal with he didn't expect him to be a practitioner too. Nonetheless, Zhou Su was confident in his own martial arts skills. When he saw the helpless and embarrassed expression on the silent master's face earlier, Zhou Su steeled his heart and decided that he will take the silent master back no matter the cost. Needless to say, all three of them were forced back by the silent master. The silent master showed them mercy by not harming them too severely. Zhou Su realized that they were no match for him, so he glanced at his man and gave them a secret signal. The two men shot forward to attack the silent master again. The silent master became a little impatient and started to use more force this time. But just when he knocked a person down, Zhou Su shouted for him to stop. Stop! Look at who I have in my hand. The silent master looked over to him and saw that Zhou Su had kidnapped Yi Mu with a knife. Chapter 206 You The silent master stepped forward a few steps and said, Let her go. Zhou Su touched the spot that he was previously hurt before and sneered, Let her go. I will tame the two of you today no matter the cost. Hold him. The two thugs that were knocked down to the ground by the silent master. They stumbled around as they got up the expression on their face was dark as they rushed towards the silent master to hold him in place. Yi Mu had enough, she was no longer in the mood to watch the show. She said, who told you to be so merciful towards them? Now, 
he will kidnap you to warm his beds. The expression on the silent master's face was unsightly because Yi Mu was held as a hostage by their opponents. He cannot resist because he feared that they would hurt Yi Mu, so he allowed the two thugs to tie him up. What am I going to do with you? Yi Mu sighed and shook her head. Then, she threw Zhou Su over her shoulder and onto the ground. The silent master was stunned by the sudden movement, but nevertheless, he ran over to help her. However, he didn't expect to say the following words. Don't take another step towards us. If you take another step forward, I will kill him. She wasn't lying. The dagger that Zhou Su was pointing at her before was now in her hands. Now, she was the one pointing the dagger at Zhou Su. Yi Mu's grip on the dagger was very stable it turned out that she was also a martial arts practitioner. The two thugs immediately halted their steps under Yi Mu's threats. If something really happened to Zhou Su, then they're done for. The silent master quickly ran over to Yi Mu. The two sides were now at a deadlock. He asked Yi Mu hurriedly, Muir, what should we do now? Please forgive the young and innocent monk because he had never encountered a situation like this before. Yi Mu rolled her eyes and said, I will teach you what you should do if you meet someone like him in the future. This is how you should teach them a lesson. With that said, Yi Mu raised one of her feet and kicked fiercely at Zhou Zhu's private area. Zhou Su let out a blood curdling screech from the pain. He originally wanted to taunt her because he thought that she wouldn't dare to hurt him once she knew of his identity. But after he was kicked in his private area, his face immediately paled. He held his lower body and screamed. He never expected that he would be kicked in that area one day. The silent master was also stunned by her sudden action, H how can you do that to him? Do what? Yi Mu raised an eyebrow and said, Are you saying that I can't kick him even though he tried to kidnap us because he wants to bet us together? Even so, you shouldn't have kicked him there, the silent master tried to reason with her. He was blushing hard from embarrassment. Why can't I kick him there? Yi Mu stared at the two thugs who were frozen in front of her. They didn't dare to move because Zhou Su was being held hostage by Yi Mu. Yi Mu smiled sweetly at them and said, Have you ever heard of this? Heard of what? That you should hit someone in their sore spots if you wish to hurt them. With that said, she kicked Zhou Zhu's private area again. By now, Zhou Su was in excruciating pain. He was about to faint. Whenever he planned to do something, the young girl would point her dagger closer to her neck. He couldn't detect an ounce of internal energy from her, but she was still exceptionally agile. He had picked the wrong targets this time. When the thugs saw that the situation was about to turn for the worst, one of them hurriedly left the restaurant to report the situation to the Zhou family. The other thug remained in the restaurant, he stuttered, why you should stop. Do you know who our young master is? He is one of the young masters from the Zhou family. The Zhou family is one of the three great families. They are powerful and influential, so aren't you afraid of offending the Zhou family? Zhou Su nodded his head quickly at what the thug had said. He was currently lying on the ground and he couldn't get up because he was in extreme pain. This was the first time he was in such a difficult situation ever since he was born. He stared fiercely at Yi Mu, clenched his teeth, and said, let me go now. Otherwise, I will kill everyone related to you. This was the only way he could receive revenge for the humiliation he received today. The silent master's face turned unsightly. He didn't expect to have encountered a villain from a powerful and influential family as soon as they came out. He was pondering over what they should do when he heard Yi Mu chucked at his words. You want to kill everyone related to me? I'm so scared. I only kicked you twice, but you want to kill everyone related to me. What will you do if I kick you a few more times? With that, she kicked him again in the private area fiercely. Zhou Su tried to hide from her, but there was nowhere to hide. He let out another blood-curdling screech. Chapter 207 If you have the courage, then I dare you to stay. I'm going to kill you both. One of Zhou Zhu's thugs had left to call for reinforcement, so help must be arriving soon. The silent master tugged on Yi Mu's sleeve and said, Let's leave, don't cause such a big scene. 
Yi Mu's kicks were quite powerful, and she had kicked him in his most vulnerable part of his body. Zhou Su was usually arrogant, willful, and strong, but now, he was curled up on the ground from pain. This was enough to satisfy the need for revenge. Yi Mu nodded in agreement, the reinforcements must be arriving soon. If you want me to leave, then I want you to kick a few times too. You. How dare you. The thug's legs had gone completely soft from fear. Did they even know the power and influence the Zhou family had? How could they act so arrogantly? The silent master rejected her proposal, no, I don't hurt people. Yi Mu was not in a hurry, after you kick him three times, we will immediately leave if you don't kick him, then I will just sit here and refuse to leave either way, I'm not in a hurry. You bastards. Are you not afraid of death? The thug was scared witless. If Zhou Su was kicked until he became infertile, then the Zhou family will definitely end his life. He gritted his teeth and once again rushed towards them, let go of my young master. His martial arts were nothing compared to Yi Mu's martial arts. With a crack sound, Yi Mu managed to cripple his arm and kick him onto the ground. Zhou Su wanted to get up and run when he saw that Yi Mu was occupied with one of his thugs, but after Yi Mu dealt with the thug, she turned around and kicked Zhou Su down to the floor again. She looked at the silent master and gestured with her finger for the silent master to come over. Kick him. After you kick him three times, then we can leave. The silent master repeatedly shook his head. How could he intentionally do something like this? Absolute not. Yi Mu continued coercing him, you have to hurry up and kick him. If the Zhou family discovers our identity, then we'll be in big trouble. The silent master realized that he cannot let others know that he had descended the mountain to drink wine and eat meat. What he did was a disgrace to Buddha, and no one can discover his secret. He also wanted you to serve him in bed. What do you think the Buddha will think of you if you don't punish someone like him? Yi Mu's words and actions continued to coerce the silent master to kick Zhou Su. The silent master's face flushed scarlet red at her words as he refused, I can't. I can't do that. That area was especially fragile. If he kicked him until he was infertile, then it will be a great sin. Yi Mu stopped on Zhou Zhu's back and ruthlessly said, If you don't want to kick him, then I will kick him. But I have to warn you that I won't be holding my strength back when I kick him. Even if she didn't use her inner force, no one here was her opponent here based on the skill she had just displayed. If she really kicked him three more times, then this person might really end up infertile for life. With such thoughts in mind, the silent master asked quietly, Can I kick him someplace else? Yi Mu cheerfully said, Yes. It's up to you where you want to kick him, but if you don't put any force behind your kicks, then it won't count. The silent master could hear the commotion from the street below. It was apparent that the reinforcements had arrived, yet Yi Mu remained calm and collected as she sat there. He knew that if he didn't kick Zhou Su, then she would refuse to leave. He could only grit his teeth and kick Zhou Zhu's stomach. The soft sensation of Zhou Zhu's stomach when he kicked him felt quite strange. Zhou Su also heard the commotion and immediately shouted to alert them of his location. They're trying to kill me. Come and save my life. When the silent master saw how Zhou Su was still trying to cause them trouble, he kicked him again in anger, stop shouting. This time, he had put some strength in his kick. Zhou Su let out a small grunt before he fell silent. The silent master was amused by this and proceeded to kick Zhou Su two more times. You want me to serve you in bed? Did Buddha agree to this? His gaze turned slightly cruel. This was the first time he was acting so mercilessly. Chapter, 208 Seeing that he was slowly becoming addicted to kicking the man on the floor, Yi Mu stifled back her laughter and grabbed his hand. Let's leave. They're coming. The silent master was somewhat unwilling to leave now. He was having a nice meal until he met him. As a result, he didn't eat much today. He kicked him with some force once again before he grabbed Yi Mu and flew directly out of the window. The reinforcements arrived on the second floor of the restaurant the moment they left. They were too late Yi Mu and the silent master had already escaped, only two wounded men were left behind. 
the two of them jumped out of the second floor of the restaurant. Even though it was quite a distance from the ground, it was effortless for the silent master. At this time, Zhou Su crawled up the window sill and shouted, hurry up and catch them. They tried assassinating a court official. Don't let them get away with it. When the silent master heard their shouting and the sound of footsteps rushing towards them, he dragged Yi Mu along as they fled. Both of them ran very quickly, and only after running past one street, they managed to get rid of the people chasing after them. The two of them stopped at the end of another street as they gasped for breath. Suddenly, Yi Mu's stomach began to growl. The silent master looked at the girl who had coerced him to do bad deeds in surprise. Yi Mu's face was flushed red from running and her head was lowered as she gasped for breath. He couldn't help but laugh at their situation. The silent master appeared very alluring when he laughed, so the people passing by couldn't help but look back at him. He was embarrassed when he noticed that other people were staring at him. He looked at Yi Mu and the two smiled at each other when their eyes met. They decided to look for another place to eat. The two of them had street food such as sugar-coated hawthorn fruit and pastries. They strolled around the busiest street in the capital. In the evening, they went to a temple fair together. The temple fair was bustling with people today, so it was very lively. After playing for a whole day, the silent master realized that he had never been as satisfied as he was today. At this time, he and Yi Mu stood in front of a row of lanterns. As long as they guessed the riddle on the lantern, they could have the lantern for free. The silent master stared at the lanterns intensely and refused to leave until he guessed one correctly. Besides Yi Mu and the silent master, there were many men and women gathered here. The men racked their brains to solve the riddles on the lanterns, just so they can make their lover smile. The most beautiful lantern was made from colored glass and had a white bottom. It looked simple yet elegant. Many people wanted the lantern, but none of them were able to correctly solve the riddle. The riddle that was written on the lantern. A pair of mandarin ducks played in the water while the butterflies longed for flowers. The monarch had many wives, but who will manage to end up as his one true love? The red bean roots yearned to grow, but in its previous life, it was planted in a concubine's heart. They will wait for the day they will finally meet, so they can enjoy spring, summer, autumn, and winter together. It was a complicated and long riddle. The riddle seemed more like a love poem than a riddle. Many people failed to guess the correct answer to the riddle, so they could only move on and guess the riddles on the other lanterns. After all, there were many other lanterns here. Although some of the lanterns were ugly, the riddles on them were simple and easy to answer. But the silent master refused to leave the beautiful lantern without guessing the right answer. He stood there meditating and pondering. Yi Mu couldn't help but tugged on his sleeve and said, Give up. It would be strange for a monk to correctly guess the answer to a love riddle. Everyone was either discussing the riddles or bustling around, so no one heard Yi Mu's words. They only took notice of the silent master's appearance and decided to stand in front of the beautiful lantern along with him. As more time passed, more people crowded around due to the silent master's beautiful appearance. Yi Mu barely had any place to stand as she was pushed around by the crowd. The silent master was sullen, why have I never heard of these riddles before? He had solved many riddles in the past, but he had never heard of a riddle like this one. What did seeing one's true love in the reflection of the water, but not being able to express your feelings mean? What did it's difficult to stay together until the dawn of time, but there was no time for them to express all their love for each other mean?